It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, deadly storms. This morning, Oklahoma residents picking up the pieces after that brutal tornado tore through the area. I couldn't even get off the kitchen floor because I felt like if I stood up, I'd get to get sucked out. A wicked bout of weather now making its way east. We're tracking it all with your full weekend forecast. Then, picture this, what you need to know about storing your photos online after a major site purged some users' pictures. It's just all gone. And every time, you know, as these days go on, I just remember little things that are on there. How you can keep your memories safe. Plus, high five. We are bringing in the professionals for today's five things. This morning, the five things a plumber, a nanny, and a veterinarian say they'd never do. And having her moment from American Pie. Single mom. Aged 18 years. The way I like it. To Legally Blonde. You look like the 4th of July. It makes me want a hot dog real bad. To the White Lotus. Tell me everything from the beginning. Well, I was born in San Francisco. Oh, from the very beginning. Okay. A look at the major comedy award Jennifer Coolidge is set to receive today, Friday, April 21st, 2023. Sending love to my second grade students at Edgewood Elementary in Homewood, Alabama. From Los Angeles. Today I turn 80. From Baltimore. On, on a girl's trip. trip. On our senior trip from, from West Liberty Salem, Salem High School, School in Ohio. From Moss Point, Mississippi. Celebrating our 10th anniversary. That was right. It's our first time in New York. From Moberly, Missouri. Salem is pretty great. From Mobile, Alabama. Shout out to Lake Charles, Louisiana. Hey, Savannah, hold up. We're here on Grandma's special day. From Columbia, South Carolina. Today is my 75th birthday. Woo! Love this segment. We are back with today's five things. We bring in the professionals to share five things they would never do based on their areas of expertise. So this morning we have with us a plumber, a nanny, and a veterinarian. And we're going to start right here with Roger Wigfield. He's from Dallas, Texas. He has more than 40 years of plumbing experience. And get this, a half million subscribers on his YouTube channel. Roger, you're like a famous plumber. Savannah, good morning. This, this is so much fun. It's Thank really you. nice to have you here. And this is one of those things that, you know, people are so intimidated about. About plumbing so let's start with your first tip you would never be unaware of how to turn the water off at your house explain when people have a major leak a hose breaks a fixture breaks a toilet breaks anything like that they don't know where to turn the water off mm. if they'll turn the water off immediately that can save them thousands of dollars instead of just flooding more of their house this is something you need to know before you have a problem Always. Okay, okay. Up next, you would never pour chemicals or oil down the drain. Okay, why not? Well, chem the, number one, the chemicals damage the pipes. A lot of times people want to pour the chemicals in to clean it out because they've poured oil after cooking. Things like that should never go down the drain. Put it in a jar, put it in the trash can, put it anywhere but down your plumbing. And oil, what? It just congeals? and It does. It yeah. gets cold, it binds up, and that's going to cause clogs that anything will stick. What to. about those chemical drain cleaners? Are those okay? Those are no-nos. They oh. really do. They damage most of your pipes. Wow. They're good for PVC, but other pipes, they can literally cause problems. Okay. You would never flush non-plumber approved wipes down the toilet. That's true. Baby wipes. Baby wipes have a plastic binding fiber. If you grab some and try to pull them apart, you can hardly pull them apart. Yeah. What I recommend are plumber approved wipes that literally you can turn them like toilet tissue. How do you know they're plumber approved? Look on the packaging, make sure it says it's been tested by plumbers and is approved by okay. plumbers. Okay, cool. Um, you'd never forget to change your washer and dryer hoses. How am I supposed to change my washer and dryer hoses? Can anyone do that? You can. It just takes a wrench to unconnect the hoses. Make sure you turn off the valve yeah. where you've got them hooked up. Again, this is a great reason to know where to shut the water off yep. in case that valve doesn't and shut. And why do we need to do that? Because they, they rupture. They oh. get old, they break, you come home to a flood. Okay, then last but not least, you would never wait until an emergency to find a plumber to have you on speed dial. That is so big. Nobody wants to wait till they have an emergency to find out who their plumber is. Yeah. At that point, it's going to be the first guy who answers his phone and says he'll be there. Do research. Check reviews. Know a plumber, electrician, a roofer, and an HVAC technician before you have a plumber. Okay, that's great. Roger, thank you. His YouTube channel. Check it out, Roger Wakefield. Appreciate it. That was oh, great. Yeah. That was great, Roger. I learned a lot. Okay, I'm here with Child. 
child care influencer nanny, Miss no Monique Dupree. She's a career nanny, more than 25 years in the industry in Chicago. She's got five things she would never do when hiring a nanny or a babysitter. All right, Monique, these are really good ones. All right, here's your number one. You would never assume your sitter knows your child's schedule, like where the pickup spot is and where the drop-off is. Absolutely. Yeah. Mommy and daddy knows best. So yeah. set a schedule for your babysitter. Yeah. Make sure that you plan out the rules. Yeah. Make sure the babysitter knows the rules, the activities, and the meals for the night. And also leave your contact information so you guys can keep in touch yeah. so you can feel at ease when you leave and go out on your date. Right. Don't just say she goes to swim at 2.30. Say she goes to swim lesson. You have to go in this door at the swim place, et cetera, et cetera. Absolutely. Okay. You would, here's another one, your second one. You would never forget to show a sitter how to use any essential items, meaning Absolutely. what? Absolutely. So if you have a baby, you want to tell them where is the ba the bottle warmer and how oh, yeah. to use it. This how to use it. How to use it. The sound machine. Yes. Also, how to open up the stroller. If you have older kids and they need to go on their tablet and do their homework, you want to teach the babysitter how to use that mm -hmm. tablet. Or if you have a garage door opener that the nanny needs to get in and out, you want to teach them how to use any essentials in your day-to-day -day life. And also, like if your kid likes to sleep in socks, don't o omit that important piece of information because the child might be crying and Anything they won't know well. Anything in your day-to-day -day life you want to explain. Okay, never overlook having an emergency plan in place. This one you got to have. You have to have an emergency plan in place. It's so important. Have a clear list of contacts and details just in case there's an emergency. Mm -hmm. Have them written down and put them somewhere where the nanny can see and make sure you go over it before you leave. Very important number four, you would never underpay. So how do parents know what fair pay might be? You need to Google the appropriate pay for your state. If mm -hmm. you don't know, you can always go to Indeed yeah. and you can adjust it based on experience. Yeah. Otherwise, the babysitter probably won't come back anyway. So that might be it. Yeah. All right. Here's a good one. <laughs> this is very important. Don't forget the babysitter safety, meaning if the babysitter stays till after bedtime, it's eight o'clock and you say bye. And she's saying, like, how am I getting home? Absolutely. Yeah. So if your babysitter drove that night, yeah. make sure she calls you when she gets home. Yeah. If your nanny or babysitter uh, mm -hmm. to public transportation yes. or if they walked to your home, make sure that you drive them home or you call them an Uber. Yeah, those are all great tips. Monique, thank you so much. Thank we you. appreciate it. Let's go over to Carson. He's got our final expert. Turns out New York's not cheap. Thank you, Hoda. <laughs> thank you, uh, Monique. All right, so we've got veterinarian Dr. Brett Levitsky. He's been a vet more than 25 years and is the Chief Medical Officer at Verg Brooklyn here in New York. We've got five things that pet owners should never do. Some of these things seem obvious, Doc, but some of them are surprises. Sure. Let's just go ahead and start with over-the-counter human medicine. I didn't even think people did that for their pets, but I guess they do. They do because it's heartbreaking when you see your pet sick or in pain, and the first thing they do is reach for their medicine cabinets. The problem is the ibuprofen you and I take for mm -hmm. our achy ankle can put your dog in kidney failure or the, the acetaminophen we might take for a fever mm -hmm. can be devastating to your cat's liver. Never give a medication without speaking to your vet. Well, that's a great one right there. Let's move on. This one really surprised me because I see them all the time. These are these leashes that are retractable. They seem like a great idea. You say they're not necessarily. Terrible idea, especially in the city. The problem with retractable leashes is they give you the least amount of control when you need it the most. If you're walking down the street with your dog right. and he sees a squirrel run into the road, First thing he's going to do is take off, and then he's going to be hit by a car because you don't have control. Even worse than that, yeah. I see people with their dogs off leash here in the city. It blows my mind because if they see another dog, they're going to run to them, get in a dog fight, or they'll go pick something up and eat it, and then they're in the ER. Right, you have no control over the dog None. at that point. So we see people give dogs you know, human food all the time at the dinner table. I, that's a bad idea, and you say why, because you, you have to know the risks. There are a lot of risks out there. Our refrigerators and our pantries are chock full of potential toxins for our pets. That cinnamon raisin bagel you may have eaten for breakfast this morning, don't give it to your dog because raisins are toxic to dogs. Right. And for cats, forget about the stereotype that they love milk. They may like it, but most adult cats are actually lactose intolerant wow. and it'll cause vomiting and diarrhea. Wow, that's a great one. And then finally, um, that's good to know, good information. Uh, dogs, uh, pets' teeth. I mean, I, we dental health, what do we need to know? Don't ignore their teeth. 
Dental disease in dogs think gingivitis, tooth root abscesses, they can be very painful for them. Further, they can cause serious infections in the heart, in the liver, and in the kidneys. The good news, it's potentially avoidable. If you get them involved in daily brushing when they're a puppy, right. it's going to be part of a daily routine. They make toothbrushes that fit right on your finger, <laughs> and you can just brush the food away. We both have three-year-olds. I'm thinking about it. i got to get the dog to brush their <laughs> teeth and the three-year-old now. And lastly, you can just comment well, quickly on this one. That is the, the dogs and the pets in cars. Don't leave them in a car unattended, not even for a second. Not even for a few minutes. On a beautiful 75-degree day, it can become 100 right. degrees in your car within 10 minutes. Well, that's great. Great stuff all the way around. Thank you so much to Brett, Roger, and Nanny. <laughs> Don't put me on a retractable leash. Here we go. <laughs> White men can't jump. Hulu's putting a new spin on Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes' beloved classic. The latest trailer for the upcoming remake. We're getting a sneak peek at the new court hustling duo, this time played by rapper Jack Harlow and Cinqua Walls. Take a look. Yeah. You think it's slick, huh? It's showing up to court dressed like a dummy acting like you can't hoop. You assumed I couldn't hoop because I'm white, which is incredibly outdated. No, I assumed you couldn't hoop because you were dressed like a white girl at Whole Foods. What a love girl. No. What a love girl. A love girl. Buckets. What? I just wanted to see if you had superhuman hearing because of your... Because of my what? Oh. They're going to kill him in the parking lot. I'm out here. He got a flamethrower. Flamethrower? What is this, Mad Max? <laughs> I, I was questionable about that. I love the re the original. So yeah, the, yeah. the trailer's really Looks really funny. good. Looks yeah, funny. There's a lot of funny lines. lines. Jack yeah. Harlow seems great in yeah. it. So we're looking forward to seeing that White Men Can't Jump. That starts streaming on May 19th. Next up, Ed Sheeran, overnight mm. the Grammy winner, dropped oh, a new single. It's called Boat. It's the opening track from his highly anticipated upcoming album, Subtract. Here's a little bit of that. Times they say that all stars heal, but I know. Maybe I won't, but the waves won't break my boat. Yeah, it's called Boat. You might think oh. heading into spring and summer, it's about like being on a boat. It's not. In a press release, Boat is described wow. as a metaphor for depression. The lyrics combating what is uh, like uh, to feel very low and to not know how to break that cycle of depression. That's what the song is all about. Wow. And again, it's the lead single to Ed's new album, Subtract, mm -hmm. that is out on May 5th. Mm -hmm. Next up, Jennifer Coolidge, a Golden Globe winning actress, has been cracking us up for decades thanks to moments like this. People say, oh, but he's so much older than you. And you know what? I'm the one having to push him away. <laughs> yeah, we both have so much in common. We both love soup, and uh, we love the outdoors. Uh, we love snow peas and uh, talking and not talking. <laughs> <laughs> 
gosh. That is the comedy classic best in show. Well, after so years of laughs and countless iconic roles, Coolidge is officially being crowned a comedic genius. Yesterday, the MTV Movie and TV Awards announced that she will be this year's recipient of their oh, comedic awesome. genius award. Previous winners include Jack Black, Melissa McCarthy, and Will Ferrell, just to name a few. And you can watch her special honor when the MTV Awards air next month. <laughs> just, go back and watch that movie. Oh, oh, I was just thinking, they don't make them show. like they used to. Yeah. yeah. So really funny. <laughs> Next up, Sean Combs, a.k.a. Love, also known as Diddy. Whatever you want to call him, do you remember this early 2000s jam where he taught us how to spell his name? Almost like Gwen taught us how to spell bananas yeah. with B A N A N. Diddy taught us how to spell Diddy. Well, in the latest edition of Carpool Karaoke, James Corden has a bone to pick with the hip hop icon questioning those very lyrics. The thing with that song is it goes, it's Diddy, and the song's called Diddy, but the chorus goes, the D, the I, the D, the D, the Y, the D, the I, the D, which is Diddy did. Yes. Diddy did. It's the did he D, did. Did he did. the Y. Yeah, the D. <laughs> the last D and the Y is silent. You know what I mean? You never seen a silent letter? That's how to say anything. It's never questioned. Yeah. Did he? Our special Today Climate Series, we're highlighting super solutions that are helping the planet. Yeah, this morning we are taking you to the Chester Zoo in the north of England, one of the world's leading conservation-based zoos. Yeah, and the mission at that zoo is to prevent extinction, and recently uh, it's experiencing what's been called the best kind of baby boom, <laughs> and NBC's Kelly Cobier joins us now with details. Kelly? Guys, good morning. Well, take a look at this. That is Asha a greater one-horned rhino and her six-month-old baby. She was born in October of last year, part of this zoo, Chester Zoo's rare and endangered animal, Baby Boom. Playtime for two of the world's rarest big cats. They're Sumatran tiger cubs, critically endangered, with only 350 in the wild. Alif and Raya were born in January, both healthy females. The cubs, among 12 endangered species born at Chester Zoo in the past nine months, including a Malayan tapir, a western chimpanzee, a greater one-horned rhino, a giant anteater, and this little guy, Born last summer and just now showing his face. Tucked inside mom's pouch is a baby Goodfellow's tree kangaroo, 
a joey. You can see the joey. Unlike their much bigger Australian cousins, these animals spend their entire lives in the trees. They're only found in New Guinea and numbers have, uh, uh, have dropped alarmingly um, in recent years. The zoo didn't know Katawa had given birth until her pouch moved. When it's born, yeah. it's the size of a jelly it's bean? It's tiny, yeah, jelly bean, that's right, yeah. Mum, mum will lick a path up for it to climb up to the pouch and it'll latch onto a teat and slowly grow. We managed to get a boroscope in and, and actually film it in the early days in the pouch. And they're sort of rather grotesque looking little pink things with claws. <laughs> Matching animals, like the endangered Komodo dragon, the world's largest venomous lizard, with new mates can be dangerous. When dragons come together, you don't quite know how it's going to go. If they're not compatible, certainly with a size difference between this huge lizard that's having a bath now, um, <laughs> his size difference was of some concern. But just two weeks ago, baby Komodo dragons came out of their shells. A little over 12 inches long, they'll reach adulthood in eight or nine years. On that special day, one pipped, I could see the scales of a dragon. A highlight of my career, so special. You knew that you had, yeah. you knew you had healthy babies. Yeah. In the lab, the zoo regularly checks animal hormone levels for signs they're healthy and ready to breed working to breed and protect creatures big and small. The nonprofit zoo works with more than 20 countries around the globe, collaborating with local communities to find the best ways to monitor species and protect their environments. And these recent arrivals are snails from Madeira off the coast of Africa, long thought to be extinct, but a few were discovered and delivered to the care of Chester Zoo just last week. We got a call and said, yeah, we found 20. So 20 snails. 20 snails, and they just say, right, we'll send it to you, try to do it the best that you can, because that's the last hope that we have it until the habitat is restored and is, is in a good conditions. Hoping top scientists can add to the zoo's baby boom, giving some of the most threatened animals in the world a better chance to survive in the wild. Chester Zoo is more than a tourist attraction. Its overall mission is to make sure no species goes extinct. It's why animals like Asha and Jaya are so important. And guys, just on a personal note, best assignment ever. with more of our pre-Earth Day celebration hosting our very own Fix It Fast. We've got it right here oh, on the plaza. So sure. cool. back there. I'm yeah. loving this, guys. This is part of a growing movement to repair yeah. and refresh instead of just buy. And we've assembled a great team of volunteers yeah. this morning. They're pros. They're going to show us how it's done and what can be fixed. But first, Vicki Wynn with more on the trend. Vic, I love your green. Uh -huh. Thank you so much. Earth In honor week. of Earth Month, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. Every day is Earth Day. I bet every single one of us has a few things at home that's broken or in some sort of state of disrepair. Repair. And sure, it is easy to toss those things out, but you know what? It might be a lot easier than you think to get it fixed instead. It is a great climate friendly solution and it's even better for your budget. That's the problem. You see that? Who are you going to find to fix it? 
Every year, hundreds of millions of broken items are thrown out across the country. But now, a new fix-it trend is gaining traction. Here in Terrytown, New York, a community group repairs things that would otherwise be tossed, and they do it for free. It's part of a growing environmental movement known as Repair Cafes. They're pop-ups, and they come up in different communities. Susie Frommer oversees her Hudson Valley chapter. The whole point is that we want to teach people how to repair, teach them some of the skills. Volunteers, or repair coaches, have diverse skill sets. I'm a software developer. I work in banking. Some of the most common items, lamps, toasters, clocks, musical instruments, and clothing. Some are a quick fix. Others take a little longer. The motor isn't working. Across the U.S., there are more than 160 registered repair cafes and more than 2,700 all around the world. 70 to 85 percent of what walks through the door of most repair cafes is fixed. Hey! hey. We've got swimming fish. It's all about caring for the environment, plus saving money and building community along the way. It's bigger than keeping it out of the landfill. We're all on this planet together. This is something we can do, not just for me, but for you, too. Everything fixed. Four for four. I love this. Yes. And people are going to be blown away by what we're about to show mm -hmm. you. Right now, we have the Repair Cafe Hudson Valley with us. These volunteers have been out here hard at work all morning long, fixing hundreds of items that otherwise you might think you had to throw out. We've got electricians, mechanics, jewelers, sewers, woodworkers, makers. I'm you into name it. it. I we love are it. in it. We've got Lisa and Eric here. Now, I hear that you get a lot of lamps, but what are some other things that can be fixed that people give up on? Yeah, lots of items that you have in your household that aren't working quite right or are not working. People bring in purses where the straps are coming loose, shoes where the soles are coming off, chairs with wobbly legs, and lots of lamps. Okay, and Lisa, we have two lamps here that you yeah. were able to fix. What is a common problem you encounter with lamps? Oh my gosh, so broken wires come up a lot, this sort of problem, or maybe the plug came off the bottom, the socket's gone bad, and the switch doesn't work, um, all kinds of things. Okay. And we can fix them. Well, yeah. by the way, Let's I think we gave on. you these. Can you hold yeah, this a bit? Yeah, absolutely. Do they work? Yes. Okay. Oh Yay. my gosh. And fix it and, and forget great. it. Done. That, done Lisa? and done. Yeah. Here's Carson. Thank you so much, you guys. Carson, over to you. Well, thank you very much. I'm here with Susie and Dan, and guys, this is great. Susie, why do you think it's important for you to, you know, uh, let people know about your skill to fix these things? You know, Repair Cafe is so important. It is a way to save things from the landfill and save resources. It's also really important to share and preserve skills that some people don't have in the younger generation. And it's a lot of intergenerational give back, and it's a way to change our relationship with our things. Yeah. That they're not just to be tossed away, but we we can we can fix them and save ourselves money and time. Well, we got a vacuum here that was broken, and we have a music box. The music box is still under repair, Dan. Is that right? It is working now. Oh, it's working now. It wasn't working five minutes ago. You yeah. nailed it. Can we see it work? Of course, of course. And what was what did you do to it? So uh, this was something that a uh, a woman's husband got overseas. It's beautiful. And uh, and it had gotten jammed up. The grease um, gets old and it turns to like blue, you know. And so you get. The, Clean it out thoroughly and, uh, and you yeah. Got that. I mean, it's a beautiful box and we're gonna throw it away and now it's back working. Yep. And the vacuum too, the vacuum's all fixed. That's it true. is. What was wrong with that? Just a motor problem? So that one, somebody had cleaned up after a renovation and uh, the drywall dust had turned to uh, almost concrete inside. Mm. Hoda, we got two items fixed over to you. All right, thank you, Carson. Last but not least, look at Roger. Yeah. Roger, while we've been sitting around during this short period of time, has fixed one bike, two bikes, and he's working on a third. One didn't even have a chain on it, but instead of throwing it away, he just did his thing that he does, and he made it good as new. Roger. You're, you're incredible. Uh, Vicki, there are some tips and tricks when it comes to fixing bikes. Absolutely, all kinds of things. So the first thing I want you to think about when you're like, ah, oh, how do I fix this? Go to YouTube. Odds are many other people have asked that same question and there are like 17 videos there to help you get through it. So those product manuals that a lot of us toss in the trash, if
if you can't find your product manual, maybe it's a TV, a stereo that's broken down, go online and search for that model. Odds are it's there. Repaircafe.org also has a lot of step-by-step -step guides for you as well. Don't forget about Googling or going to Yelp and finding a local repair shop to get your repairs done. And when you go to the hardware store, those folks have a lot of expertise in the aisles about the different parts and how they go together. So don't be shy. Roger, you're doing a great <laughs> job. How long did it take you to fix these two bikes? That was about 20 minutes. 20 this, minutes. Yeah, this one was actually longer. Longer, and what do you have to do to that third one over there? New seat. You're, oh, okay. I'm gonna take a test drive, because this one is supposedly <laughs> fixed. Hold on, can I hit yeah, you that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Got it. Hoda's going for a ride. Yes, you can. It's easy. I mean, okay, Al told us to meet in here, but hmm. is, is this the right place? Huh. I mean, I don't, it looks like, are, are we in wine country? Wait. Hey. Look at this. Welcome to the Golden State. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to greet you with something fun, so come on. This Always is it. Oh, style. Can I come on, kids. Here we go. Oh, this is so right. fun. Hi, everybody. There you go. It's <laughs> going to be a beautiful day in Sonoma County, California. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait for wine, wellness, and wanderlust this weekend. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> this is a special edition of the third hour of today from Sonoma County, California, Friday, April 21st, 2023. Welcome to the third hour of today. I'm Al, along with Craig, Dylan, Chanel, uh, just a few thousand of our closest Woo! friends. Oh, yeah. This is one of the greatest Fridays yes. we have ever had because we are in beautiful Sonoma County, California, where we're going to kick off the program in a special way. All right, three, two, two one. one, take it away! We lost one of the wow. bottles. Oh, there. wow. Look at that one. <laughs> and, and maybe a little saber action. This is fantastic. Oh, my God. This, this is the St. Francis Winery and Vineyards. Beautiful. This is the leadership team there. And they've got Very sharp nice. objects. So <laughs> we're going to ask you guys to, to you move guys away. So much. Look at that. You got all wet. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. No room for error there, Bob. Wow. Oh, wow. my gosh. Every show like Woo. That's so, the way to do it. Do you guys want to come to 30 Rock? We can start every show that way. We have got a busy show today. We have a jam packed show for you. You know, we love a buddy up when yeah, we travel. Of course. So this time, we, we branched out. See yes. what I did there? Oh, that was yes. very nice. Oh. We branched very out. Nice. We, we tried something called Olive Grove Bathing. It's my new favorite thing. It is. Yeah. I think we all yeah. kind of settled into that nicely. Yeah. We did. Um, what else did we do? We learned how to blend wine. We did. We had yeah. a little competition, of course, because it couldn't. Be a buddy up nope. without competition. Without competition. Exactly. Um, we went on a hot air balloon ride. Yeah, a lot of fun. It was also amazing. fun. It's going to be a good show. We also have some special guests stopping by today, including Olympic icon Allison Felix. We're going to hear about how she's keeping busy after retiring from the track. That's right. And of course, you know, the, the reason why we're here uh, is very excited. Allison is part of our first ever Start Today event. Yay! Along with all these nice folks. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're doing a special broadcast, but the Start Today event is also going to include enlightening conversations, wellness-focused activities, and outdoor excursions. So it's very exciting. Uh, the show and the event, both sponsored by Sonoma County Tourism. And, and you can be part of the fun. Our Start Today newsletter, get this, has yeah. over 400,000 subscribers. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's right. Yeah. And we have almost 150,000 Facebook group, group members as well, which is pretty exciting. Now, if you want to join, all you got to do is scan the QR code here on your screen. It's very exciting. In fact, some of our Start Today members are here right now. That's right. Some yeah. of our Start Today members are here. Let's give them a little love. Yeah. I love, I love the woman wearing the grapes. Oh, yeah. That's right. She came want, to play. If you want to stand out in the crowd, dress as a grape. That's right. right. Yeah. She actually is part of a group. She lost her other friends who were part of the Fruit of the Loom uh, underwear. <laughs> uh, we That's are good. here, as we mentioned, at the uh, fantastic St. Francis Winery, a 100% certified, sustainable, and mm. family-owned winery in the Sonoma Valley. It's got 14 different varieties of grapes, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. 
Uh, and here's it's the fantastic interesting thing. Yeah, isn't it great? Good. We've been uh, sampling a little, uh, yeah. as, as you'll oh, see wow, during the show. <laughs> <laughs> as we go along, yeah, it's, it's like, just going to go downhill. Uh, <laughs> gets fun. That's right. Uh, the St. Francis, Francis has four wine collections, but we have one here to sample. This is uh, the Old oh, Vines yes. Zinfandel. Yes. Which I learned Sonoma a lot County. about Zinfandel. I thought it was, you know, back in the 80s with the boxed wine. Right. You know, they said that back then they used to make it without letting it sit in its skin. Oh. So, mm. But this is is traditional Zinfandel, Zinfandel the way it should be. It's we very, also very have good. some fruit here as well. From, That's right. This is uh, from executive chef Peter Janiak. Uh, his meatballs, herbed fava beans, and uh, a little farro. Mm. That's right. My new favorite. That's right. Hey, uh, here's a couple of facts about uh, Sonoma County. Oh, it's slightly good. bigger than uh, the state of Rhode Island. Oh, wow. Really? Uh, yeah. uh, they've got the county itself. That's right. They've got mm. 40 spas and wellness centers, mm. uh, oh, wow. including grape seed scrub Ooh, and natural really thermal. Springs. Mm. You know what? If you're looking for something different, if you want to go on vacation right here in the good old U.S. Mm -hmm. of A, a That's lot right. of times there are places right in our backyard mm -hmm. that we haven't discovered. And this has been a phenomenal I mean, look trip. Look how beautiful it's it is. It's absolutely right. breathtaking. Here's the other mm. interesting thing. I mean, we, we know all about wine okay. tastings mm -hmm. and wine. There are a lot of olive groves here in, mm -hmm. in Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of an oil, olive oil tasting? No. Or what? Which no. We're about to, we're about like to do one. That's right. Let's okay. bring in Mary Louise Booker oh, uh, from Cotteria right Farms in Geyserville, producing olive oil since 2006 locally. Very nice. Yes, so, so what are we going to be doing, Mary Louise? So, believe it or not, the best way to taste olive oil is actually to sip it. Really? So, what I was going to do? Like yes. wine. Okay. Like wine, exactly. Uh -huh. So I was going to take you through, um, very quickly, a olive oil tasting. This, these blue glasses mm -hmm. are what are used, typically, when you do an olive oil competition. So okay. don't quite sip yet. Okay. We're going to put it in the palm of your hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, does that um, help warm it up? Or? It does. It okay. helps warm wow. it up. Uh -huh. So you're going to do that. Normally, you would go and just take a little sniff. Oh, it smells like Ooh. really good olive oil. But one of the things, exactly, you can mm. see, really get a sense of the amazing aromas mm -hmm. that it's got. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're going to do is when you're going to sip it, you're actually going to swallow it. Okay. I know that doesn't seem very appealing. <laughs> uh -huh. But the way it's done, too, so you can really get the flavors, is you're going to take the tongue, your tongue, put it on the roof of your mouth, mm -hmm. suck some air in. You're going to make this sound. <laughs> Not terribly attractive, okay. I know. Not terribly attractive. Okay. But it helps coat your tongue, helps get the oil all the way to the back mm -hmm. so that you can sip it and taste all it. Right, let's, okay. Okay. We, let's, let's give okay. it a shot. So, all right. okay. so go ahead. Oh, man, it's like drinking olive oil, obviously. <laughs> Mm. And you swallow it, okay? Mm. Olive oil's judged I mean, on its that's, fruitiness, that's its delicious. bitterness, and its pungency. Do you feel so a little bit of a burn? Do you feel a little burn now? Yeah. So and you then, flights of olive oil? You just never do. noticed that we before. We do. We have amazing flights of olive oil. This is olive oil. oil, like a little olive oil brownie? Yeah. So we've got some different mm. Um, mm. ways to taste. So I wanted you to oh, do the professional one so you can okay. really so taste the, the, the grassiness. I've never had a bite from olive oil before. Right. The pungency. All of that's why it makes such a great pairing for food, not to mention all the health Benefits well, Mary Louise Booker, thank you so, so much. Nice we really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, you're Thanks welcome. So much. Enjoy these. What, okay, just so you know, you've got you've got a chocolate brownie with our um, orange olive oil on mm -hmm. it and some salt. Lovely. That is yummy. Uh -huh. And you've got air pop popcorn with lime olive oil. Mary Louise, on thank you so thank much. You. You're really welcome. Yeah. Delicious. By the way, one of the thank other you. things you may not realize, but Sonoma County is also home to Snoopy. And the Peanuts Gang, oh, really? and the Charles M. Schultz Museum oh, and Research Center. Oh my goodness! Look at them. I know. Oh wow! Oh, that's so cute. I this am is so. Nice. I was oh, so honored adorable. to come here to be able to interview Charles Schultz twice. <laughs> and if you if you love peanuts, oh. it is all thing peanuts, but also graphic arts and comics oh, and all sorts of things. It is one of the most amazing oh. uh, museums oh, in the country. I have no idea. And that's yeah. close by. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so this there you go. Really right. cool. Oh my goodness. I we love that. It. So huh? Canada also has a lot of pop culture history out here. That's right. right? That's right. Okay. And we're going to, as we move along, we'll talk about that. Okay. But just ahead, we have never had a buddy up quite like this one. <laughs> That's right. See what happened when we found we were finding calm in nature, mm -hmm. making our own wine, and getting a bird's eye view of this amazing, beautiful region they call Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. Then, a little bit later, we're going to catch up with Olympic legend Allison Felix, how she's staying busier than ever as she's in retirement, as the third hour today continues from Sonoma County, Sonoma County.
We're back with more here on the third hour of today from beautiful, sunny Sonoma County, California. Whenever we're lucky enough to take a trip like this, we always buddy up for some <laughs> sightseeing and, of course, uh, adventure. Yes, we do. And this time, we have the chance to run wild in <laughs> Sonoma County's picturesque vineyards. You are not lying. <laughs> we took our buddy up series literally to new heights. We are here in Sonoma County, and this is the Bricola Vineyard, one of one of 425 wow. vineyards located wow. here in Sonoma County. I thought it might be nice, maybe take a little stroll. Oh, oh, let's do it. Would you like nice. to do that? Yes, we would. Right. We headed to Bricola's Olive Grove, where we met up with Jenny Harrow Keeler, a nature therapy guide. So our first activity is all about going with the flow. Mm -hmm. Come on in, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. You're gonna to talk to us about forced bathing today. Hi. Before you guys roll your eyes, this is actually a, a wellness trend that dates back to the 80s in Japan, where it kind of connects meditation with nature, right? We yeah. don't have a forest. You could do it anywhere. Forest bathing comes from the Japanese word shinrin-yoku, uh -huh. which means to bathe in the forest atmosphere. Oh. So we're keeping our clothes on. There's no actual good. bathing. Good. I, was worried about, uh, I was worried about some of that mulch. Some of the benefits have been shown to reduce stress, reduce anxiety, decrease depression. Yeah, we're gonna start off with a, a guided sensory awareness practice. What do I do with my hands, Jenny? Hey. <laughs> Greg, eyes closed. Could we get a little little gong action? Oh, oh wow. that was lovely. That was that, thank you so much, thank Jenny. You. My pleasure. Oh. Well, guys, now that we've uh, detoxed, what do you say we uh, we go retox? Everyone we meet, the people say we're monkey. On to the winery barn, where we were joined by two of the members of Bricolar's winemaking team, Tom Pearson and Bob Cabral. I mean, we couldn't come to Sonoma without trying one of their best vineyards. <laughs> we planned something special. Tom, Bob, come on in. These Hi, are guys. Thank Hi. You. Two of the wine experts here. All right. We are going to have a friendly winemaking competition. News nerds versus weather wizards. Who will make the tastiest blend? Probably a deeper red than you, mm -hmm. right? I like it kind of light. So maybe we use the Zen as the base. I don't mind this. You don't mind? OK. I like the little like the little bite it's giving. Mm -hmm. OK, it's a little sweet, but I like it. Very much like yourself. So you can okay. cap okay. Erlenmeyer and swirl it around. What did you guys go with over there? None of your business. Oh. <laughs> the real answer is I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> yes. We feel great about our blend. I'm actually yeah. going to cheers ours instead mm -hmm. of a high five. Oh, <laughs> that's how confident we are. <laughs> I am going to go with wine blend number two. That is our weather wizard. Oh, oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> so, so thanks for joining the wine team here at Brickler. We thought we'd you know finish it off with a, our custom blend that we've made for you guys today. So oh. cheers, let's enjoy. So, so excited. Thank you guys so much for the hospitality. Oh, cheers. Oh, cheers. Oh, 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 and having done my research on all this part of the Golden State has to offer, I had a few tricks up my sleeve. Who's ever had that drink, that fabulous drink, a sidecar? I've what? Never had I don't think never had sidecar. Well, guess what? You're gonna have a sidecar. Yum! Right now. All right, let's over do here. It. Let's okay. do it. Oh, I brought that's some friends. Oh wow! Oh, yay. A sidecar. I love it. Take us to a little surprise. So let's get our helmet. Wait, where on, do we guys. sit? Let's ride! <laughs> Woohoo! We took a sidecar tour of the vineyards grounds before arriving at our final destination, a hot air balloon. Melvin has always said, I'm full of hot air. That's so I decided, <laughs> I decided we were gonna harness some of that hot air. Woo! We saw all this from the ground today, but from above, it's just that much more beautiful. Postcard perfect. What a day we've had here. What's been the highlight? Just Spending time with you guys. Oh, that was really nice. Oh, I love you guys. You guys. Oh. You're oh. Well, you know what they say. What? Life opens up in Sonoma County, and this is about as open as it gets. Wow. How great oh, was that? Cheers, guys. Oh, you squeezed a lot in. It was we worth did. It. By the way, this is the house blend <laughs> yeah. from, from, from mm. the uh, winery there? So good. You it's, know, somewhere right now, Kathy Lee Gifford is smiling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we want to thank 
Up and Away Ballooning from Balloon Pacific. Really also one. Rides By Me, Classic Sidecar Tours, Sinorama, and of course the very lovely folks over at Bricolor Vineyards for welcoming us. Absolutely. Wow. Oh, Thank yeah. you for your right. hospitality, Bricolor. And thank that. you more importantly for the wine. <laughs> yes, thank All you right. Well, we have a lot more ahead. In fact, when we come back, we have some really impressive athletes with us today. First, Olympic legend Allison Felix is here to catch us up on life after the games and the new sport oh. she's taking up. We'll talk about that. Then two super sisters, Nikki and Brie Garcia, share what they call a new chapter in their lives. Our special edition of the third hour of today in Sonoma County, California. We'll be right back. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers I'll winner. drink it up. Sonoma County for our Start Today event. Don't forget, scan that QR code to sign up for our newsletter. And we are just really so thrilled to be here in California, joined by a California native who has certainly brought home a lot of gold to the Golden State. Brought a lot of pride as well. Allison Felix has 11 Olympic medals. Seven of them are gold. And that makes her the most decorated American track and field athlete in U.S. history. Ooh, it just gave me chills. Yes. <laughs> After retiring from the sport last year, Allison is hitting the ground running again. This time, she's growing her athletic brand. It's called Sage. And Allison is one of our special guests for our Start Today Wellness event. And we are going to warm up with a little bit of a walk. Good walk? morning. Right. How are you? Are you? I'm Shall well. we walk? Do it. Okay. okay. Uh, so, Allison, it's been about a year now since you retired from your professional track career. So, how would you say your wellness has changed over the last year? It's a lot different. You know, I'm really trying to transition from training for competition mm -hmm. versus training just for wellness. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've really had to take a step how back. How do you do it? It's hard. You know, I'm trying to do new things, things I haven't done before, mm -hmm. whether it's, you know, starting tennis lessons, Pilates, um, not making myself throw up if it's every single one. <laughs> yeah. no. It's Smart. tough. What's, what's this I hear about this new sport that you took up? Uh, yeah, my daughter's playing tennis, so I oh, figured oh, wow. I should also probably learn how to do this. So yeah. I'm at the very front end of things, but I'm excited. Do your track and field skills Translate? Doesn't help me. No, no. Doesn't help me. So. <laughs> yeah, I, endurance? I don't know. Someday. Yeah, exactly. I'm a newbie. <laughs> I feel like you're going to be just fine. I was looking at your seekers. So talk to me about Sage. I mean, you're really putting women first and not just on an advertisement, but in the production and the marketing. Talk to me a little bit about that. Absolutely. I mean, our shoes are made to fit the form of a female foot. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Something that many companies aren't doing. Mm -hmm. Our feet are different. And so we feel like we need to address those issues. And also, we want to think about things differently. We have a maternity returns policy okay. that means that if you're pregnant, and your foot changes size, oh, oftentimes that change genius. is permanent. Yeah. So oh you have our goodness. shoes, we'll give you your new size. Well, that's, that's pretty a, cool. That is yeah. great. That's Speaking amazing. of cool, uh, one of the things that you've got to be so proud of, the University, USC, your, your alma mater, the okay. University of Southern California, recently renamed the track and field area the Allison Field wow. Felix Field. Yeah. How wow. special is that? Oh, my goodness. It was incredible. Such an honor. Um, a beautiful ceremony. All my family was with me, my daughter, and 
and I just, it was more than I could have ever jumped up. Mm. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Allison, you've been such a, an inspiration for women and girls. You're raising a girl of your own, which you mentioned your daughter. How, how do you raise her to be a strong woman? Yeah, I really want to empower her and just give her the tools so that she can face this world herself. Mm -hmm. um, I try to build her up with confidence and just yeah. try to be a good role model to her. You I love certainly that. are. Yeah. I read that you do these affirmations. You do them every single morning? We do. And really? she's gotten really used to them. If I forget them, she'll be like, Mom, we haven't done our affirmations today. How old is she now? Mm. She's four. She's four. <laughs> yeah. All right, do you guys want to do some affirmations? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So how do we do it? What do you okay, do? Okay, so we just repeat um, a, a saying, and so we can say, I am strong and capable. I am I'm strong and capable. capable. I know my worth. I, I know, know my worth. worth. And challenges help me grow. And, and challenges, challenges help me grow. grow. We always end with, I'm going to have a wonderful day. I'm, I'm going to have, have a wonderful, wonderful day. day. Oh this is how you start that. every day. Every day. Yeah, I gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Can you imagine if you start saying that at two yes. and every single yeah. day, you, at four-year-old, you have the most confident five-year-old walking into kindergarten. Yeah. That's the yeah. plan. Yeah. And the repetition <laughs> over time, you know, it, it kind of just it it puts it in your head mm. permanently. Absolutely. I love Absolutely. that. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Alice. It's so nice to see you. Thanks for having us here in the Golden Yes, I know. It's beautiful to be here. And as we mentioned, Allison will be part of our Start Today event, joining us on a Start Today walk and then a Eventually, a sit down with Chanel here. You guys are going to talk about all things wellness, mm -hmm. uh, parenting, and for so much more on our streaming channel today. All day, you can get that information. That. All right, Thank just ahead here, though, the special guests just keep coming. We're going to catch up with Nikki and Brie Garcia. We're talking family. We're talking about this thing they have called Sister Sundays as well. We're finding <laughs> about that. And then a little bit later, one of our favorite special guests, Jill Martin Brooks. She's going to spotlight some amazing Sonoma County businesses creating unique fashion, food, and more as the third hour of today continues from Sonoma County, California. We'll be right back. on this special Friday edition of the third hour of today in Sonoma County, California for our big Start Today event. Don't forget, scan the QR code to sign up for our Start Today newsletter. And now we have two more special guests, California natives. We have Bree and Nikki Garcia. Ah, uh, yes. yes. The WWE <laughs> Hall of Famers burst onto the wrestling scene back in 2008 as the Bella Twins, of course. And then they went on to star in some hit reality shows. Total Divas and Total Bellas. Well, now the duo is adding podcasting, winemaking, and even dating shows to their resumes. Brie, Nikki, welcome. Thank, Thank you for you. having That's us. That's just beautiful, yes. right? Yes. I mean, I feel like we should say welcome to all of you. I know. Thank you. I can see why you guys moved out here. I know. Right? We love your home. Beautiful. So, Brie, let me start yeah. with you. You guys are in a new phase in your lives, uh, what you call an unbranding, if you will. So yes. where you're, you know, now going by your birth name, Garcia. Talk to me about that. Because at first we were like, wait, the Garcia twins? Oh, the Bella twins. Yeah, oh, right? okay. I know. You know, it was crazy because um, Nikki and I were saying, we feel like this is going to be harder for our fandom than us because we've been preparing for this for mm -hmm. the last year. And, you know, Nikki and I, we just, we wanted to expand. 
we wanted to grow more. We knew doing that we had to go back to our roots. Mm -hmm. And back to our roots being the Garcia twins. That's I mean, we right. moved, you know, here to wine country because we come from a farming family. And we knew mm. we needed to go back to Garcia just to grow more and to just, you know, become more powerful. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I didn't realize this, Nikki. You got, you two were born 16 mi uh, minutes apart. Yes. Your sons, Mateo and B Buddy, were born like 22 hours apart. Oh, yeah. wow. Oh, that is, uh, wow. And, and you live right next door to each other <laughs> with a reason, raising your kids at the same time with your husbands. I would think that that's got to be really special to have each other so closely mm -hmm. entwined in your lives yeah. most of the time. It <laughs> is, right? I mean, it's a total twin thing, I guess I you could know. call it. We never <laughs> thought we'd be those twins, but we are. Um, it's so special and amazing, especially having an only child. Um, Buddy is like what we call their spiritual twins, but they get to be brothers and how he's raised with his cousins. And we're just one big happy family. And I really have leaned on my sister a lot being a new mom. Mm -hmm. um, but And then our husbands, we made them come here with us. But I mean, you look around. That's not a tough like, ask. I think, yeah, 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 you guys are out the way, right? Um, but it's just been incredible raising our kids here and raising them with Brie. And um, yeah, it's just... I love life with you. Aww. Aww. I, do. Yeah. I want a twin. I don't know. <laughs> I'm your twin. I'll take that. Okay, I'll take that. A little more than 16 minutes apart. Yeah. 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 Um, so a big milestone birthday coming up for you guys. Oh, 40. Yes, 40. But I feel like you're at such a good point in your life, you know, with the mm -hmm. kids and I'm living here. But health and wellness is so important to you guys. So how do you work that in to just make yourselves the best you can be? Well, you know, it's crazy because Nikki and I have really gotten to biohacking. We love like, biohacking. Bio <laughs> what is that? that? We are into cold plunging. We use the higher dose sauna blankets, okay. the higher dose like infrared mask. Um, all the things. All at once. All the things. <laughs> the things. Wow. If you tell me that I am going to be more flexible <laughs> as I grow older and I'm going to feel Less better, wrinkles. I'm going to do it. Yes. <laughs> that too. Yeah, um, we fall for a lot of Instagram ads. Of course. Not really okay. As we all do. Yes, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, um, our goal turning 40 in November is going to be the healthiest us. And yeah. so we've been on that kind of journey, and it's been we really have. fun figuring out all the little, like, hacks. On well, and I feel like you and I have really focused on gut health, and we just mm -hmm. have started to realize how, like, our core truly is the center right. of everything for our health and wellness. Yeah. And I've really been on that journey of, like, okay, keep yeah. the core healthy because it helps the brain and it helps right. everything else function. Makes and a difference. Entering 40, I'm realizing all of my injuries in the past 16 years of life. <laughs> no. wrestling for a for a while, both yes. of you guys. And people underestimate yeah. jumping off of the, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. Speaking of wellness, what is this I, I hear about Sister Sundays? Ooh, oh, well, that is, is um, you know, definitely for the soul and the um, mind. What, what, is, what is this? What, is, what are these Sister Sundays? So every Sunday... Um, we're so grateful for our husbands. They babysit the kids, I guess you say. Yeah. Um, or but they're the dads. Well, they're, they're, taking, the dads. they're exactly. taking care of the kids. They're taking care of the kids. The dads don't dads. babysit yeah. their own children. Exactly. <laughs> and so we, every Sunday, we pick actually a different winery to go to oh. in wine country. Yeah, right. And her oh, and I get twin. a couple hours, yes. <laughs> right? I know. What a great life we have. Yeah. Oh, and, and Nikki, really quickly, congratulations. Second season, Barmageddon. We're co host with our pal, with our uh, pal Carson. Carson and Blake Shelton. Yeah, yep. Carson is. Is the best. He is. I had so much fun with them. I leave for set in a week, and I get mm -hmm. to be with Carson and Blake for ten days straight. On USA. On I USA. Oh, That's right. Thank you, and Brie. Yeah, thank, thank you guys. So thank much. you all. Yeah. This was so. We're fun. coming back to your home. Yes, we, love, right. yes. we yes. love it here. Good, <laughs> good choice. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you, ladies. All right, just ahead, Jill is here to share some great local businesses putting their unique spin on everything, from coffee to jewelry. Then a little bit later, we are getting a taste of Sonoma County with dinner, dessert. And of course, some more wine. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. for that today. Hey now. <laughs> <laughs>
We are back with more of our special edition of the third hour of today here in Sonoma County, California. We are here for our Big Start Today event. And of course, we want to share some fun finds straight from local businesses. I love it. Sonoma County is home to a vibrant community of artisans and small business owners. Today, lifestyle and commerce contributor Jill Martin Brooks, she made Jill, the trip yeah. with us as well. Yeah. Jill is yeah. here to share just a few of the standout selections and folks, you know what to do at home. Scan that QR code, bottom of the screen to see all of the stuff that we're going to talk about. So let's start here, Jill. Let's start with how fabulous this is. I, I know, right? Like so I mean, it's better than that. By the way, how fabulous do you, you look? look fabulous. I, you know what? I'll take it, but this is like, yeah. this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> all right, so, so local These businesses. are cork dorks, self proclaimed. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you know how jazzed I get about local businesses. Mm -hmm. And yes. so this is called Kappa Bunga. Okay. Okay, okay. so oh. it's run by a husband and wife duo, Walt Averell and Myra Murphy. They met while working in the wine industry and started okay. their own winemaking business huh. after they got. Oh married right here. Oh. Their experience in the industry was inspired them to use these reusable, they made these, these silicone caps. Okay. This is so clever. You can easily yeah. reseal, I don't know who does this that we, they don't finish, but to reseal <laughs> open bottles yes. of wine and, and champagne. And then put it back in the yes. And yes. then put it back, but look that. at how they did a third hour one. Look. Oh, that's oh. great. Oh. So they're Goodness. under 10 bucks, uh -huh. 8 95 for two caps. Walt says the, ideas for the, the idea for the caps came to him in a dream, oh. and after telling his wife about it the next morning, they launch. They launch. Launch Cabba Bunga the next week. I love the it. The brand Such also makes deal. cheese vaults. So take a look cheese at this. Vaults. Instead oh. of wrapping it up and it's a disaster. Oh, that's oh yeah. You put your and extra put cheese. Fridge. It's silicone. It oh, that's what a about genius those bags? idea. So oh, the bags are fabulous. And these canvas bags are also for sale. Oh, Very cool. That. Yeah. Okay. All right. A little coffee. A little Java. Okay. Oh. So. Everyone take a sip because it really is delicious drinking and doesn't even need anything. Thank I know we're drinking a lot of wine, but the Big yeah. River Coffee Company has been based here since 95. It was started yeah. by Harold yeah. Henderson, a lifelong coffee lover, and is oh, now run coffee. by his daughter, Naomi, and the company makes over 30 different roasts and blends. They have a coffee shop in Santa Rosa that's run by his granddaughter, Jasmine, oh. so it's a multi-generational business. And what makes it so special, they roast their beans darker than most companies, so you can expect like yes. velvety textures. Mm. Dark roasts are also less acidic and more mm. tummy friendly. So okay. you know that, right? Nice. Leave okay. that alone, please. Since we're here celebrating Sonoma County, they brewed us their special Sonoma blend. Oh, oh, so really good. Sonoma County blend to try. It's a dark roast that combines coffees from South America, Africa, and Indonesia. These are good. So, great. Now you know my eyes okay. looking at this here. I over know here to all the, the jewelry. Yeah. jewelry. I already have one on my neck. I love so, it. So these are girl with the pearl jewelry, huh. and they're all handmade by Santa Rosa resident. Reedy Senta. Can I she, tell you something not planned? Yes. So Uche got me that for my birthday last yesterday. What? Yeah. Oh, look at that. So I saw it right here. And I, he must have, he went shopping locally, clearly. That's yeah. very, I love it. Wait until the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> no. He wanted to get you something, something representative. Local. He wanted to shop yeah. local. Yes, he did. Yes, yes he did. Oh, Where to go, Uche? Very thoughtful. There you go. Okay. So Reedy taught herself how to make jewelry in 2014 while she was planning her wedding, and she wanted to give her guests more personal favors. So she made bracelets, mm -hmm. she made earrings, oh, she did, Beautiful. she looked at YouTube to learn how to do it, so teaching other entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. Yeah, what about these bags? she was practicing law before this, and today Rudy's jewelry line is around 150 designs and mm. styles. All right, okay. the bags. Adele sold local designs. Too, right? These is. bags are yeah. uh, a Sonoma <laughs> County native who's developed a technique where she takes a single piece of leather, yeah. and Ooh. you see she folds it into a oh, functional oh, no yeah. That's amazing. Yep, there is there are no seams. You don't see any. Wow. They're woven yeah. underneath the straps to hold That's the bag amazing. together. They wow. carry an incredible amount. The bags mm. start at 268, but there's so much detail. She has a store right here in Healdsburg. Did I say that right, guys? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. And recently launched a home collection featuring uh, vases and pillows. Jill, oh. before we introduce our, our last items, we should point out we brought in two very special guests to model for us. <laughs> oh, 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 I didn't know they were hello. on camera yet. Yes. So hello, Brian Hi. and Lindsay. It's Mark Lindsay. Lindsay. Hi. Dylan, Hi. Dylan's husband, the Hi. fish. Hi. Hi. Yeah, we, never... They call us the spouses. <laughs> the spouses. So. Well, you are styling and profiling in these outfits. It feels good in the Thank breeze. Thank you. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> so, Why are you holding yourself back there? Dom right? a little Designs. Sway. Got a little... These hats and flannels are water marbles by Sonoma County artist Dominic oh. Padua. He and his wife, Brianna Kennedy, run Dom Chi Designs. They create colorful designs and patterns using special dyes and water. 
Each hat is individually dipped in marble, so no two hats are the same. <laughs> and they make custom designs oh, at I their storefront. That. Oh, that's a nice and one. And Dominic draws the artwork by hand. Wow. And they oh, turn you wear it well. their art into wearable pieces oh, of that. Oh, oh, that. Cool. Art. Jill. And I have to say, the they models look fantastic. Shirts. I mean, yeah, are hi. these the most incredible models you. you've ever right. seen? Yeah. That's a lot of time. Thank, Thank you, Jill. Thank you. Thank you. For more, it's today.com slash shop. Hey, okay, so when we come back, it is time to eat. We're going to get a taste of Sonoma County with three fantastic dishes, wine and chef. Third hour today, I'll be right back. Welcome back to the third hour today in Sonoma County, California. And I got to tell you, uh, we love the scenery, we love the activities, we love the wine, but what's one of the best parts of a vacation? Food. 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 Yes. That's right. Sonoma <laughs> County cuisine is known for showcasing California's freshest ingredients. So we called on three local chefs to give us a taste of the region. And we called on a couple of special taste testers. Yay! Uh, the lovely Lindsay Jarnack of Craig's wife Ooh. and Dylan's husband, <laughs> Mr. Brian Fischera. Nice Woo! to see you guys. Boom doggle. So, Boom uh, doggle. Oh, there they are. They're, they've already started Tom drinking. Tom. All heck's going to break loose. But first of all, <laughs> let's start off with Casey Thompson. She is the executive chef of Folktail. Uh, in Perfect Sonoma. So we're doing a folk table. So tell us about this, Casey, where you've got a, a chowder here. Mm -hmm. So what's in this chowder? Well, it's springtime and the sun's out, so mm -hmm. chowder kind of doesn't seem like the appropriate dish, but this one is. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our own farms at Folk Table, and so uh, one of the things I've always asked the chefs to grow me is collard greens because I grew up oh, on wow. them and I love them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So essentially, Thank this you. is made with a, um, a ham stock, ham hock stock. Ham and, hock stock. Um, you can see that here. And that's something my grandmother would have done to make mm. her beans oh, when I was good. growing up. Oh my goodness. Mm. So in this instance, we just make the stock with a lots of aromatics, Ooh. and then we add the ham, corn, oh. potatoes, make a chowder, oh. and then oh for a little God. bit of Fantastic. health and wellness, oh, wow. we added a little bit of turmeric, which you can see oh. here, fresh turmeric, ground, and added in for that beautiful color. And, and you're nice. pairing this with a Chardonnay. Mm. This is Topophilia. This is a local Sonoma Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. um, it has these beautiful notes of uh, like a peach, a little bright acidity to sort mm -hmm. of um, round out the sort of uh, cream and ham hockiness of that chowder. Mm. That's a beautiful. And I like that ham hockiness. Ham hockiness. Uh, well, uh, our taste testers, what do you say? Oh, it's fantastic. Delicious. And, and, and really quickly, <laughs> yes. it, it, we don't have... You're excited forever, about this one. But I'm excited about what is chicken it? fat rice. Chicken oh. fat rice. So we also grow our own chickens at the farm, and so we use every part of it. We oh. render the skin to get the fat. We uh, top it with the local that? friends, uh, Sacramento uh, caviar, so it's got fresh roe on That's it. That's fantastic. Fried Thai basil. What's so, the name of your place? Mm. It's called Folk Table. Yum. Yes. This is phenomenal. Is that the Sonoma table table? Yeah. Uh, Look out. Well, I'm sorry. Like, they didn't whoa, have whoa, enough whoa. for the whole bowl of chicken. Oh, oh, right. no, okay. Uh, <laughs> Chanel, you're, you're, down, you're down there. Yeah. Oh, right. I'm ahead, sorry. So, no, right. none for you. <laughs> We've got a lot of fun stuff over here. We're with Ari Weisswasser, the chef and proprietor of Glen Allen Star in Glen Allen. And I love that you're making a paella without any seafood. You're using just all regional ingredients. Huh. Yeah. What a great way to showcase all the local farms here in Sonoma. This is a vegetarian so paella. 
Okay. Uh, we cooked it in a wood oven at the restaurant. Yeah. Okay. You can kind of see a little bit of oh, wait, the uh, sakurat or the, the burnt on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, that's intentional. Okay. So that's okay. uh, kind of uh, specific to our to, to the wood oven. And, and a lot of people mm -hmm. like the, this part of it. It's like the crunchy part. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, people fight oh. over that. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. On top, lots of vegetables. Mm -hmm. We're showcasing uh, from our farm in, uh, in Glen Ellen, Glen Tucky Farms, mm -hmm. uh, amongst all other, uh, let's see, Rancho Gordo. Um, and just local farm produce. It just tastes fresh. It is. It's yeah. really wow. good. That's delicious. And Excellent. Sonoma County is known for its farm to table cuisine, and this next dish is no exception. You created a spring pizza. We did. Mm. A little green garlic sofrito. We used some Zoe salami out of Petaluma. Oh my gosh. A little bit of estero gold cheese and some egg yolk jam from our chicken. Egg, egg yolk drink? jam? Yeah, we're pairing it with a we're vodka drink. A vodka drink, correct. Yum. Oh, yeah. This is uh, What's in this? We're never going to eat it. Hansen local uh, vodka. It's their transfusion. A little bit of organic oh, white wow. grape juice. Oh, that's really Wait a minute, our textures, oh. yes. Oh, I, I mean, this? this is blowing my mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Brian, slow down. Oh, I know, it's good. Really good. This tastes like Correct? juice. It does. Like juice. <laughs> so yeah. 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 Exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, joined so now by Stefan St. Louis. He's the executive chef and owner of Table Culture Provisions in Petaluma. Uh, you've got, we're going to get to the dessert in just a second, but this, this oh au gratin God. looks delicious. Yes, uh, so this is a potato gratin. So uh, usually this is a classic French but what becomes Sonoma about it is all the uh, ingredients that are used in it. So from uh, clover heavy cream to uh, red hot um, cowgirl creamery cheese Ooh. and the sterile gold also um, Parmesan cheese. And you're from the area we should note, Chef, as well. You grew up in Petaluma. Didn't even see that there. <laughs> Didn't even see it. So I actually, uh, I grew up in Haiti. And then oh. so I moved in uh, Petaluma in 2008. And I've been a chef uh, in Petaluma ever since. And about two years ago, oh we started God. our restaurant. Mm -hmm. Also, downtown Petaluma. Really quickly here, the creme brulee. And then this is the uh, classic uh, French creme brulee with uh, Tahitian uh, vanilla beans. Oh my God. Um, this is one of my favorite. This is also one of my mom's favorite dessert. And then so I just felt like I had to share it with you guys and make her proud. This is delicious. Wow. <laughs> what's, the, what's the verdict here, Table? Well, I have food on my teeth, so. <laughs> it's a good sign, right? It's a good sign. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Casey, Ari, and Stefan, thank you so much for joining us. Oh my goodness. For more on these dishes, Dishes, head to today.com slash food. Third hour today. I'll be right back from Sonoma County, California. So I don't good. know what's next. I know. I'm like, mm. Star Today event right here. Oh, this has been the I best. Know. Don't forget to scan that QR code to sign up for our Star Today newsletter. You'll get some daily motivation and inspiration. By the way, we want to say a big thank you to our sponsor, Sonoma County Tourism. Yes. And we also want to thank St. Francis Winery and Vineyards, Flamingo Resort and Spa, and Bricolor Vineyards. And that does it for us for the third hour of today. We also want to thank our amazing crew, yes! the producers, and all of you for coming out. Thanks so much for being with us. We will see you on Monday, and again, we... Monday from here? No, oh, we gotta go home. We gotta go home. Wanna go home. But there you have it. There you have it. It's been a wonderful hour. Have really a is. great weekend, everybody. From Sonoma County, California. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names. Only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I
won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on Today. Today, the art at the heart of New York City. Jen and I shake things up and give graffiti a try. Plus, one of New York's hottest designers, Zero Waste Daniel, how he's rocking the fashion world with his sustainable style. And the hilarious household feud between one celebrity couple that's gone viral. So whose side are you on? We're talking about it. It's, okay. it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome in. It's Friday. It is April the 21st. We made it to Friday. We did. And we're getting closer and closer to Jazz Fest. I can't wait. I'm literally counting down the days. We are actually gonna be leaving in one, one yes. week from today. We have a lot of work to do <laughs> before our before our Mondays, our Monday show. But How it's going to be fun is so much. Be? Fun. I can't. I'm literally. I cannot wait. It's one of the best places to go. Best time of the year. Best music. event. Music. The music is crazy. Ed Sheeran will be there. Lizzo and a, you know a million Thomas, others, right? Trombone Shorty. Everybody. Vitalist. We cannot wait. Yeah. Um, okay. There's a massive debate going mm -hmm. on. What is it? <laughs> What is it? It's really intense. Okay, okay so Glennon Doyle and Abby Wabox, Wambach's yeah. home, who we love. We love both of them. Um, it's going, the debate's going on there, but it actually spread to social media because Abby posted this video showing the difference between her and her wife's toothbrush situation. Take a look. Look at this situation. And look at, look at, look at, you don't even have the ability to close the cap. And look at, Look at what this is. What is this? It's toothpaste, which is in the tube. That's what it is. It is not in the tube. It's outside the tube. And look. And look at the sculptures. The sculptures are disgusting. You're putting that in your mouth. And here is, I think what you. Look at my fancy toothpaste. Look at my fancy green toothpaste. It's not fancy. It's oh, just, look if at you my, did it every look time. Look at my serial killer toothpaste. He just did it every time. <laughs> I'm Team Glennon. We know. We know. Team Glennon, first of all, A, nobody is turning the toothpaste tube upside down like that. And rolling and it. folding it because it unfolds because it's toothpaste. It's not like the old metal ones where you used to be able to squeeze it. Yeah. These are plastic. They come undone. Yes. But you oh, know what? Glennon. I'm team. I, yes. This is the weird thing. I'm team Glennon too, but However, I'm much more Abby. Abby in the cleanliness department. But except, what's unclean about Well, Glennon. her toothbrush looked kind of nasty. Why? It had a bunch of residue. Foam? Residue. But I will say something. Usually in most departments, I'm team Abby, except I don't really care about toothbrush and toothpaste including, and my husband does something very strange. Wow. When we travel, yeah. he gets his toothbrush, he yeah. wraps it in toilet paper because he doesn't want it to touch. Uh, shoes. Shoes, <laughs> yeah. uh, other underwears. Um, he also, when he puts it on the, like if yeah. I yeah. go to a hotel and I leave my toothbrush just yeah. laying, laying there, there, he's like, do you know how many, how many people, people have touched this? Right. And he will wrap my toothbrush up in a little toilet paper and leave it for me. On your on the counter. On the Why don't you just put it in the cup upside down? Well, I, so not upside. Oh, no, so oh, it, it sticks stuck. up. There it is. Now it's now it's sanitary. Why are we wrapping our he toothbrush? Well, he does put TV. it in the cup, but he also wraps it for an extra protective layer. Well, you know what? If you've seen any of those blue light things, <laughs> you, you would probably do it. would wrap it. I know. It. What would Jeff Rawson do? Jeff. Rawson. <laughs> 
He would make sure your toothbrush was wrapped very, he would wrap his in cellophane. He would, he would definitely. But I don't care, I'm always like, honey, he's like, gross. I'm like, I don't care. If I walked into your home right now and your kid's bathroom, your bathroom, you know, the one we share with your husband, would the toothpaste tubes, because there's a snap off, would it be snapped down or snapped open? Would it be open or closed? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, because sometimes, yeah, it's not a screw on. It's the kind that you can. Probably it would be closed. My toothpaste would, would be closed. Okay. Because I, but I do wake up really early, and sometimes when I'm brushing my teeth, mm. I'm not quite yet awake. Yeah. Yes, I was gonna say when you're groggy, you're not worried about all the little no things. details. And By maybe the way, we shouldn't worry about all the little details. I think it's so funny how someone's habits can bug you, even though it's not even in your business. No, and they have separate sinks, yes. not just and also next not, to each other. Right. Other Over sides. There. Yeah. Other sides. I think it's you do you. Yeah, and yeah. they do too. I'm sure they do. No, they're, they're the just best. they're hilarious. Remember, Abby gave us the best pieces of advice for well, sports. Yes, I, can't I remember. still use them. What was it? Instead of saying, uh, thank you, Abby, yeah. instead of saying, hey, you did great out there, or whatever, putting yeah. pressure on, you say, did you have fun? Did you have fun? Yeah, did you have fun? Did is you a good have fun? One. That's a good one. Um, All right. Okay. So, this is an interesting story on Reddit. Going viral, this guy. Do you know what Reddit is? Yeah. What? I don't know. If you, there are people always rating things. No, on Reddit. I know, but what is a Reddit? I don't know. <laughs> Google it. Someone Google Reddit. What is Reddit? It's a website. Oh, it's, it's a, a forum. forum. They, don't, they don't know either. No, they said forum. No. Forum is they a word. Said website. Then they said forum. We know it's a website, but what is Reddit? Okay. Okay. A blog. He blog. says blog. Blog. No one has any clue. Here we okay. go. Nobody so a guy knows. on Reddit recently <laughs> told his girlfriend he does not want to take her to nice restaurants because, quote, she eats like a kid. This sounds like they're so, breaking up. So she, <laughs> she likes chicken nuggets. She likes fries. So do we. She likes kid meals. You wouldn't order a kid meal. No. Okay. So he wrote, to me, it's kind of embarrassing. Oh. To go to a restaurant where there's a dress code and for her to order, ch order chicken tenders and fries. Okay, the key word to pull out of that comment is embarrassing. 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 Of course it's not embarrassing. No. Right? A lot of people eat like children. I know one. <laughs> <laughs> I know two. Yeah. Um, here's the thing. I feel like you got it, again, it, uh, this is our new saying. You do you. You do you. If she wants to go out, to, of course she wants to be treated to a nice meal. Let her order whatever she wants. Nobody cares. Right. And nobody's, I mean, to be embarrassed by what, who the waiter thinks of what you're ordering. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, look, if he doesn't want to go to a fancy restaurant because the burger's 50 bucks and you can get one <laughs> just as, you know, just as good down yeah. the street, I get the, that part, but. Yeah, but also you got to compromise. Like eat just, at the burger I place. Agree. And then let her go eat the burger she can what she to. wants, and then he can order what he wants. Yes, it's called freedom. Be free. Free. Roll with it. <laughs> Roll with it. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Okay, right. we have a good one. Ready? Here we go. We like to celebrate holidays, and this is a quiz. It's called Super Fragile. Oh, well, it's because <laughs> Super Califragilistic Expialido Quiz. You know why we're celebrating this day? It's Big Word Day. It's National Big Word Day. All right. I love so, big words. Here, we, we, okay, we already said the quiz. We're here, never saying the name again. No. All right. Okay. We're going to read big words, and we're going to have three options for definitions. We're going to buzz in if we think we know the definition. Okay. All right, here, let's begin. The, okay, the first <laughs> word is tat tar rat tat tat rat tat No, tat tar rat tat Yeah, tat a rat tat no, tat tar rat tat. <laughs> tat a rat tat. <laughs> tat a rat tat. That's how you put it together. No. Word. Tat tar rat tat. <laughs> Don't gaslight me. Pick your rodent. What you got? Okay. Is it a small rodent found in big cities? A tat a rat tat. Is it there a Scottish go. celebration, or is it knocking at the door? It is C. Tat a rat tat. A knock at the door. Uh, uh. <laughs> you got it, you got it. Knock, 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 knock. Okay, we're going to use that every day. <laughs> let's change that. You know when Donna knocks at the door, yeah. we can call it tatarat <laughs> All right, the next word is flokanachiaha lipification. Whoa, flokanachiaha. No, flokanachiaha. Lipification. 
Phlox okay, and Oxica. Phlox and Nox and I. <laughs> Hilipification. Sure, got it. Okay, got it. So it's either the act of growing uh, flowers in a greenhouse, estimating something is worthless, using a medical instrument to release fluid. Ooh. Fluid. Wait, okay. Flox. Wait, Can uh, see it? The act of flowers growing. That's not it. Wait, it's not yours. This is for me. Okay. Estimating something is worthless. It's definitely. Hey, the act of flowers growing in a greenhouse. Uh, I know what it is. It's so easy. <laughs> Using a medical e instrument. Uh, oh, does Davy know that you know it's something is worth <laughs> less? Dave, Davy studied for the SAT. Okay, here's the next one. Come on, girl, hit it. This is okay, fun. here's one. Okay. Oh, geez. Can I see the pronouncer, please? A pronouncer. Okay, okay. ready. <laughs> Eel logo flush shoe hippo pop o con er us. <laughs> for all of y'all that have said I'm bad at speaking. By the way, she ain't. Okay. Eight. For all of those that say hooked on phonics didn't work for you. <laughs> okay. All right, what you got? Does that mean A, used to describe something that's very good, used to describe a moldy smell, mm. or used to describe the planning of an extravagant wedding? I know. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, it's obviously B. B. No? I would have guessed that. Actually, that was going to be my What's guess What's yours? Too. I'm going to say it is used to describe something very good. Yeah. Who says that? Honestly. All right. Okay. Last word. You do this one. All right. Here we go. Hippopoto <laughs> mos strasi quifti lo <laughs> Is that a real word? Wait. Y'all are messing Y'all, it's not. You didn't pronounce it right. Hippopoto monstrosi quifti li o fa bi a Phobia. Why do you phobia? Why do you, okay, it's fear of something. Yeah. It's a fear Wait, on, of hippopotamuses. No, is it a fear of hippopotamuses? Fear of long winded jokes. We're both looking for words in here. Mm -hmm. Or fear of long well, words. Definitely fear of something. Fear of long words. Yay! I've had that fear <laughs> my whole life. <laughs> Hooked on phonics. Bye. Yeah. Oh, oh, a dictionary. dictionary. Gee, thanks. Thank you so uh, much. Oh my god. Did gosh. I win? Yeah. Yes, you did. <laughs> wow. See? Okay, I share Beautiful. this with you. Oh, we both need it. All, All right. right, coming up next, some new style trends <laughs> that are hot or some may be not. Yeah, we're gonna find out what we think. When we play Slay or Nay coming up after this. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That was fun. We that like things dog. like that. For a little Friday fun, we're going to weigh in on some viral trends in a segment we like to call Slay or Nay. All right, first up is a trend that has been seen in designers' fall 2023 shows. It's called No Pants. Okay, according to Elle, everybody seems to be going pantless. pantless. All right, let's look. Wow. Well, not everyone, just those <laughs> models. People. Okay. Designers like Christian Siriano, Sergio Hudson, they've been sending models down the runways with nothing below the waist, just stockings, underwear, and other bikini strapped garments. Going strapless. I mean, going pantless. Slay or nay? Y'all, in a real life, nay. can you go to work pantless? <laughs> just anywhere. Can you walk down the street no. totally pantless? No, I don't. I fe but I will say, if we could go back to that, like, if you could wear a Blazer. dress yeah, over or, that, yeah. like, pretend, I don't know. Like, a, I'm okay with seeing that with something over it. Do you so not, cover, but, like, so see-through. 
seen the See, underwear under something. Under something. Okay. I mean, I haven't w ever worn that. Yeah, I don't know it, that I but would, but I could. Yeah, you could do it. Okay. All right. What's the, the next, next one? The next trend is one of the hottest bags for spring. And guess where you can buy it? Where? At my favorite store, Michael's <gasps> Craft Store. Yes. Remember Michael's MJ Designs where you could go and make crafts? What is this going to look okay, like? Okay, but guess what? You can buy it for under $10. And we have our researcher... <gasps> what? Where's Sydney? Sydney, right here. Oh, she has the bag. Sid. Wait, is that real ivy? Or fa what is that? Moss? Moss. You can buy this at Michael's? Yeah, Wait people a are decorating Let's them. Let's see. Sid, hold it. Does he, do you like the vibe? Yeah. What do you think? It's it, like having a perk on your arm. I, I like that. I mean, it does leave a little on your outfit, but that's still good. <laughs> she sheds a little. She sheds a little, yeah, but she's she cute. Does she stain or she just shed? I, no, just shed. She's you know under what? $10. Slay. Slay, slay, all day. slay, slay all day. Go Sydney. Yeah, you can put flowers. I think you should go to Michael's and design that this weekend. <gasps> By the way, that would be cute. Yeah. Have some flowers and walk around right? outside. And Especially in New York where we want more spring. All right, next up, it's a makeup trend. People are going viral for creating graphic and 3D dimensional chrome eyeliner. They're using hot glue guns. Wait, Wait what? what? Oh, they so, put those on their oh. eyeballs? Okay. So, mm. it looks cool. Wow. wow. Okay, that looks cool. That one looks cool. It looks cool, and I love hot glue guns, but how does it stick to your face without burning? I have to say nay. nay. Yeah, it's definitely a nay. I do love the smell of a hot glue gun. You do? Did you like Elmer's glue when you were a kid? Hot glue gun. But did you ever peel Elmer's glue, like put it on your hand and peel it off in like a long... Oh, rubber cement. <laughs> Are we on the same show right now? Y'all yeah, remember rubber cement and you'd make Look balls out of it? Look have to yell. Okay, what's last up? Stop gaslighting me. <laughs> last up is a pair of boots that has tons of people talking. Wait, we've already talked about this. But, These uh, are the uh, oh, we have them in what? real life? Donna's got them. Okay, Guys, I wait. kind of love these. Would you Donna, wear them? you are the cutest. Would you wear those in real life? I, I mean, think I've styled them pretty well. I would say the By fact the way, that you have a dress to match. The fact that Donna is wearing those, I'm going to give it a slay because it's Donna slay all in day. that dress. Slay <laughs> would, all day. Would you keep those? I, if Christian Callen allowed me to keep these, I would. By the way, you look so cute. And look, also, they remind me of, you know, it's Dipsy, right? So it's like, who's big Dipsy? Hop, you don't remember? Tell Dipsy, Lala. Oh. <laughs> big hug. Did that what Teletubby said? Yeah. Oh. Oh, no, I'll give you a big hug. Okay. Love you, Donna. Oh. But they're fun. Love you. They're I mean, really like, cute. Oh, All right. So thank cute. you, Donna. Thank you, Donna. All right. Coming up next, Hoda and I check out New York's graffiti art scene and give it a go ourselves. Yeah, coming up right after this, we'll reveal our piece. That was fun. Cute, guys. Really okay. cute. Series H and J Love New York when we head out to some fun destinations around New York City. And this adventure took us across the Williamsburg Bridge into Bushwick, Brooklyn. Yeah, a really cool spot. It's one of the city's most well known neighborhoods for graffiti mm -hmm. art. And you guessed it, we rolled up our sleeves, we grabbed some paint, we became street <laughs> artists for a day anyway. Check it out. It's the splash of colors that have been part of New York's landscape for decades. 
But while graffiti used to be seen as a symbol of vandalism and disarray, it has now emerged as a vital art form, with businesses sponsoring vibrant murals and works even being featured in museums and galleries. And with tours and workshops now available to all, we decided to give it our best shake. I have faith in them that they'll be able to use the spray paint. So as long as their nails are not too long, we should be able to spray this can. We met graffiti artist Alex Santos in Bushwick, Brooklyn. You know what's funny? People, when they think of graffiti, they think like a can of paint, shake it up, write something. This is the opposite of that. This is a real art form. It's a, a form of self-expression. There's no wrong way to express yourself. Graffiti, you say, actually, was a healing force for you. Yes, so growing up, it was either join the gangs in the streets or escape with the art crew, and it was more that my realm because I had the talent. Who was the first person who said, Alex, you got something? My mom. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Alex was raised by a single mom in the Bronx. We heard that she used to check your backpack to make sure you didn't have paint sometimes. Yeah, usually I had the bag shaken up and I was trying to sneak out that house and go express myself. Yeah. And she tried to force me to just keep it in the books. But by the way, now what does she think? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's actually very surprised that I have my dream job. Today, Alex is an art instructor and street tour guide for Graph Tours, which allows visitors to try graffiti for themselves. But the coolest thing is you are living your dream. Yes. You're a working artist. What does it feel like? Uh, it's amazing to show people the different perspective of the graffiti because the common misconception is we're just vandals destroying the, the world, destroying the community, but depending on the picture you put and how you paint it, you can be building the community. And then Alex did his best to turn us into graffiti artists. Hoda and Jenna need to know how to just express themselves. We should be able to come up with a, a masterpiece at the end of the time we have. Is that a cartoon? Is that a dog? Wait, you just did Snoopy? Snoopy! Wait. Hoda! Amazing. Hoda and Jenna actually surprised me. They actually pulled out a Snoopy out of nowhere. That was pretty cool. Clean lines. Okay. That was that Amazing. Good. Try it. Try it. It's harder okay. than it looks. You got it. There you did, right away. I'm kind of into it. He taught us How the basics of spraying. Same distance. Yes. Yes. Clean. She's good. It's still legible. Now we fill it in. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> then we got started on our masterpiece. Stay inside the lines, just like a coloring book. How about this, no? Yes, nice and fast. It shouldn't take oh, too fast. long on Stop one letter. Stop waiting. Stop waiting. Might drip a little, but that's part of it, right? That's part of the part of the graffiti. As we learned, the secret is just to use the right amount of paint. What about the drip? You like a drip? I like a drip. And we don't like the drip. It could make the piece look a little bit messy, but if that's a style you're going for, then there's nothing wrong with it. It's about expressing yourself. She probably wanted to be a little drippy. It's fine. Drippy drip. Hoda uses the perfect amount of paint. I don't mind the drip. You do today. Okay, but I don't want it to be too drippy. Just light. Yeah. Done. Yeah, there you go. Further there you away. Go. Spreads further the paint away. evenly. Yes. Let's go, mama. Less is more. Less is more. Yes, you got it. There you go. Less yes is, is more. I grade out of like one to ten. I'd probably give Hoda and Jenna like a seven and a half, maybe. There's some things we could have sped up on or slowed down on. We had fun. Can we just thank Alex for we trying to help us, Santos? Trying, From yes. From craft tours for having us. And under this drape is our graffiti mural. We have to admit. We haven't seen the final product. No, but we will say Alex put some finishing touches. He did. We did part of it, and he did the rest of it. Shall All right. we reveal? Drum roll, please. Let's see what Alex has done. One, two, two three. three. Oh. Oh, my gosh. How cool is this? Wait. Was it? Is this for? Is this the one we started? That is awesome. He, Alex is an artist. Are we going to hang this somewhere? We have to. In our offices. Oh, we're talking we gotta about it. we got to put it somewhere. We sh um, yeah. and, I'll, and, I'll, and you know, we need to mention that making yeah. graffiti on somebody else's property is illegal in New York City. Don't do it. So if you're interested in giving it a try, do it like ours in a The way we did it. Area. That was really fun. Awesome. All right. From street art to street style, how one designer is making sustainable fashion cool. Coming up after this.
Tomorrow is Earth Day, so we wanted to shine a spotlight on an up-and-coming designer who's hoping to make an impact. Our girl Donna headed out to Brooklyn to meet him. Yes. Okay, this is so cool. His brand is called Zero Waste Daniel because truly nothing in his designs goes to waste. And he says he uses every last scrap of material to create his sustainable style. And the fashion world is taking notice. Check it out. What I specialize in is best night of your life clothes. Don't you wear Zero Waste Daniel and think you're not gonna get stopped on the street. I am sold. I want the <laughs> best night of my life. <laughs> Meet designer Daniel Silverstein, who is taking sustainable fashion to a lively and stylish new level. 150 billion items of clothing are created every year. 60% of our clothing has some sort of form of plastic in it. And fashion is the second largest polluter of clean water in the world. Brands like Zero Waste Daniel are getting it right in the sense that they're thinking about fashion from a really intentional place, from farming the textiles, manufacturing, and to retail as well. While the brand itself is only a decade old, this has been a lifelong passion project for Daniel. Tell me about the first time you fell in love with fashion. I fell in love with fashion at a very young age. I'm also a little brother to an older sister who had a collection of Barbies. After seeing whatever movie or the Olympics or a play, I would come home and remake what I had just seen out of anything in the house. All the tissues, a whole roll of tin foil, and finally, at maybe five years old, my mom said, I will take you to a fabric store. That's really where this all began for me. In school, I saw all of the mountains of scraps being thrown away, and I knew from childhood that there were other end uses for these things. What really worked for my business was breaking into factories, stealing their scraps, and showing people what I could do with it. It makes so much sense that Zero Waste Daniel cut through the noise because it wasn't just another sweatpant line, it was about solving a problem. In addition to his sweats and tees, Daniel's creations range from custom wedding gowns to avant-garde drag costumes. You're telling a story with the process of creating these clothes as well. My happiness doesn't come from my bank account. The happiness is in watching someone's eyes light up when they see their reflection wearing one of these pieces. Watching the light bulb go off over a student's head as they realize they could reinterpret materials in a way that they never thought of before. Then it was time to get scrappy. We're gonna cut and sew at the same time. And these little scraps are gonna come down the chute and end up in our reuse bin. And we go through this over and over and over. So there really is zero waste. Yeah, I feel like the main thing for me personally is that gratification of knowing that this was something that someone saw as trash and time and energy and expertise turned it into something beautiful. Is there someone that you are dreaming of dressing? Probably the person I would love to see wearing Zero Waste Daniel the most would be like Lil Nas X. You recently had a collaboration with Fran Drescher, who is another fashion icon. That was a really full circle moment for me because I felt like, as a kid, Fran Fine, I felt so much kinship with that character because I was the one wearing the loud outfits in my house. And to be dressing someone who inspired me to express myself through fashion was such an honor. While Daniel's relatively small operation has already reached impressive heights, he knows it's just the beginning for his mission. How hopeful are you that future generations will follow in this sustainable clothing lead? When I was a student at the Fashion Institute of Technology, sustainability was a club. Now it's a major at most design schools. So I'm really optimistic that the next generation of designers is being educated to think this way and that the people who discouraged me from pursuing this are retiring. So I'm thinking that the future is pretty bright. Okay, and they sent us these mm. awesome pieces. Um, it's just everything is so unique. I actually got this 
fanny pack that I wear as a crossbody oh, like when cool. I'm going to work out, Ooh, hands free. I love and I also it. got that tote bag. And how cool! The jean jacket, so cool. The jean I think. jacket she's wearing with the daisies and on it. And bucket hats are in, which is yeah, cool. it's like. But it reminds me of Blossom. Yeah, yeah. but I think like something that sets him apart too is mm. that he lives his mission of sustainability. Yeah in an authentic way that doesn't preach, but it enlightens, you oh, know? And cool. I think that is something that people want to take right. part of. Exactly. Totally. That's yeah. awesome. Exactly. Thank you, Donna. Right. And can we also just thank Daniel and Mario at Zero mm. Waste Daniel for sending all these things over. Beautiful. All right. Coming up next, guys, whether you're in the mood for a romantic thriller with Chris Evans or a romantic <laughs> comedy action pack, we got everything you need. Your weekend watch list is just ahead. It to Friday, which means you might be looking for something to watch this weekend. Here with some of the best shows and films to check out is TV host and entertainment <laughs> news guru, our friend Andrew Freund. Andrew, it's good to see You're you. You're our guru. I'm the guru. We mm -hmm. talked about Chris Evans. Yes. We yeah. talk about Ghosted. Yes. Now you talk about it. All right. This, <laughs> Hoda, this title is a bit triggering for okay. me. As someone who's been ghosted, not that I'm going to take it out on national television on anyone, but I'm here. <laughs> yeah. um, but this film is interesting because let's say okay, you're dating someone, yeah. it's going great, they ghost you. You think it's going great. You think it's going, mm -hmm. you're like, mm -hmm. story of my life, okay? <laughs> um, you think it's going great, and then they ghost you, and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go find them and surprise them in London. You go to London only to find <gasps> they are a CIA operative. Oh, I love bing, it. Bing, bang, boom, that's this film. That's good. It's really it's fun. It's a great premise. It's it's super fun, it has Chris Evans, Ana de Armas, mm -hmm. Amy Sedaris is also in it. We oh love gosh, Amy. I love Amy. Amy. We love Amy. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, I am dying to see this documentary. It's all about somebody we adore. Or Judy Bloom. Mm -hmm. So the thing that blew my mind about this is I think that sometimes we forget Judy Bloom is really an American trailblazer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's been writing for over 40 years and she created these novels that adolescents really came to understand their bodies, how to mm -hmm. interact with people. And in this film, we see a lot of celebrities talk about what she meant to them. Oh. Also the fact that, you know, she had a lot of books banned over the years. Yeah, she still does. And yeah. she still does, correct. So we get really kind of inner workings of how Judy is who she is, why she is, and what she meant to a lot of people. Also, over the years, she had pen pals with a lot of kids. Oh, she did? Going years and decades, and they still have, they're, they still write to each it's other. It's so hard to find. I mean, there's no one who's so multi-generational no. the way she is, who's 100%. gone past so many. Okay, a show everybody's talking about. If you watch the first 10 minutes, you're not sure if you want to continue, but if you do, you love it. It's called Beef. Did you watch it? I w first, I okay. watched oh the first 10 God. minutes. Okay. Stop it. I am so Stop into Beef. I am uh -huh. so into beef right yeah. now. Same. And I tried to Same. tell her about beef. And I watched the first 10 minutes and I No, 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 you gotta keep going. I did keep going. It gets a little it, weirder it before gets it weird. gets It gets a little weirder. Yeah, okay. okay, I was on a flight yesterday. I flew in from London yesterday. Yeah. I literally did not stop watching this the entire seven hours. I was, I mean, I had my wine. Yeah. And I was watching it 
It gets really weird, but it gets, I mean, doesn't it get really good? Oh my gosh, good? I'm obsessed with the commentary of sort of like the American dream and, and the so, pressure yeah. we put yeah. on ourselves and the, the yes. way we need feel like we all need to be perfect. Also, yes, and it's like the simmering yeah. anger that just yes. is right below the surface. Yes. It can yes. explode at and any moment. Oh, but it explodes in real interesting ways on this show. Okay. It's also adult, so don't have your kids no, watch no. Beef. No, this is adult not. No, I think element. the name Beef sort of makes that clear. Yeah. Um, okay, Peacock. <laughs> what? What does that mean? <laughs> well, what is that? What is it? What is I, Beef? We'll even? talk about it later. I thought it was like you have well, Beef is, with someone. Well, it is, but yes. there's a double. I believe there's entendre. also there's entendre. a double entendre. Mm. Okay. God, that show's good. Um, it is. Yeah. All right, Peacock, um, NBC streaming service, has a really kind of scary one. Yeah, I, well, it's interesting. Peacock right now is killing it. We really are. And this show... Uh, by, and, by, by we, we mean <laughs> by us. Hoda, Hoda and Jen are killing it. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Davis, basically Mrs. Davis is an AI. So obviously right now in the news, AI is huge right Everywhere. now. Everywhere. But what if AI was going to be taken on by a Catholic nun Hoda <gasps> named Simone? Ew. So she's an robot? This is a crazy. She's so she's basically tasked. We live in a world where this AI, Mrs. Davis, the public, all they do is contact Mrs. Davis and they do whatever she says. But Simone, played by Betty Gilpin, mm -hmm. she's like, this, this ain't right. I gotta change this. But she happens to be a nun. There's also, you know, a theme in there where she's finding the Holy Grail. It's a whole kind of crazy world made by the same people who made Lost and the oh, same yeah, people that's that made good. Big Bang Theory. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, that was, that was <laughs> hey, thank Andrew, you, thank Andrew. you. Thanks, Coming up next, one of our Plaza friends goes for a spin. Yeah, we're playing a new game called The Wheel Deal right after this. games around here we also love huge giant wheels <laughs> so we're launching a new game it's called the, the wheel, wheel deal. deal wow look at the love it. dresses <laughs> All right, here to play with the straight off the plaza is Savannah Haynes from South Carolina. Are you from South Carolina or Georgia? Georgia. 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 Um, yeah. And she's here with her best friend, Bridget. Hey, Bridget. They have bestie shirts. I They're love on a it. girl's trip. All right, here's how it works. This is going to be fun. So we just plucked you off the plaza. We're going to ask you three trivia questions about things on our show. So for each question you get right, you get 100 bucks. Okay, so at the end, you can either keep the money, whatever you made, or you can take the chance and risk it and play the wheel. Are you Ooh. ready, girl? Okay, do you yeah. watch our show? I do. Okay, okay. thank goodness. Excellent. Yes. Okay. okay, so here we go. Ready? The first question. Okay. In 10 days, our show is hitting the road. Where are we going? Is it A, London, B, New Orleans, or C, Austin? I would say New Orleans. Yes, yes. girl! $100! <laughs> Good job. All right, so we had a special guest co-host on Monday. Who was she? Is it Reba, Reba McIntyre, Lizzo, or Scarlett Johansson? I would say Scarlett Johansson. Good guess, but it was Reba. Oh, that's all right, girl. You got a hundred bucks. Okay, okay. One. next okay. one. On Tuesday, <laughs> musician. This is, this is hard. I wouldn't be able to answer these. <laughs> uh, on Tuesday, musician, director, and author Questlove. He stopped by. What oh. is the name of his band? Is it A. The Phillies, B. The Roots, or C. Deep Quest? I think it's B. Yes, yes. the Roots. Yes. Way to go. A little help from your friends. 
friends. All right, here we go. You, you got, got how many? Three two, two questions. questions, right? So you have 200 bucks. Okay. So you can either keep the 200 in your hot little pocket or you can risk it and take your chances on the wheel. All right, so here's what you could win. Tell them, Jenna. Yeah, if you spin the wheel, you could win $500. Yeah. You could win prizes, tickets, or even a trip. You could also land on 100 bucks. So you could lose 100. Yeah. Since you already have what do you want to do? I want to spin the wheel. Come on, girl. Spin it, girl. Spin the wheel. Oh, All right. Come on over. All right, let's go. Okay. You got it. Okay. Here we go. Come on, Savannah. <laughs> yes, what a beautiful spin. Let's see where it lands. Let's see where it lands. 100 trip. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Go have a meal. Yeah. <laughs> well, a fancy one with booze. Yeah. Um, All thank right, you congrats. so much, Savannah. Thank you for playing. And thank you to your bestie who's yeah. here, too. What's her name again? Bridget. Bridget. We love you, Bridget. Bridget. Love you. Oh, there you are. We'll find Bridget eventually. Yeah. And we'll be back right after this. Way to go. Next week, by the way, star studded. We can't wait. We've got Amy Poehler. We've got Tony Braxton. We've got Megan Trainer and the great Smokey Robinson. What a week. We'll see you Monday, guys. Bye, y'all. Have Bye. a good weekend. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Hey, buddy, it's today. Hey, the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. <laughs> the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about. Only on today. Welcome to today. So happy to see you guys. Would you like my boost? Yes. Get back. Here we go. Mom. Sometimes we just do things to help. That's our Hoda. Happy birthday. We got an awesome crowd, y'all.
It is one of the longest running food shows on the Food Network. Folks love watching. The up-and-coming chefs beat Bobby Flay, or at least they tried to. He's invited some fellow celebrity chefs to give it a go on his new show, Beat Bobby Flay Holiday Throwdown. And today, Bobby's going to throw down in our kitchen with some chicken parm. Everybody loves yeah. chicken parm. Yeah. Bobby, good to see you, man. Thank How you are so you? much. So good to be here. Um, it's holiday season. It is. Yeah. Do you, do you cook a big turkey for Thanksgiving? I do. That? I do. Uh, I, Thanksgiving is my... Um, it's my favorite day of the yeah. year. Actually, I'm going to be here next week. Um, oh, good. Oh, in the yeah, 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 yeah. There's going to be a lot of food in this place. Okay, good. Oh, man, I'll, I'll be back then. I'll okay. be back. So we're going to make chicken parm. This is okay. a dish, obviously, I, I call this chicken parmigiano as opposed to chicken parmesan. It's a little bit cleaner version of, of the classic. And I just put this on my menu uh, in, in Amalfi in okay. Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Okay, so a couple of things. You look like you're not going to cook. You got your hands oh, in your cooking, pocket. Dude. You want to do this? Oh, okay. It's okay. chicken parm. So chicken cutlets. Okay. This is, yep. this is classic. So um, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs. And so you set up a dredging station. You season every single um, oh, each one of part them. of it. Okay, yes, exactly. Because otherwise it's bland. So you go. So the so the flour <laughs> to the. <egg. laughs> is that bad? I don't no, no. You're doing no, great. You, get in there, right? you can tell that Willie cooks. You he's get in, he's there. in there. Look, there. He's in it. And now what? Okay. And then and then and then the eggs hold on to the panko breadcrumbs. Exactly. Ah, oh. And then you let that sit there That's for a second, a and we just Come put on. it in the oil. I'm actually using avocado oil more these okay. days than canola oil. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, they say it's better for you, so I say, okay, why not? Okay, so... Are people laughing at my cooking? I, don't I think know. I'm doing great. I don't know. What are they laughing yeah, about? Get your hands dirty. Okay, so you want to make yeah, sure just it's your hands. Really? So, so every every culture has their own version of chicken cutlet, right? So we have. Um, <laughs> I've lost them. Thanks for coming. No, I'm, with you. I'm with you. Okay, so then we so every every culture has their version of chicken cutlet. Obviously, this is sort of an American Italian version. We're gonna make tomato sauce. Okay. I have three ingredients in my tomato sauce: onions, garlic, and then some and some crushed them crushed tomatoes. And I let this cook for about 45 minutes. How do you just oh you press it with then the potato I, and masher? I, and first you let it cook for about 25 minutes so they soften. Okay. And then I crush them with a potato okay. masher so it actually has texture. Yeah. Got and it. then I put like a little sugar. This is very controversial. Some people say don't ever put sugar in your tomatoes, but you know what? If they're acidic, you want a little sugar to yeah, bounce, bounce, bounce it why out. Not? Okay. Okay. So then we have the chicken cutlet, and then I take some buffalo mozzarella. Mm, look at that. And I just put it right on look top. Look at that. Now here's the thing that I do. You see, I leave some of the crispy bits uncovered because oh, yeah. we want that good contrast of texture. Crunchy, yeah. Exactly. We put it in the oven. I love this. I love this kitchen. You put it, you put it in this oven, and then it comes out of this oven Magic. right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here it is. So then we take some of the tomato sauce, and, uh, and instead of dousing it uh, all over the chicken and then ruining that crispiness, I put the tomato sauce on the bottom. And the then, cheese is melted uh, on top. And then see, it's, it's, a, it's a much That's cleaner so version. Yeah. A little bit That's of nice. fresh basil yeah. and a whole bunch of Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Look at that. May yeah. I start, Chef? Yes, yes you can. Must. And then some fresh arugula because this is a very healthy dish. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of Just olive, olive oil, oil on top. And there we go. Mm. Let's sneak in here, Bob. Get in there. Let me try. Oh, Thank you. Is it yummy? Mm. So good. Yeah, I mean, the, see, here's the thing. The really nice thing about it is you get, wow. obviously, the acidity, mm. the sweetness, the tomatoes. Mm. You get that crispy contrast, the mm -hmm. texture on the chicken. Mm. And, of course, that fresh mozzarella is And it feels beautiful. a little light, which you can't always say for a chicken parm. Well, the thing about chicken parm, and you and I sort of share that, that love of chicken parmesan, you know, where it's kind of doused in all that cheese and yeah. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But this is, a, to me, this is, like a, this is like a Tuesday night version of the Sunday night yeah. meal. There you go. Yeah, exactly. I, um, did I hear you're in a movie? Wait, oh, what? Bobby Flay is in one let, delicious Christmas. Let me tell you wait, something. Come on. I, yes, the come Oscar on. buzz has been so <laughs> overwhelming. Wait, wait. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking? Who do you play yourself? This is, I play. I play Tom Kingsley, who is a, a a food critic. Uh, it's called One Delicious Christmas. Um, yes, they wanted me to act. I said, don't do it, but they said, please do it. So here it is. So when do you see that? And where? Uh, it's coming on uh, November 11th, Discovery Plus. Oh, um, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah exactly. Plus. Oh, That's yes. So cool. so, uh, viewing everywhere. There'll be viewing parties Everyone's all over the place talking about for it. One Delicious Christmas. Exactly. Bobby, How do you congratulate... really feel about a food critic, though? I love food life. critics. Okay. Great. Yes, we love food critics. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Make this recipe at home. Go to today.com slash food. Thanks, Bobby. Great to see you. Man. We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head -head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. 
Thanks for waking up uh, yeah. early. What are, yeah, what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very very comforting, and it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, in some salt and water. You know, you've seen this a million times in the Today Show. Lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're going to cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're going to get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're going to add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of the one of the most classic Italian American pasta dishes is pasta a la vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do we'll to it? What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce, so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> oh. so, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rub in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So we're just going gonna to cover the, uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And mm -hmm. I love cooking things, you know, I call it oven to table, where, you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm -hmm. this one. So, Bobby, did, you, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes, that's actually, I thought that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. To hey, Bobby, honest, how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there, it's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like you know, like when you have the lasagna and the and and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. around the side. What do you always want that part of it? You get, you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for I don't know about 15 to 20 minutes. Because don't forget, the pasta's already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up, and then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to broil. Mm -hmm. yourself and cook the top. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your uh, take out your your pasta, and you can see this is what it's gonna look like. I see. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. Nice. Oh, I hope that's what I'm that's talking about. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make this. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Make, Man, make it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take a, take a little bit and just kind of, kind of put it in a bowl. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Look at that. That's I mean, favorite. after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done, uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, Jeez. which is insane. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their, in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, does, I don't know, does your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Um, oh. Actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christine, Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So if you take the sausage out of here, she's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there as well. <laughs> well, I think last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah. And then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's yeah. a lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely you lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? 
In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because you know I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life, and uh, you know we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened the Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well, and uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm-hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right, we'll all right, to thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Morning on Today Food, the one and only Bobby Flay. For decades, we've watched him create some of our favorite dishes on countless TV shows and more than a dozen cookbooks. His latest is called Sundays with Sophie, and it takes us inside the Flay family kitchen, a collection of dishes inspired by meals with his daughter, Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this has got to be near and dear to you. You're, like, does Sophie cook too? You've been teaching her your skills? Yes, yeah, she, she does. So Sundays with Sophie. Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. The, oh. the idea is that it's, you know, it's Sunday meals or just meals for the family around the table. And actually, I, I devised a lot of these recipes during the quarantine because, like everybody else, I was cooking three meals a day at home. And so the recipes are incredibly simple, and they're really built for the home cook. Oh, good. I love that. Okay, yeah. simple. You had me at hello. Okay. Talk about this poached egg. This okay. is cacio pepe poached eggs. Coche, uh, cacio pepe <laughs> poached eggs. So cacio pepe simply means cheese and pepper. Yes. We usually see it classically on pasta. Yeah. But everybody's cacio pepe everything now, at this Now, is this point. a breakfast, or is this, I know, is this breakfast, or is this dinner? Um, no, like, this, this, is like, this is like breakfast or brunch, or okay. like, it could definitely be like a late night. Listen, I, I, there's plenty of times I love... I love uh, you know eggs for dinner. Me too. And so basically, what I do is I make a vinaigrette. This is very okay. very simple. So it's some white vinegar, some honey, some shallots. Mm-hmm. Okay. This reminds me of what we did our cooking thing together. I know. Remember? I know. I know. Do you want me to stir that? I can do that. Yeah, now. sure. Go right ahead. Like. <laughs> exactly. Look at me whisking. And then some olive oil, and then we're gonna add some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, of course. And then some mm. cracked black pepper. So okay. there, there's the cheese, there's the cacio and the pepe, so to speak. I mean, this is black delicious pepper. right here. And this is our little dressing. Exactly. Okay. There you go. So then we're going to poach some eggs. And a lot of people are... Conti- are I'm intimidated. Intimidated. All right, show me. So it's, it's two ingredients. One of them is water. The <laughs> other is some vinegar. Okay. okay. And the vinegar is going to help the egg. This is my big word of the day, coagulate the egg. Oh, so okay. They have, so they kind of breathe <laughs> it. To- a little bit. Do you guys know how to poach an egg? Al, I know you. No. Raise no. your hand if you can poach no, an egg. Al can. Oh, oh I, okay, yeah. Al poaches eggs with his eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to just, and, and, and here's a little tip. I, I crack the eggs and I first put it into a little ramekin because mm-hmm. if I break it, I don't want to put it in here. Oh, true. And a lot of times you do that if you just, you just kind of go right into the water. Okay. So we're going to let those poach. They poach for, you know, just like, a, I don't know, three or four minutes. And, and, and the best thing to do is kind of just do a little whirlpool so it gets a, gets a okay. really beautiful shape. Seems like it'd be hard to get those out. Oh, no, they come them. right out. Really? As okay. You, <laughs> as soon as you can get them out, you just take them out. It's very, very simple. Okay. It should be no problem. Okay. okay. We have some toast over here. All right. Okay. So. Um, sourdough bread, some kind of country loaf. I like mine like slightly thick, maybe, I don't know, maybe an, sort of like a, an inch and a half or so, or so like that. And then just some 
you know, good quality olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread. Yeah. And then some salt and pepper. And this is one of the things that people forget when they're making toast. Don't forget to season it as well. Okay. Salt and pepper your toast. Like bring out the flavor of that delicious oh, yeah, bread I, that you I have. I never do that. Okay. Exactly. Good call. Okay. So we have the toast. I put a little more. I, I, I take, you just roast this in the oven, or you I'm put sorry, this in like yeah. the toaster oven? So you can oven. put it in the oven. You can put it under the broiler, okay. or you can just put it in a toaster. Got it. I think a toaster is probably the <laughs> best case okay. scenario, yeah. right? Yeah. It works. Easy. What's happening over here? Should we get these out? Uh, you can do that if you want, but we're down here. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just want, concerned about that. This is this is Savannah <laughs> in the kitchen right here. Distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to Food Network. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some a garlic clove, and I just rub the garlic clove a little bit on, okay. the, on the bread, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yep. You know, this is a very savory meal. A little more olive oil, mm. and then we take our poached eggs, and we put the poached eggs right on top. Whoops! Mm. Right on top of our our bread. Okay. And then we take our dressing. Yes. Okay. Now this is the good stuff. And this Dressing's is where fantastic. this is where all the flavor mm -hmm. comes in. Okay. Oh yeah. Just How pour that you right over there. Wonderful. Insane. Really good. Some Parmigiano. Oh my oh. God. Some fresh Boom. chives. I mean, come on. Can you make the dressing ahead of time? Though? Absolutely. And of course, you can use it for salads. Or you I was can about put it on to ask that. Vegetables. Anything. Absolutely. Very, very versatile. Okay. But this is what I was doing at home. It's like you know, so doing, you're at home. Like you just take the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and you make dishes. And and this this was one of them. Okay. Well, that looks. Should I have a bite? Yeah, I'm sure. so worried about those other Dive eggs. in and go grab them. Okay, up. I just okay so want to work. You got to cut it. Okay, here we go. You, someone else is going to have to read this. Gets gooey. Gets gooey. Uh huh. Gets gooey. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, yummy, Bobby. Wow, that's a GIF right there. <laughs> Someone's working on it. You can catch wow. Bobby again on, the third on hour. our third hour. You can also get us recipes today.com slash This morning and today, food, our friend Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay is here with an easy meal to make the entire family happy. He's also out with a new show. It's called Bobby's Triple Threat. It's where he challenges some really talented chefs to go up against his hand picked culinary That's tapes. That's awesome. Ooh. He also has a brand new cookbook out. It's called Sundays with Sophie that he wrote with the help of his little dog. Aww. Bobby, always good to have. It's not really fair to call Sophie little anymore. No, she's 26. Yeah, yeah. 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 But That's she'll be so she'll be calling you after this. Yes. <laughs> yes, Sophie. Yeah. Um, what was the impetus behind the cookbook? Well, you know, I, I did all these recipes because during quarantine, like everybody else, I was cooking three or four meals a day right. at home, and and finally I actually decided to write them down. Hmm. But but the great thing about it is I was basically utilizing all the things at my fingertips, and so the recipes are incredibly simple. It's really a you know Sophie. It's Sundays with Sophie, but Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. 
everybody. It's, okay. it, they're they're okay. family meals. Mm -hmm. So right. what are we making? What so today making we're this? making a creamy rigatoni. We have some spicy sausage in there as well. Mm -hmm. Some roasted eggplant. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's helpful. It's spicy. It's it's got big flavors and it's easy to make. So people tend to be afraid of eggplant. They do tend to be uh, afraid of eggplant, but it's actually this is a, actually a very quick and easy way to cook it, Al. Just take a little bit of olive oil over some diced eggplant. I put a little salt and pepper, and so you, you don't put even it. Peel it. You, no, you don't have to peel it. And okay. I put it in the oven. That's for, it. for about 30 minutes and it roasts okay. and it gets really nice and soft Ooh. and you can reserve it, okay? Then we have some spicy sausage that I saute and, uh, you know, get nice and brown, try to get a little color on the outside, mm -hmm. make sure it's cooked all the way through. And then you have these sort of juices in the bottom. And then because, you know, it's the fall, I, I, I want to make it sort of a little bit heady, so I'm going to add a little red wine to start. Oh. What kind of wine do you use? Um, I use uh, like a good table wine. It could okay. be a Pinot Noir or Cabernet. It doesn't really matter. And then, you know, something that you, that you want to eat. Stand back just because yeah, I have a white dress on. Stand by, give a white dress on. And then, <laughs> and then, and then some tomato sauce. Mm. And then we, you let the tomato sauce and the, um, and the red wine cook together. Mm -hmm. Picks up all that flavor. Any secret to your homemade tomato sauce? Uh, three ingredients. Onions, garlic, tomatoes. That's it. That's and it? If, and you taste them. If they're a little acidic, I, I put a pinch of sugar. I know that's controversial, mm -hmm. but, like, let's make, let, you know. It tastes good. Exactly you, right. Do you break, like, break them up in a blender? or do you? Just... I crush them with, like, a potato masher okay. while they're cooking. Could you use oh. canned? If you... I definitely use canned. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Canned tomatoes are good. So okay. we have our roasted eggplant. We put it in here with the, with the, uh, with the sausages and the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And then we have some rigatoni. It doesn't do have you, to be rigatoni. Why do you like the rigatoni? Uh, for this I like rigatoni because it has a little bite to it, you oh, know. Okay. And, and also, the, the holes running right. through it actually pick up some of the sauce. Then we're going to add a little uh, creme fraiche to this, oh my God. Oh. so we can make it creamy. Don't get that on your beautiful I white know, dress. I'm still standing back. Okay. Oh my goodness. And Thank then you. some Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Mm. Oh, Bobby. Oh man, that's, are you kidding? That's some funny. basil. That's I'm, here, funny. I'm here. I'm here for oh comfort. Oh my God. I'm here for comfort. I'm very some comfort. fresh oregano. Oh, this is very this is comforting. Very comforting. You guys, you're oh like, God. oh, let, let them cook. We're going to go eat. That's, that's right. it. Yeah. We're like, that's enough, Bobby. You, you, know that help. you guys have like a four course meal every single day yeah. on the show. It's the greatest like, place it's time in the world. to eat now, Bobby. But you were one of the first people in the last hour who actually made breakfast for us on, during a breakfast. We breakfast. were so taken aback. We like, very Bre rare. Breakfast is very important in the morning. But look, it's so, oh, it was pretty delicious. simple to make, and this is amazing. Thank you very much. And again, you know, I had some, I had some ingredients, and that's that's yeah. what I came up with. And so, and so, um, you know, the book is really about simple ingredients, mm -hmm. and it gets the family around the table. And yeah. to me, that's the most important thing. Which is thing. the most important. Yeah. Could you make like a double batch of the sauce and the sausage, and then freeze it? Al, absolutely. You can you can definitely freeze the sauce for sure, and then and then when you you know when you want to use it, you know, a couple weeks later, or whatever, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. thaw it out. But th this is also a great family style. This Big bowl so of this for Sunday oh, dinner. Man. Bobby, Bobby, make it happen. Thank you, Bobby. Whole family will love. With today food joined by one of our favorite chefs, Ooh. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100 plus battle tested oh. recipes. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? <laughs> well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beef Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, so come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic, so we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. Oh, I'm going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh. segment. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the go chili ahead. Went Wendy, right put out the, the meat window. Sure did. Nothing remains nameless. Where'd you Bobby? meet? It's 2021. How'd you guys meet? Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the, uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like, you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat so like. So we're going to <laughs> very we're going Carson to Carson uh, founder. Uh, Carson well founder on the gonna, internet. We're not I will gonna not say that out loud. Hand, but we very, but very impressive. No, he didn't. He There's did. No he did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no, veg you really are dating have... up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right, so anyway, this guy went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace so the meat? Thank you so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well. And we're going to let this cook for a little while. And then basically what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And, and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these, like, really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the key, oh, that's right? A nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm. We want that nice cooling effect. And I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm -hmm. and some chilies. Yeah. I'm going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. you got to make sure you have that crunch right. going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the chili Mexican take cheese. less time because it's meat-based? I mean, vegetable-based than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? It does, Al, because, you know, if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms, then the eggplant mm -hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well. And uh, and then, you know, you, you just you, st you start to garnish it a little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things. And it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm -hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because, mm -hmm. right. you know, I am I am a meat eater. And um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job mm. of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried that oh, first wow. bite? I was just curious. <laughs> He's trying to help you here. Uh, no, trying to help what, a brother out. So what, what did she say? <laughs> Whew. Um, you know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, is she there right now? You tell her. Oh, no, she's not here. But, but yeah, yeah, thanks so much for having me. You're the best. Bobby, we love you so much. Does this is so fun to tease you. you. Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, well, you know, th there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, there's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding, yeah. um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic home style dishes. Mm. Cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a, you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. 
Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we've, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, only uh, lost so twice. obviously it's they're amazing. not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one. Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volumes. It's a terrific right. book. Thank you, Bobby. It's a great show. Yeah, it's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys do the best. <laughs> Is there one question that everybody asks that you're tired of? Never trust a skinny chef. If I have to hear that, I mean, my entire life, first thing out of people's mouth is, how do you stay like that and eat all that pasta? I'm like, I don't eat all the pasta. I eat a couple bites of pasta. I don't eat all of it. Hey, everybody. I'm Al Roker. Welcome to Cold Cuts. It's where we pile on the meats, cheeses, toppings, while we pile on the questions. Today's guest is one of my faves. I have known her since she was about three years old. Oh, God! <laughs> Giada De Laurentiis, you know her from the Food Network. You've seen her on the Today Show. She's a producer. She's a director. She's no, a No, food... I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm just, yeah, go with it. You're, <laughs> you do it all. Uh, she's a businesswoman, and most importantly, she's a mom, and she is a very nice lady, and has always been I'm a nice, nice lady. Me. First of all, how's your, how's your day going? Bread eyed and bushy tail and ready to do some eating and making, I guess, sandwiches. Bread, when you're making a sandwich. What I would, like all bread. All bread. I love bread. All bread. We but, have we have different kinds here. I know. I mean, my favorites are a focaccia uh -huh. and a rustic, right? Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that my favorite sandwiches belong on a little facelle. Like this. A Look. little what? Facel. Facel? Facel. I didn't know that's what that was called. Yeah, so it's a kind of a, a mix. It's Italian, but it's also French. The French make their sandwiches on bread like this. Uh -huh. There's not a lot of dough, mm -hmm. a lot of crust, which is my favorite. Mm -hmm. In fact, when I get bread, a lot of times I eat all the crust and leave the inside. That's not easy. So this morning I had a little toast and I ate all of the crust on the outside of the toast and I left the inside. <laughs> So anyway, I like it because it's not very doughy, so I think mm -hmm. it's perfect for sandwiches. Wow. Well, see, something I did not know. Here's something else I did not know. Oh. I did not know that you were actually born in Italy. A lot of people don't know that. I don't know why I keep saying that I'm born in Rome. I moved to the States when I was eight. Because I don't have an accent, mm -hmm. I think that it doesn't stick. How did you end up without an accent? Because a lot of people I know who started in a foreign country and leave. But how old know, were they? Well, I, I know some folks who are fairly young. And I, was, I was eight. Maybe that's and thing. I lost it. I Boom, lost all the like acting. Well, because when you go to grade school, grammar school in mm -hmm. the States, you end up assimilating. And so, no. But my parents yeah. still have an accent. Everybody else who came here, mm -hmm. I think the, the cutoff age is like 18 to 20. If mm -hmm. you come here between any time after 18 or 20 years old, the accent sticks. But anything before, they say you can get rid of it. I've done a really good job. You have. At faking that I'm American. Well, no, I just kidding. We see you as American because you, I mean, it seems like ever since the Food Network has been on, you have been part of the Food Network. Well, not that long. I know, but. I'm not as old as some of them. No, but you are. It's an, I've it's been there like, a long time now. It's Every probably. Day Italian is, is like a staple. Yeah, it's like, what, 16 something years? Does that, does that seem strange to you that yes. it's been 16 years? Yes, and when I look at. It's been more than footage from then to now. I'm yeah. like, oh, wow. Did you appreciate just what you had achieved that early on? There was no roadmap at mm -hmm. that time. This, this is all, as you know well, the love of food is and cooking in this way is a whole new adventure. Right. It didn't exist before. You know, people who did what I did for a living, they sort of were in kitchens. Nobody really saw them, sure. right? Yeah. Today, look at we're making sandwiches yeah. with like ingredients that didn't exist when I moved to the States. There was no mortadella. There was no good prosciutto. There was no good salami. Pancetta did, didn't exist. My parents were importing this stuff. 
Nowadays, you find a plethora. You find a foie plethora. gras. You find all you sorts of things. You get to use words like plethora. And lovely parmigiano that didn't exist either. No. So we've you, come a fact, long way. For the longest time, I always thought parmesan cheese was in that green can that you yeah, should Because for the longest time, that was parmesan cheese until they finally started importing it because people loved Italian food. And I think, I think Italian food is one of those cuisines that I don't think people associate I think they think it's American food. Well, let me ask you, if you weren't doing Italian food, which you are the master of, what cuisine would you be most drawn to? Uh, Asian. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, especially Japanese, because I find that it's it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. I like things that are pretty. They yes. come in pretty packages. They're dainty. They're delicate. And I think that um, it's like eating a little jewel. Like when you eat a piece of sushi, it's like mm. eating a jewel, right? Mm. I mean, think about the way it's wrapped, the way it's cut, all the little specks of different colors inside. The facets. Yeah, it's, it's stunning. And so to me, that would be what I would be doing. I thought you were going to ask me a different question, but yes. See, you never know. No, That's... I thought you were going to ask me what I would do if I wasn't cooking, and then I realized okay, it's well, not what he's asking well, me. Well, what would you be doing if you weren't cooking? Something with a lot of adrenaline, like be a spy or be a race car driver. No, wait, let's, wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to the first. You wanted to, you want to be a spy? I think it's cool. You know what? I could... Living on the edge, knowing all these secrets and the adrenaline rush of it all, it's pretty cool. I could, I could see you as a spy. Come on, Al. I could. You've got that kind of Boris and Natasha thing. I could be your Boris to your Natasha. Biggest culinary influence? So I would say that it's mostly my family. Mm -hmm. Mostly. I mean, obviously, growing up, I watched the Galley Thing Gourmet, Julia Child, all of those people, but I think that my aunt is one of the biggest influences in my life. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, too, but I only spent X amount of time with him, where my aunt, I've spent a lot more time in the, cook, in the kitchen cooking with her and traveling and exploring new foods and coming up with recipes on the spot in these exotic places. And so I think. She's sort of my, you know, she never had any children. Mm -hmm. She has worked and make movies her whole life. She started when she was 18. And she's made a, you know, she's become uber successful at it. And I feel like she's sort of the person I look up to and the one that I got the most inspiration because she loves food as much as I do. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that, I think, because there's a whole generation that you are the most famous De Laurentiis. I, in America. I'm serious. Yeah, you can't say that too loud. Well, the rest uh, no. of the dealer and will I not like that. that. I understand we that. We try to keep it all in perspective. But I'm telling you, for a wide swath of this country, you are the most famous dealer and But for those of us of a certain age, and in a knowledge of, of this business, your family is a big Hollywood dynasty. Yes. Was there ever a point where you thought of going into the family business as opposed to, you know, forging your own your own pathway? I did go into the family business before I did this. I, so it's it's a rite of passage mm -hmm. for in my family and everybody does some kind of job in the family business. Before I went to college because for my family college, you know, in Europe at least in the old days, not anymore. 
college was, you know, it was an icing on the cake. It was mm -hmm. not necessary, especially right. if you had a family business. Sure. You just went straight into the family business. And so me being a female, mm -hmm. you know, my family was like, well, why don't you just work on a movie, figure out what part of a movie, what, what, what role you want to play. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, not necessarily, when I say role, I don't mean acting so much as mm -hmm. whatever, what wardrobe, job? props, whatever it producing, might be. Producing, directing. whatever. So I did a couple of different jobs on a couple of different movies. I even did a little, a little acting, and I realized I don't really like it. I really love to cook. I know that doesn't, that doesn't sound realistic at the time mm -hmm. because it were mostly men in kitchens, right? And it was sort of manual labor, and my family was like, you're little, you're not strong. The hell are you gonna do? They're gonna eat you alive. I was like, but that's what I like to do. So if I can't do that, then I find something else to do. I didn't like movie business, but I did do it. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was not a good actress, and I didn't enjoy the hours, and I didn't enjoy moving locations all the time, and you would think that I wouldn't like to travel, even though that's all I do these days. <laughs> and now all I do is stand in front of a camera. All the things I didn't like, that I wanted to do in food because I thought that I could be artistic, but be, be behind, mm -hmm. sort of, I didn't end up doing it. I ended up full circle right back where I didn't want to be. But, but in... A different yes. milieu. Yes, but with, with all of these things, and these things make me feel very comfortable. So mm -hmm. in this vein, I'm very comfortable. And on camera. Yes, but I have this. Between me your, and the camera, there's all of this. Your co-stars. My co-stars are so colorful and mm -hmm. quite delightful, and in a moment of panic, I can just put something in my mouth. <laughs> food in my mouth. Sorry, I didn't complete the sentence or the thought very well, but I meant any of these pieces of food. What's your favorite meat? Is this mortadella? Not bologna, mm -hmm. but mortadella. When I was a kid and I would show up with this, everybody thought it was bologna. Have you ever had just straight mortadella? I it's don't the, think I have. Mm, you should try it. It's the first thing I have when I land in Rome. That on white pizza. Now, what are the white specks? Fat. There you go. So usually it's seasoned with black pepper and pistachios. Mm -hmm. oh, it's wow. quite delicious. Yeah. We're going to do a little bit of pesto. Pesto is sort of like my mayo. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it's a fat. It's a fat, yeah. 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 It's a tangy fat. Here, I'm gonna give you some. And then I put a little mortadella on top. I'm a pretty simplistic person mm -hmm. when it comes to sandwiches. And you have to remember that Italians don't eat a ton of sandwiches. We eat panini, but they're usually not even a lunch item. They're sort of a snack. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so then I put a piece of fresh mozzarella. And we have, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. You know what else you could put is really yummy. Have you ever had fried capers? You know, I'm not a big caper person, but I've never had fried capers. Okay, well, I fry my capers. So we're talking about the meat of your career. Or let's let, let's widen out. Has there been a, a setback in your life that, you know, that you, you've had to deal with? Yeah, I think divorce. Yeah? Yeah. I was married for, like, I don't know, 12 years, but I was with Jade's dad for 25. Mm -hmm. So I was 18. And then at 40-something, I'm like, oh, hmm, now what? Mm -hmm. Now what do I do? And plus... My whole life, I think when you're with some, how long have you been with Deborah? Uh, tw it'll be 23 years. Okay, so when you're with somebody for 20 some years, mm -hmm. your identity becomes, you, it's a joint identity in a yeah. way. Maybe not you and Deborah because you have very strong careers on your own, but most couples and all your friends, everything mm, is sure, sort of oh, intertwined. Sure, your part, life yeah. is intertwined. I mean, it's so funny that you say that because, when I, I mean, I was sorry, sorry to hear you, know, you guys. Had, had yeah, I know. Up, but, but it never, it, not for a moment changed how I feel about you or either professionally or personally. But I'm in a field mm -hmm. that's a lot about family. Right. My whole, my whole career is based on family. Not that being married was the only family. Right, right. But I think for me, what I realized was my identity was intertwined with his. Ah. And I defined myself by certain things. And, and being married or a wife was one of those things. Right. I spent so much time curating that relationship. Now I gotta figure out who I am. And I'm also 25 years older. Yeah, I didn't think of it. That and a way. single mother. Yeah. And I work full time. And I think that society can be tougher on women than men. Yeah. I yeah. think men can come and go and do different things in their life. And I think women. We, we hold them to a different standard. It's, it's actually you. made me more of a, let's say, real human being. Yeah. I am not as perfect as everybody would like to think that I am. Maybe sometimes it takes something like this yeah. to realize how appreciated you are. Probably. And probably I think that's what milestones in our lives are. I think that the other one was my brother's death at a very young age. Mm -hmm. 
I was already doing Food Network, but it was very early stages. And I remember with him and him dying literally in my arms and my sister's arms and realizing, holy cow, he just turned 30. Life is short. I better get on it. Yeah. And I think that's when I realized, okay, I got to focus my attention, figure out what the hell I'm doing and make sure I do it because it's fleeting. So I think things like that mm -hmm. really change your perspective and they're important. Who are some of the chefs that helped you succeed? When I was looking um, and working on opening Jada in Las Vegas, um, I turned to Bobby Flay a lot yeah. because he'd had a 15 year relationship with them already. And he went through, he just helped me with everything that came down to understanding what this partnership with Caesars Palace would be, what the pitfalls were, what I had to be aware of, sticking to my guns. I'd never done this before. I went from zero restaurants to 275 seat restaurant in the busiest corner in Las Vegas. And so I was terrified. And so I think for me, he was one of the people who guided me, mm -hmm. sort of, and really helped me day and night, gave me his lawyers, like really was there to walk me through it. Mm -hmm. So he was my biggest champion, I think, in that realm. Is there one question you, you're, that everybody asks that you're tired of? Yes. What's that? How could I be so thin and eat so much pasta? Never trust a skinny chef. If I have to hear that, I mean, my entire life, first thing out of people's mouth is, how do you stay like that and eat all that pasta? I'm like, I don't eat all the pasta. I eat a couple bites of pasta, I don't eat all of it. I eat a little bit of chocolate, I eat a little bit of things. I don't eat an entire platter full of anything. But it's like, it, you know, I think that in Europe, we know how to eat a yeah. little bit of everything. Sure. We drink a little bit. Like, well, the, our portions, the portions are so much smaller. Yes, but in America, the portions are ginormous. So no one has learned to eat small amounts of food. Mm -hmm. We've grown up with like giant meat Super size. Everything is all you can eat and super size. Yeah. That's all we know. And that is also part of the culture because all these immigrants came here. And the, a success story in America is the more food you have, yep. the more money you have. Yeah. So the bigger the meatballs, the richer you are. Yeah. And that's what people wanted. And so I didn't grow up like that. So to me, it's not that strange. You know, it's so funny you say that because to my, my grandmother, my dad's mother's way of thinking, you were healthy and you were prosperous if you were a little heavier. Of course, and so when but she that was Deborah, the beauty. She was like, oh, Stupid. child, you gotta, you gotta gain weight. Gotta, and how many mothers, on your bones. how many mothers say about their sons, hey, if, if your husband is super thin, he's certainly not happy. Fat husband is a happy husband. Well, then I should have been really happy. You are.
difference between mozzarella and burrata? Well, burrata is different because burrata has like a shell on the outside and it's buttery, so it's a different texture on the inside. It's the churning process that makes it different. It's much creamier on the inside. And it's definitely, like for instance, my daughter doesn't want to touch it. Because it's really? just, it's too wet, it's too creamy, it's too milky. You mentioned Jade, who's, who's nine, which is hard to believe. She's ten. Jade, ten. Is ten years old, double digits. You saw her when she was like an infant she was on a the counter. Peanut. I mean, how has she changed your life? I think that Jade makes me enjoy the little things in this life, and I think that all children do that. They see things, they get more excited about things, and you forget. You know, we realize as we get older, we get jaded by experiences. No pun intended. Yes, and I think that kids sort of get excited about things that you forget should excite you. Yeah, secret to your success, what, if, if, there, if you could boil it down. I think that the secret to my success is hard work, mm -hmm. good time, I mean timing, because I think you could be the most talented person in the world, but if the timing isn't right, it probably won't work out. I think that everybody was ready at the time that I came out to make food at home. 9-11 changed all our perspectives on our families, and I came up right after that. And I think after 9-11, people felt like, I want to stay home. Yeah. I want to invite people over. But in order to do that, I need to learn to cook. And so they looked wherever they could to find a way to make it easy for them to entertain at home and bring their loved ones in. And I think it's a combo of all those things. And also because I've streamlined my perspective. Mm -hmm. When you think of me, you think of... Italian. Yeah. yeah. But California Italian. Maybe yeah. a little bit lighter than, than traditional Italian-American yeah. food. Yeah. And I think that's the key. The key is to figure out what it is you like to do and really, like, streamline it. Have something that defines you. Yes, and streamline it. You, you've been so instrumental and so generous with your time mentoring other women in this business, especially in the hashtag Me Too era. What, what's the, your advice to, to women who are looking to enter this, this end of the business? A lot has happened, and I think that you, you gotta be strong, and you gotta stick to your guns, and you gotta know who you are, and lean on the people around you that you trust to help you get through any hardships. We're all gonna have them. You can't go through life thinking that you're never gonna encounter a hardship. Mm -hmm. Life is about the ups and the downs and you have to just learn to dodge them mm -hmm. and do the best you can and really rely on your friends and family to help you through it and to give you an advice and guidance. Let's top it off, we are top three things. Top three Food Network shows other than your own. Oh, what? Oh, other than anything I'm in, right? Okay, beat Bobby Flay. Okay. Barefoot Contessa. Yes. And Chopped. All right, there you go. Good. Now. Oh, finally. Finally. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, tell me if you like it. It's not going to be like a grilled cheese, but. But it's close. It could be good. Mm. Oh, that's crunchy. That's good. What do you have still left you want to accomplish? I'd like to open some restaurants in other parts of the world. Ooh. Outside the U.S. Want to come visit me? I will definitely come visit you. Yeah. There you go. Look for a Jada, a Jada restaurant coming to a country near you anytime soon. That's cold cuts. That's a take. That's a wrap. Mm. Take off the. What is the tie doing? That's on? I thought book. this was it, casual. It, this is sound. casual for me. This is casual because you loosen I'm the not tie wearing, a minute. Exactly. It's it's hip. It's hipster.
So if your go-to dinner night after night after night is pasta, we got some help for you. I think this is help just for me. We have Giada De La Rentas. Nobody cooks pasta like her. She's mm -hmm. been cooking up a storm thanks to her at-home blog, Jotsi. Hi, Giada. Hi, guys. How are you? Look how cute you are in your kitchen. Look at you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> how, how's quarantine life at that house? Um, it's been long. I'll say that. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but actually it hasn't been, it hasn't been bad. You know, I was, I was just saying to a friend the other day that I know more about what my daughter's doing day in and day out every single moment of the day than I ever did before. And I didn't even know it. And so <laughs> it's, um, homeschooling is interesting. I've sort of tried to perfect my TikTok dances because my daughter's had her 12th birthday during quarantine and that is all she wanted. And she wanted me to get better at it. So I've been doing that. And Obviously, lots of cooking. So lots what have been your meals. favorite meals? What have been your go-tos during this time? Chocolate chip banana bread, which I think everybody has been making a ton of banana bread. Yes. And um, the special pasta that happens to be Jade's favorite that has um, garlic, olive oil, peas, and prosciutto. So not we want, to get, we, we want to get to the recipe, but I wanted to ask, I know your family, you have fa some family members in Italy, and I was thinking, I'm wondering how they're doing. So my mom lives in Italy, in Rome, actually, in the center. Um, and it's been, it's been really interesting. It was really rough at the beginning. So we talked to her every day. We would eat meals together over Zoom. I would have oh. breakfast, she would have dinner, because oh. we're so many hours apart. And I think that talking to us regularly, I was, I was noticing, too, that I talked to my mom every single day in a way that I didn't before. I yes. would talk to her once a week. So I, I think it's really helped us con communicate and connect as human beings in a way that maybe we didn't even realize we weren't doing. Yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. I think even though we're far apart, we're still connected. And I think one way that we are trying to connect, or at least I am in this household, is by meals around the table. I think more people are sitting down and eating than before, probably. So will you make this, this delicious pasta for us? <laughs> I want to eat it. it. So prosciutto, can you see it? Yes. yes. I'll pull it up in a second. I want to throw my pasta, otherwise. You can do whatever pasta you want, obviously. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a, a fusillo, like a little, a large fusilli. But that's my um, pancetta. Can you see it? Yeah, so why do you cook that? Why do you cook that instead of just putting it in? Because, because I want it crispy. It's the topping, it's like the garnish. So I want yeah. it to be nice and crispy, just like crispy bacon, like bacon bits you would put on a salad. You don't want yeah. it to be slim. It's kind of no, not that right. tasty. Right? Definitely not that you said it that way. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you could do it in a pan or you could do it in the oven. Either way works. It just gets okay. all crispy and it's kind of like bacon. So you could use bacon here if you prefer. And then you just dump a bunch of um, olive oil and garlic. It's so funny mm. doing it this way. By the way, it's um, fascinating. What have, you guys, what have you guys been cooking? Nothing. I've been cooking actually a three pasta a three dish pasta recipe like based they put it on today.com and it's what basically it? a cacio wait cacio y pepe how'd that Brava! Sound? wow said it really nicely i what, did what, what did she say what was that cacio y pepe <laughs> oh wow so um cacio do you know what it is it cacio is pepper and and well pe pepe, pepe is, is pepper. pepper what's cacio <laughs> cheese chicken yes but do you know what oh. kind of cheese Cacio. <laughs> no. What is it? What is it? Um, Parm know, Parmesan. It's pecorino. Oh, pecorino. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we haven't had pecorino in our life. Okay, so you melt some butter. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you just brown the, um, the garlic a little bit, just till oh, it's okay. nice and fragrant. Then you add <laughs> peas, anybody? Peas, yes, peas. peas. Yes. Okay. Can you so use peas? Because peas? that's all we got. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, frozen beef. Just try to defrost them if you can, you know? Otherwise, mm -hmm. put a little bit more water in here, but not really that big a deal. And <laughs> a little bit of red pepper flakes. I don't put a lot because Jade is a big fan of red pepper flakes, but a little bit is really nice. It adds a little warmth. And you just kind of warm through the, the peas and the garlic together. Mm -hmm. And then you dump the pasta when it's ready. Let's see here. Jada, first of all, as you put that pasta in, I know it's delicious because you made it. You're going to be doing a show from your house 
which I have to say, watching you cook like this is fascinating to me. Yes. You're moving the camera around, doing your own thing. Like this is going to be, is it, where you, where's this show going to gonna live? Food Network. On the it's Food Network. Show, yeah. What's it I called? Can't shoot, I can't shoot from a studio, so I'm shooting from my house. By the awesome. way, with Jay doing so, the dishes, it should be funny. It's, it's mesmerizing watching yeah, is you that cook cheese like this. you just put in there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I pre-grated my Parmesan cheese. Okay, myself. you put it in. So basically, for let's see it. No, oh. this is Pagnigiano. Oh, is Pecorino. So just toss it together. That's it, and a little pasta water here. By the way, pasta water is important. Jada, yeah. for this recipe and all of Jada's recipes, go to today.com slash food. believe this Jeffrey that your two young girls are authors at ages 13 and 11 uh, yeah I just want to say the picture of the cookbook is probably like a year ago kind of so they're like growing every day like apples and yes the apple doesn't fall far from the tree it's incredible I'm, I'm blessed and I'm so proud of them well Madeline and Anna what are your favorite things about cooking with your dad um, I love family time, and I would just love cooking with you because it's so fun. I would just love cooking. Does he let I, you do things, yeah. or d does he kind of take over and say, honey, like this, do it like that? It, yeah, it's sort of like do it, if <laughs> I'm just in the kitchen, I can do it, but sometimes he has OCD in the kitchen. So. <laughs> Anna, what do you think about cooking with the big man? He, it's really fun. He teaches me a lot of, like, new tricks tricks and like tips with Aww. everything. Well, okay, so we want to hear, you guys are making an apple crumble. Do y'all ever go to the orchards yeah. and pick apples? Every yes, year. all the time. We love it. And there are so many apples out there. And today we are going to use uh, Cortland's to make an apple crumble. And it's very simple. This is a sort of a foolproof method. If you mess it up, the peeling or whatever it is, don't worry about it. So I'm just taking a Cortland apple. I'm going to show you how to peel it just top down like that. Very simple. Top down. And, okay. Um, and if you want to do this ahead of time, what I recommend is you take a bowl of water and put some lemon in it and just drop the apples yes. in that. What's that way the... it keeps it from browning. Very oh. easy tip. And I'm going to show you that it doesn't matter if I leave a little on, it's fine. Another tip I like to show is how to core. Now, a lot of people take that core and dig and all that. That's way too much work. I just put it right on top end and go down like three or four times. Yeah, just cut right. around it. Just like that. And voila. Boom. Okay, that's done. All then right. I'm going to cut it in some slices and give it over to my girls, and they're going to show you the rest. Okay. Okay. So What's this is next, like guys? A little moving factory we got going on here. Okay. Here like so you go. Here you go, Anna. Want to pass that down? Yes. Put the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's good. So I have some apples here, and I have buttered a baking pan. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to add some cinnamon, mm -hmm. some sugar, mm. of course. And you're just going to mix that up, yeah. try and not spill it everywhere. And Madeline, could you use brown sugar if you'd prefer it for the crumble? Yes, you could absolutely use brown sugar. Okay, good yeah. to know. <laughs> okay, and, and now then what do you do? Uh -huh. I am going to pour it in, and I'm going to fill about three fourths of the way. I, I'm going to, I, there's, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. So now we're going to start with our crumble. This is the topping of the apple crumble. So we have flour dried oats, brown sugar, cinnamon, mm. salt, and then this butter, you want to chill your butter before so you can um, cut it into small cubes. Yeah. So yeah. I've already added everything in, and then you can just mix it with your hands oh, with like your that. fingers, yes. just crumble that up. Uh, you have kids, this would be great for the kids. Yeah, it's going to be something good. we could do. We'll By the on. way, it does look foolproof. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty it surprised is. that this is, all we, this is all we need. Okay, now what do you do, guys? You want it to be so, sort of like a sandy consistency in these Butter things pebbles. of butter pebbles yeah. are really good. Yes, yeah, they are. So we're just going to add Oh, this looks so good. I cannot wait to eat this. Unlike <laughs> a pie, this takes a lot less Thank work. You. Now, Unlike Jeffrey, a pie. Jeffrey, though, the, let's just get, settle one thing. Wouldn't you say that a crumble and no, a pie... No, no, do not wait. Do not, do not tilt the scales. Jeffrey, 
is a crumble the same thing as a pie? I said, is a crumble related to a pie? <laughs> like brothers and sisters. You like know, I think it's its daughters. own. I think it. I think it has its own sort of strata because what this is is pretty much the same ingredients. You have flour and all that stuff. Thank you, you might have some more things. In, but this is much simpler. You don't have to roll it and toast it, and uh, you just pop it in the oven. Watch. They're going to hand this to me, and like in about four minutes, we've done it. Right? It's a pie that's takes it. More time. So Four 350 minutes. degrees, one hour, take it out, oh. let it cool a bit because it's got to stop bubbling and get all nice and perfectly set. Okay. Sort of like lasagna. Ooh. So look at that, see, how delicious see. that is. Gorgeous. So we're going to cut that and go in deep and try. Oh, girl. Because it is apple season and the big apple. Yeah. Oh, right now girls. tell me, do you Wait, add a little ice you gotta, cream? You got to add, add a little ice cream. Mode to that, Madeline, Anna? Yes. yes. It's so uh, good. You could always do add anything you'd like to do. Yeah. Yeah. Is it so morning, good? You could add ice cream. Oh, so yeah. cool. cool. Oh, it I wish like we could have some. Yeah, exactly. This is sad. <laughs> this is real sad, y'all. All right, well, you've inspired us. We'll be us. back soon. All right. Thank you, guys. Girls, y'all are great. We wish you a long... We can't wait till you can come to our studio and, cook and talk us. about yeah. your book and cook with us. And, Jeffrey, you can come, too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>fortunate I am to be joined by not one master chef but two oh, master yes. chefs oh, here heard. in the kitchen first it's celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian he's the host of the new Food Network show Big Restaurant Bed and of course Savannah who has her own cooking show <laughs> called Don't Eat That No you will get it. It. No don't eat that unless you, want, you have Pepto. I want you to support me on my cooking don't journey eat like that. like GZ oh, does yes, unless I, a bathroom is nearby Oh stop anyway, it Anyway Jeffrey we're so Hi. happy Thank you're you. here nice to be here Are Thanks. you happy to be in, among the so midst happy. of a chef I I love the show what you're doing and it's really incredible because it's really hard to teach someone like without like getting in there, like hold I know, your... but the only way to learn is to actually. That's right. Do, it. do you think you... she could do? Um, could we cook this? Absolutely. You ready? We're gonna yeah, do I'm a ready. spring mushroom okay. How do you... pea pasta. Okay. Careful. So slice, be careful with that. Like, first pointing a knife at me. Don't, well, don't just... gesticulate with okay. a knife. That's first thing. Okay. Slice. Okay, slice. Okay, I'm gonna put some shallots in here with garlic. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple pasta, and I'm making it real time. What do I have first? Pasta is down in the water and it's very salted. So okay. when you want to salt pasta, you want to, it, the water should taste what? like the ocean. Remember, very it's good. Okay. Like okay. Water Add should taste. Shallots. I'm going to move a little mushrooms? closer. The to mushrooms my name, are going in here. Okay. Can I okay. help you, okay. Jeffrey? We put those in here. So our mushrooms, shallot, garlic, very simple. Okay. Let them soften. You don't have to be crazy. Just leave it there. Medium How's my heat. slicing? Fantastic. Oh, oh, Savannah. <laughs> so you want to make sure that they're evenly sliced so they cook and they look like this. Look how oh, I, look, I would eat that alone. Okay, Maybe so we're going to add to this some white wine. Go. Mm. And a little I'm bit of with white wine. Mm -hmm. pasta water. Okay. Not all of it, just a little bit. And why a pasta water? Because pasta water has all the starch from the pasta. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It and helps. You know that silky? Yeah. That silky pasta you get at a restaurant, you don't know why is it so silky. Yeah. It's not like that. And that's why. So Can we're going to reduce it. it. Not quite yet because we don't want those to go brown. So these are peas. You could do frozen peas or fresh peas. Okay. If fresh, you could blanch them for a second. But honestly, take right out of the, right out of the freezer. freezer. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Just put them in. Okay, we have our pasta right here. Boiling salted water. Mm -hmm. 
This is the sauce, and people don't understand. So the pasta next to the sauce. And all we do is we take the tongs. We don't throw... Now, I, let me just guess, and, and I'm not a master chef, but this is al dente. Al dente, to the bite, to the bite. So it's about a minute away from being fully cooked, and we're going to put it in here and just finish it. Oh, how beautiful. In here, and that's how you fit every pasta that you have in a restaurant that you like. Is in the This is how it's done. Yes, it must. So it you're just going to give it a little toss. Yes. Can you do a little toss? Yeah, okay, some, you know how to do it. Oh, okay. Whoa, that's beautiful. Oops. Okay. Sorry, oh y'all. It's all right. Sorry. sorry. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm going to fix it. Watch this. See this? I'm not going to take it off the pasta. Just like this. One, two, three, four. I'm Maybe sorry. You need to then the comes the peas. <laughs> then comes... I didn't mean to make such a It's mess. okay. A little cheese. A little it. cheese. <laughs> and because it's a little dry... <laughs> and we're missing some? Yeah. We're going to add a little bit more Jeffrey. pasta water. Watch this. Just like this. See, All you right? even spill a little, and Just you're a minute. master chef. And then at the very end, a little. some chili. Mm -hmm. I love oh gosh, chili. Very so finely good. minced chili. And we're ready to go. We're going to add a little basil to it. All okay. right? And you're going to come over here and taste. Your oh. knife skills are excellent. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> we're going to chiffonade. That's what that's called. And oh. there you have it. We are done. A beautiful oh, spring pasta. Be careful. Spring okay, pasta. you try to flip it. Let's see you flip it's it. Hard. And I want to see you're some really, air. What you're doing is you're, not, you're really air. not flipping. You're really just folding. So you yeah, folding. just no, no. very small. Very okay. small. Okay, why are you giving her tips? Okay, go. Flip. There you go. Much better. <laughs> Excellent. Wow. Thank you. I've right. learned so much. I'm we actually going to say that was great. Come on, I'm going to make it rain some okay. Pecorino Romano. And this yeah, is would your... you like a bite? Mm. Yeah, I would. Here you go. Yum. Right. That looks delicious. What kind of pasta do you use? Uh, fettuccine, mm. uh, it's yeah. a flat pasta, tagliatelle. Okay. Bon appetit. Do you feel Thank like you, you have so to much. make your pasta or no? You don't. Okay. Uh, you can make it, but you really don't have to oh, make it. Okay. Okay. Well, don't eat it. You have to read this tag. For this recipe and more, go to day.com slash food. Mm. Back now, 8.50 with Today Food. And this morning, not one, but two easy weeknight recipes that you can make on a budget. We've got a classic ratatouille, and we also have a special technique for roasted chicken. Celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian here to show us how it's done. He, of course, is the, the host of the new Food Network show, Big Restaurant Bet. GZ, welcome back. Thank you so much. Nice to be back. Before we get into it, chef, we, we, I, you've got to weigh into this debate here. Uh-oh. Um, I don't know if you saw this tweet from Stephen King earlier. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, Stephen... The Stephen King? The Stephen <laughs> King. <laughs> he is taking Renounced salmon. Renowned chef. Horrifying, GZ. Get ready. He's taking salmon. He's yeah. wrapping it in a paper towel and, and microwaving it for three minutes. What say you to that? Absolutely. What? what? Yes. Why not? It's a because really gentle way of cooking. Because it's salmon. a 1982 device. <laughs> no, it really works. I cook fish in the microwave all the time because you don't have to put any butter. It doesn't. You don't have to use I'm sorry, a, is it yeah, I'm shocked. I know. No, it works. Well. It really and it works. Doesn't smell? No. Well, well, it might, but well, it's it might, fish. but it, it, it <laughs> is okay. fish. All right. Well, <laughs> chef is apparently too. Yeah, very good. All right. Wow. Vegetables too. That's Asparagus is great. Spinach is great in the microwave. Yeah, it's fish is where I All the nutrients yeah. stay. There's no water wow. loss. You dump it in water, all the nutrients go in the water. Right. There you go. Well, let's get into wow. a right. more, more traditional way of food preparation Okay. Here. So, spatchcock. spatchcock. We're going to make spatch. What does that mean? <laughs> it's a fancy name for a flattened chicken. Oh. And we're going to do it. So, we take a regular chicken. I'm using gloves, so it's more sanitary. I'm just going to go down the back. Yeah. And that's the, that's the back of the wow. chicken. And you can go either way. You can use a knife, but I've decided to use some oh, yeah. kitchen shears. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm going to do... Just like this. Oh, wow. Very easy. That's it. This is safe for the stock. Check okay. the stock. We don't throw anything away. All right. And uh, then you just put it like this. Oh, and you, oh wow. You, you hear that? Wow. Hey, I know. There, I know it's like hard. I know. Oh. I know it's hard. So, so what's the benefit of cooking chicken that way? <laughs> well, it so cooks speaking in. Speaking of a Stephen King horror. <laughs> <laughs> you worry about salmon oh, in the microwave. I'm, I'm cracking chicken over here. Jeez. Okay, salt and pepper. Oh, mercy. Uh, great question. Really, really easy because what happens is you get half the time. So a normal chicken like this would take about uh, 45 to an hour. It's about a three and a half pound bird. Yeah. You want to season with authority. You really have to. And it takes half the time. So oh, for this wow. to get up to 155, 160 eternal will be about 30 minutes, 35 oh, wow. minutes. Now, very important, hot cast iron pan. Skin side down, so okay? Now let's go over here. You can see what we're doing. We have this going. Beautiful, now we're gonna turn it oh, over. And you want to help me with this? Be careful. That's Watch right. out. We get a jumper. <laughs> okay. And put some. Put the lemon. I like to put the lemon skin, uh, flesh side right there. Just put it in whole. Yeah. And what okay. happens? It gets nice and caramelized. Mm -hmm. You have a beautiful caramelized lemon. Let's stuff. There's no rules. Okay. If you have thyme and rosemary, fine. Whatever if you, you don't, don't just throw anything it in that's a hard herb, like 
you know, savory or, or sage or bay leaves or stuff like this. I love this. And then you just cook it till 165 very gently, okay? What's the verdict over there? It's, it's so delicious. juicy. Incredible. It's so, oh, so good, right? So how is, how, what's the relationship between like quality chicken and technique in which you cook chicken? The relationship. Oh, that is good. Like, is this a fancy chicken that no one no. at home can get? So you want to cook the chicken to 155, 160. If you can do that and use a digital thermometer, it's pretty hard to mess up, mess up. a bird, okay? That's good it might cook a little longer, a little less, but you, you pretty much, so that pretty much, it's in the so oven juicy. Or yeah, you can go in the oven or sit oh. here, but I put it in the oven. Well, you let's ready? Get down to this ratatouille. Let's cut it down like this, and there we go. All right. There you have it. Okay, ratatouille. One of my favorite movies, one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> okay, so basically, this is great with vegetables that aren't at their prime. They're a little over. Oh. And that's, I got this from my mom and from when I worked in France. They don't throw away anything. And if you have a you couple of. You mean they're not in season or you they're mean in they're in season, but they might be a little or wilted or like, yeah, not yeah. stale, okay. right. but a little wilted, not their anyway. best. Starting. This is a great relation. This is a great vegetarian dish. So we're taking eggplant, pepper, zucchini, yep. onion. And what I like to do is heat them in a cast iron pan separately. Why separately? Because when you put them all together, it's mush. So what we oh. do is we season it. We don't season them. We just put them in there and then we sear them off. Separately, so, so you cook each vegetable, yeah. but oh, it, wow. in the same pan, okay. and then we sear the uh, the eggplant, the onion, the pepper, and here mm -hmm. we have all of them right now, all together, mm -hmm. already seared, and we're gonna just add our last ingredients, and sure. this is such a fantastic dish, oh, onions, add? onions, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. pepper, peppers, yeah, oh. as they say in my town, Boston, garlic, <laughs> garlic, <laughs> garlic, okay, stir that around. Thyme, bay leaf, tomatoes. Now, a lot of people would put stock or water in this. You so no, no. You're going to see it looks dry, yeah. but once you bake it, once you bake it, all the water in the vegetable, wow. which are mostly really vegetables good. are mostly water, comes out. And look what That's you have. So this gorgeous. How long do you bake it? A little this time. is about an hour. About an hour, hour, hour and 10 minutes. But you want it to look kind of like it's Beautiful. a little over. Mm -hmm. And I like to serve this room temperature to warm. And when you grate this, you can put some Parmesan That's cheese on it. Mm. Chill, let me let me make it rain for you. Oh, uh, rain! <laughs> I love Cheesy. it. I love it when they and rain. Maybe a little olive oil. Thank you, sir. A Chef, fantastic thank you. dish. Jeffrey, really delicious. Thank you for the, wow. this recipe and more. Yeah. It's today.com/slash/food. Oh. Stick around. Jeffrey's going to be back in the fourth yes. hour with a healthy and hearty pasta dish. Pasta. Thumbs up. Healthy. Uh -oh. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Oh, thank you. the saying chicken soup is good for the soul especially in the cold months and someone who loves chicken soup so much he makes it for his family all the time is celebrity chef Jeffrey Zakarian he's the co-host of the Food Network's The Kitchen right now he's in his kitchen he's at home in Florida hey Jeffrey 
Hi, I'm sorry I'm in Florida. It's 50 here, but I, I know it's really cold there. You know, that's know. Just we didn't cruel. know you lived in Florida, and now we're kind of angry at your jealous. tan. Look at your tan. No, I, I'm tan all the time. You know that. Anyways, <laughs> everybody loves a good chicken soup. And what I'm doing here is I'm going to do a mashup, right? I'm doing a chicken noodle ramen mashup. Mm. And the reason why I like it is you talk about healthy eating, New Year, really delicious, but also yummy. I mean, food has to be yummy. I don't know about you guys, but yes. if it's not yummy, I don't want it. But look at this. Look at all these gorgeous vegetables. Mm. That's right from the market. Beautiful. There's nothing fancy here. Carrots, parsnips, some onions, some leeks, some great herbs and ginger. And it's very simple. So let's start with our vegetables, okay? So we're going to make sure our vegetables are cut evenly. Why? Because they cook evenly. Really important. Oh, but all a soup the same size. Is that makes sense. All yes. the same size. A soup is so easy. Just follow these techniques, and you're going to be very, very happy. And the addition to making this soup is you get leftover stock that you can freeze. Okay, we're gonna take our celery, our carrots, we're gonna just cut them on the bias like this, very simply, and it's very easy once they're lined up together to make sure they're, they're the same, same size, really yeah. easy. So we've taken our leek and um, what you make sure you cut it open and you wash it because there is dirt in there mm -hmm. and just follow the same yeah. methodology. Just a nice, probably this is quarter inch, I'm just guessing quarter inch, but everything's gonna be ready at the same time. So it shouldn't take that long to cook a proper soup. The stock takes the most time. It's like cooking the chicken takes about like an hour. Now, parsnips. I love parsnips, guys, because they have a sweetness that is just uh -huh. yeah, remarkable. So, hey, hey, Jeffrey, crispy and Jeffrey, yummy. Why, why leeks instead of like another kind of onion? Here's a tip. Leeks have less salt than an onion, so your stock stays lighter. It doesn't darken. You know, sometimes it oh, yeah. turns really brown, and I use leeks. It's a little secret of a chef. Okay. All right. So, are you ready for the big ready. deal? Yes, let's, let's cook, cook a chicken. chicken. Yes, sir. Very easy. We have our veggies. We're going to go over by, by the, my beautiful wife is holding the camera. She's the camera person today. So, oh, we have good. a pot, a very big pot, and we're going to put it on high. And we're using a four-pound chicken just like this. Use a tong so you don't have to touch the chicken. And just put that right in there. All right? And then, another secret, guys, chicken wings. Oh, tons of gelatin and tons of meat. There's tons of meat on chicken wings. We're going to put those wait, in. Oh, wait, and then, okay, sorry. You we, had us until we, you said we, the word gelatin. For a second. What does that gelatin. mean? Gelatin. Gelatin is that stuff that umami you taste when you smell soup that your uh, mom's oh. cooking or your grandmother cooked. And the schmaltz is the chicken fat. So all that together okay. is loaded in those chicken wings. And then chicken word. stock. Now, you just cover this. Notice, no water, no salt, no pepper, nothing at all, just chicken stock. Mm. You could use water, but I like to get it up just a bit, just jab it a bit. And I put a touch of white wine vinegar or Ooh. wine. You don't have mm -hmm. to, just a little acid. Now, we're going to let that chicken go for about an hour. Once it comes out, we're going to put it on a rack, let it cool, and then we're going to take all the delicious yes, chicken off. peel it off. So, you take the bones out? Or you, yeah. I right. take the bones out, everything, okay. and then we have our beautiful stock. And remember those veggies we cut perfectly? Yes. I know you know how to do that now. Yeah. All right. We're just going to slide that slide in there. Right. And magic, a couple of peas. You take frozen peas. Oh. I think this is going to probably take 10 minutes. You have all the flavor there. The miso is really special. The miso is soybean paste. It gives a little saltiness. It's really, really delicious. Where's so the ramen? We the ramen. Ah, where's the ramen? It's coming. All right. So remember, we have our soup, our beautiful veg, our vegetables are in there. Mm -hmm. And like, can you get in there, Margaret, and take a look at that? How Pretty. gorgeous that looks. Margaret. Margaret. Oh. Yeah, good shot. Are no. you ready? Okay, yeah, we need the ready. ramen, though, because we came for the ramen. Yes. You came for the ramen. So we're going to take a big bowl. I like to serve this in giant bowls. I have our pre-cooked ramen. This is beautiful. Oh. Whole wheat ramen. I just oh, you put can that in buy the bottom. Whole, where do you buy whole wheat ramen? Anywhere? Ah, uh, there's tons of it. Tons of oh. it. You can use regular, but I like the whole wheat, right? Yeah, it's and better I'm gonna, for you. Now we're going to have some out. fun. Now we're doing the mashup part, right? Oh. We're going to pour this glorious, healthy, Ooh, gorgeous soup ramen. on top. that. Yum. Oh, ramen. That. Takes me back to my college yes. days. Yep. Right? And then some Sprinkle chicken. Now, I choose to put the mm. chicken on. Oh, the chicken Just like this. I don't put the chicken in the stock because I don't want it to get overcooked. And a lot of people store their chicken Neither in the we. stock. Yeah. And, yeah. and what happens, it gets overcooked. And now, the secret. Now we have fun. Now we have our scallions. It's uh -huh. going to be like we're making a fuss. it up. Yes. We're going to put some, some beautiful pea shoots, some scallions, some bamboo shoots. Have fun here. I'm using whatever I found at the, uh, at the farmer's market uh -huh. uh, or at the grocery market. Some radishes. radishes. Ooh. Oh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Jeffrey this is thank this, you. 
We Ginger, got a roll, the Jeffrey. It looks so yummy. It really does. You did great. Thank you, Jeffrey. Bon appetit. Thank, you, Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret. Tell your daughters, hey. All right. All right, guys. For this recipe, Bye. head to today.com slash food. <laughs>about what to make for lunch today, you're going to want to see what chef and author Jeffrey Sakarian's got. Uh-huh, and this dish is one and done. And even better, it'll make use of all those veggies that you bought that you didn't use that are just sitting in the refrigerator. Okay, hi, Jeffrey. Hi, good morning, how are you? Good morning. Okay, before we get to this delicious dish, yes. which I'm into, yes. our, our whole producing team, including our executive producer, Joanne, cannot stop staring at your Instagram and evidently it's going viral. Hey. <laughs> what are you I, doing which here? Pro, which Instagram? <laughs> this, right here. You working out, putting us to shame. Oh, okay. What? Yeah, what? you know, I, I try to do that every Wednesday. I work out every day, but I try to do that every Wednesday. I did it as a joke first. People said, why don't you just post that? It'd be fun. And I did it. Now it's, it's you know, look what happens, right? Stuff you don't plan on, like the pandemic happens and yes. life changes. And so that was life changing, just like the pandemic. I mean, oh my God! Honestly, most of us just gained the COVID nineteen. So the fact that you speak put, for yourself, twenty five <laughs> years. <laughs> the fact that you put those abs to work is is helpful because you're cooking up something really delicious today. You and we're are too so kind. Yeah. We're ready to eat. We sure are. Okay, what are <laughs> well, you cooking? Well, this is this couldn't be easier. This is a Manhattan corn chowder. So chowder is great, but you know it is summer. This is a hot or cold dish. It's fantastic. It's gluten-free, and you can make it dairy-free. If you have a little butter, you can take the butter out. Olive oil is very simple, so yummy and so delicious. I like to call it a one-pot wonder. Come over here. I'm going to show you. Oh, I like very that. simple. Uh, I am just in a pot, any kind of pot. You don't have to have a fancy pot. I put carrots, onions, leeks, celery, a little chili pepper, and garlic. Ooh, I'm yeah. sweating it. Now, this is the base for any soup in the world. Gumbo, chowder, chicken noodle, whatever you want. Then all I do to that, very simple is I'm going to add some tomato paste, some fresh thyme. Mm -hmm. You can use whatever herb you like. Some, uh, a little bit of canned tomato that's pureed. Ooh, yes. And then very simply stock. Now, I like to use vegetable stock. I, I find it very um, sort of neutral in flavor. Yeah. But you can use water. Yes, you can use water. And during the pandemic, I cook most things with water because I don't want to have to keep running out and getting stock. All right? So then you just add your potatoes. Wow. And 25 minutes until the potatoes are cooked. And then add the corn at the very end, about five minutes, because you want that bite on the corn. And summer corn is coming. You can feel it. You can see it. Yeah. It's not quite there, but I'm, you can use any corn. A great tip when you're using store-bought corn, make a soup, because it doesn't matter. The, it, the, is the it soup turns is the that, corn into magic. Is, 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 that that is that frozen? Is that frozen corn, or where did you get no, that corn? No, that's just corn I took out of a cob. I bought it oh. at the supermarket, oh completely peeled and shucked and wrapped. And it was, it's fine. So I'm going to let this cook for about 35, 40 minutes total. Jeffrey, I have a question for this. you. Look at this. I like my chowders oh, a little creamier. What would I add to it that would give me that, that like, you know, that white, yeah. creamy looking moment? <laughs> Absolutely. So this is a Manhattan chowder. We've substituted uh, cream with tomato. Mm. So you simply... Take out the tomato, put the cream in it, and boom, and you're, happier. you're at that's your, you're at your happy place. He's, he's yeah, from that's the my South, thing. so he wants a little cream, you know? 
No problem. I love cream too, but you know, this is summer's coming and you know, we'll, we want our abs to look, you know, kind of okay, right? <laughs> oh, for sure. And you know what I love about this? It seems like one of those recipes that you can freeze and save yes. for later. Yes. Absolutely. And plus, I serve this with my fried chickpea salad, some toasted garlic bread. Yeah. It's a meal. It's a soup meal. And people kind of forget about real hearty soups mm. can be still healthy. Gluten free, dairy free. If you want, just take the butter out and you have like everything in here. And with a salad, you have a perfect composed meal. And by the way, it's so easy to cook for company, easy to cook for kids, easy to cook for anybody. Anybody. Um, so, Jeffrey, is there anything in the kitchen that you cannot live without? Anything in the kitchen I can't yes, live without. Tell probably, us. Uh, probably. <laughs> that's a really that tough marble. question. Come on, anything. Uh, yeah, he, he probably, thinks your actual kitchen looks good. Yes. Well, at the kitchen is something that's really fundamental. You need fundamental good equipment. So I always tell people buy less, spend more, and you'll spend the same as you get all those other gadgets. So buy the mm. best, just don't buy a lot. So definitely like cast iron, anything at Le Creuset, anything Dutch oven ish works. I love to have very, very good pans, but I don't have a ton of stuff because where are you going to put it all? Yeah. So I always say, spend more, buy less, and you'll spend the same. I all think right. that's such a good idea because also yep. there's half the stuff stays in the back of the cabinet and you never even use it. <laughs> it's so right? true. Absolutely. It's so Absolutely. true. All Absolutely. Right. Well, Jeffrey, happy summer. Sending you so much love. Can't wait to try that, Jeffrey. Okay, to get this thank recipe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jeffrey. Tell your girls hi. Cheers. To get this recipe, head to today.com slash food. Okay, no matter what time it is, it's always a good time for barbecue. So we called in one of our favorite barbecue experts, executive chef and owner of Pig Beach, Matt Abdu. We love our Matt Abdu. He's showing us a delicious brisket beef stew that's perfect to whip up this weekend. Check it out. Hey guys, that's right. Barbecue season is all season long, but there's nothing quite like a hearty, warm beef stew to warm you up on one of these cold winter nights. So in front of you today, we're taking beef stew and kicking it up to the next level by using my favorite cut of barbecue meat, the king of meats, the brisket. Now, what I love about this is that I find that the brisket is one of the most perfect meats to stew as well as slow, low cook with some smoke for barbecue. But there's two things I want to make certain everybody out there knows about the brisket. Within this big cut of meat I have in front of me here, there's two pieces primarily. There's what's called the flat and what's called the point. The point is that part that you all know and love is the moist or the fatty part of the brisket. And that's the part of the brisket we want to make the stew with because it's going to make those beautiful, moist, delicious beef cubes. So we're going to cut away the flat. And then you can see within this big piece of that point, there's all this beautiful marbling in the fat. We're simply just going to take this, cut it into about one inch cubes or so, one and a half to one inch cubes or so. And you can leave all that fat in there. It's all going to render out beautifully well. And then we're going to take this, season it up with some salt and pepper and toss it in flour. The next step in our big Dutch oven pot, you want to use around a seven quart Dutch oven pot or larger, bring it up to about medium high heat with a half a cup of vegetable oil. We're going to take those brisket point cubes, that nice, fatty, moist, beautiful, delicious brisket cubes, toss them in salt, flour, and pepper, and brown them off until they're nice and evenly golden brown on all sides like you see here. In this pan, after the meat's been all browned, all these delicious brown bits and goodness, that's what's called the fond. That's incredible flavor. To that, we're going to add in about four to five cloves of smashed garlic and get that until it's nice, aromatic, and lightly golden brown. And then this is the secret, guys. We're going to take some tomato paste, and we're going to fry it up in that oil until it becomes nice and sweet. This is going to help develop so much beautiful sweetness and flavor in the stew. A little bit of tomato paste really does go a long way. We're going to cook that for about two minutes or so, and then it's time to deglaze the pan, meaning we're going to choose some liquid to get all those little brown bits up off the bottom. And we're going to take a little sherry vinegar, add it all in there, and then one and a half cups of red wine. Any kind of wine you like to drink is best to cook with. Obviously, you don't want to use something that's crazy expensive, but use what you can afford and what you have at your house. We're going to take this and reduce this down for about 10 minutes or so until it gets nice and thick. At that point, guys, all of these beef chunks that we've just browned up are going to go back into the stew once this is reduced down. And we're going to cover it with four cups of beef broth, store-bought or homemade, whatever you have, and two cups of vegetable broth. Now, here's another secret, guys, something that I love that just really amps up all the flavor in this stew is I'm going to take one of those packets of that French onion soup mix, and we're going to add it in right to there. Put the lid on it, bring it up to a simmer, let it cook for about an hour and a half. Then after an hour and a half of cooking, you're gonna take the lid off. We're gonna add in the rest of our vegetables. We have some large diced carrots, large diced celery, and some pearl onions. I love the pearl onions because they get such a beautiful visual within that stew of like a nice pop of, of color as well as a, a nice bite to it. 
And then after that, guys, we're going to let it finish cooking for another 45 minutes or so until you have, check this out, the most beautiful, gorgeous, hearty beef stew you've ever had in your life being made with brisket. The flavor is going to knock your socks off. Absolutely incredible. Something so good. Serve it up alongside with some of your favorite mashed potatoes or buttered egg noodles. And guys, I'm telling you right now, you're in Happyville with this brisket red wine braised beef stew, the perfect dish to warm you up during these cold winter months. I promise you it's definitely worth one making at home. Back to you guys in the studio. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe and lots of love to you all. Today food, we are back and did you guys know that oh Italian beef, the sandwich, it's, it's booming in shops all across the country, all thanks to the show, uh, the series um, on FX called The Bear. It's about a young superstar chef who leaves the world of fine dining to take over his family's sandwich shop in Chicago. Now the house specialty of the shop is Italian beef and people on the show and in real life are dying to get their hands on this sandwich. So we asked our buddy Matt Abdu who literally Uncle and Al and I, Uncle Al and I talk about Pig Beach once a Love week around here. Are we going this weekend? Should we go Love see Matt this weekend? Yes. We're always talking about you. Yes, you should. Executive chef of Pig Beach. By the way, new locations in New York and West Palm Beach. Bear uh, is a show that you like to watch too. Oh God, it was so good. It was so true to form on so many ways that when that show came out, I was just like, oh my God. It's I crushed the whole season in two, two nights. Jeremy, uh, the main actor, just did such an incredible job. It was so cool to Watch. What is the history of the Italian beef? Like, it came into my life much later through, we would order it from Portillo's, which yeah. is another place in Chicago. Well, that's one of the most iconic places that did it and, and had its huge claim to fame. But essentially, it's like a hot roast beef sandwich that's dipped in this beautiful beef broth and finished on this right. nice crusty mm. bread from, like, this famous bakery in Chicago. And it's just all those great things. you got that beautiful beefy meat. you got these pickled vegetables on top, a little bit of heat. Let's get into it. How peppers. do you make this at home? Let's do it. So, so this is our version. This is what we've been running at our Pig Beach Queens location for our happy hour menu. This, this show inspired us to start doing this dish at our restaurant. Mm -hmm. So we're super excited for people to come in and try it. Ours starts with this beautiful wet rub. Now, traditional is probably more of like Italian seasonings and whatnot, but in this bowl here, we got some plain old yellow mustard and some honey. Mm -hmm. And what we add to it is some fresh chopped garlic, garlic some black pepper, pepper, some oregano, brown sugar, and chili flakes. Chili flakes, sorry, just give it some heat. And in rosemary, there. sorry. We're going to just mix all that together to make what we call a wet rub, which is in this bowl right here. And oh, this, this wet is rub that, is beautiful. Okay. It's perfect for steaks. What is this? Um, that's that beef paste that also has to go in here. That's that. So it's a beef base, like kind of like uh, better than bouillon or beef paste. It is okay. beefy broth flavor. Add water to it, but if you do this, so makes then a great it marinade. Turns out here, yeah. That's right. So we're gonna take this paste. Is this something you're doing like the night before? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna do before? all of this the night okay. before. You're gonna let it actually marinate with this on it. You're gonna smear all of this wet rub all over the meat. It's top round or, or top sirloin or eye round works great. And we're going to take this, we're going to roast in the oven really, really hot at like 450 What is the beef? I go minutes. to the butcher and I say, I'm, I want to make you these sandwiches. Like what, what am I asking round. for? Top round or eye round or, or top sirloin. A roast sirloin. of top roast. round? Yes, okay. exactly. Because you're basically making roast beef. You're making homemade roast beef. Oh my gosh. How is it, guys? I know you're eating a sandwich. Just jump so right here. Yeah, I love it. You guys are the best. So good. So once the meat comes out of the oven, nice and roasty, we're going to make our broth. And what we're basically doing is fortifying a beef broth. Now you can go through the effort of roasting bones and making it from scratch. Or you can just go buy some of that pre-made beef broth that comes in the carton, yep. sweat out some garlic and onions. We're, We're going to add our roasted beef What did roast. you cook this for? I'm sorry I missed that part. Was so how this long is was it gonna, cooked? Uh, the onions and... Well, the, no, on the, on the meat. This is going to get roasted in the oven at hot heat for about 20 minutes to sear it. Okay. And then while that's searing, we're making our broth oh, so that the, so the beef is going to cook finish cooking into got that. It. So to that garlic and onions, we're sweating out, we're adding more of that beef paste. is going to fortify that broth. Some Italian seasonings. This is the trick. You're going to get all that Italian seasonings flavor. It's, it's parsley, it's rosemary, it's thyme, it's chili flake, it's garlic. And then we're going to put it to broth in so it covers up halfway. And you're going to put it back in the oven and let this cook for about another hour or so mm -hmm. until the internal temperature gets to around 130, which is like medium to medium rare -esque. Right. So you're kind of like braising it. Yeah, it's like half roast, half braised. Yeah. This is a slow cooking that's going to keep that meat nice and juicy. So when you cool it down, the next day Savannah's after it's finished going cooking, it. No, I, I, I love it. Completely. completely. No, I know, guys. Not, guys not an attractive shot. When you cut it, Matt, is this like a, a grain situation? Um, against, yes. You want always, always, whenever you're cutting any kind of meat, you want to cut it against the grain for tenderness. But what you basically want to do is get thin. this as thin as you possibly can. Most people do this on a deli slicer in restaurants, so you can get it super, super thin. You don't need perfect slices. You just no. need it thin. You so do this, if you Al. Matt, ever, uh, you do you make this, Al, at home? No, but I'm going. I mean, so. Right. If you ever want to make it at home and you want to kind of cheat, like don't tell anybody, but you can buy like deli roast beef and basically make this broth. And then oh, when the time comes, is this the broth? You're gonna from take, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. this is the same broth from the meat was That's roasted. In. We're gonna take it out, strain it. We're gonna add our meat back into that broth and get it nice and cooked and hot. Come on. And then on, in this Carson. pot over here, we have some of the meat. Dip it in. And the biggest Dip thing, guys, with the really. Italian beef sandwiches, you got to get all that broth in there. Mm. And now at the restaurants, they either serve it wet, dipped, or dry. And oh, they yeah. usually they really take oh, the whole wow. bed, oh, yeah. they put it into that broth, yeah. get it nice and wet, and then they top it with some sweet peppers. Even the and peppers some, are yummy. And some well, jar. You, need, you need a roll that can handle that. Yep. Getting, what do you so suggest? There's a, there's a famous bakery in Chicago. I believe it's called Toronto Bakery, and it's kind of like an in-between French bread, Italian bread. It's nice and crusty.
crusty and hearty that can hold up to the juiciness yeah. of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah. literally, when you're eating the sandwich in Chicago, it, it's like falling apart because it's so wet from all that yeah. broth. Right. Mm -hmm. Roll it up nice and tight, and people like eat it with a knife and fork because oh, it's going to fall apart. But it's whatever so you good. want, however you so enjoy eating it, broth inside, dip it. But those pickled vegetables, right? They add a the nice like brightness that. to that hearty mm -hmm. meat flavor mm -hmm. of that sandwich and the sweetness from the sweet peppers mm -hmm. and everything that's in there. It's just so like yummy. the perfect How's sandwich. your happy hour version of this going? Uh, amazing. People. We can't wait for more people to come and check it out oh, and, yeah. and have yeah. it from 4 to 7 every day. We're doing a happy hour with this sandwich being one of the featured items on it. So we look forward and to And you recommend the show, The Berry. Oh, it was so good. Jeremy Allen White, the main actor, did such a great job. There's so many, like a fine dining chef, you know, my diet days at Del Posto, leaving that to do a barbecue restaurant. There's so many, like, true form correlations between that show and my life. Huge friend of the show. He's also the owner of Pig Beach Restaurant in Brooklyn and Queens, New York, and author of the new Pig Beach Yay! Barbecue. Out today. That comes out out today. today. Yeah, my so friend, cool. good to see you. Great to see you. Thank right. you for having me. So you're doing the backyard we're, staple, we're a barbecue, our, that's right, a burger. Pig Beach Barbecue Burger. Okay. And it starts with and the it sauce. And it starts with the sauce. So the first thing we need is a little bit of mayonnaise. Al, you want to help me out sure, here? Sure, you bet. All right, Airbowl, we have a little mayonnaise. Okay. Pig Beach barbecue mustard sauce, which Ooh, is what gives us that sort of like unique okay. flavor to it all. Okay. Some ketchup, chopped pickles, and a little bit of our all-purpose barbecue seasoning. So these chopped pickles are also the pickles that we're going to be putting on the burger that we've done ourselves. So delicious. Yes, yeah, so we make them. They're amazing. They're light, crisp, bright, vibrant, mm -hmm. just amazing. Okay. What was now, the last burger. thing you just put in there? A little bit of all-purpose barbecue seasoning. We okay. put it on our ribs. We put it on our pork shoulders. We put it basically on oh, everything. It. It's yeah. going to be on that corn that's going to be down at the end of the table awesome. pretty soon. Okay. All right. So now we got a burger sauce made. You can put that in a non reactive container. Put it in your fridge. It'll hold for about two weeks, no problem. Oh. Pull it out whenever you want to dip a burger, hot dog, anything you want into it. It's delicious. Okay. Now, that's the secret sauce. That's, that's the secret sauce. Right. That's that's the secret sauce. sauce. Okay. sauce. Not so All secret. Right. All right, so next, we got to cook up our burgers. Mm -hmm. I love using a blend that's like brisket and short rib, chuck, but whatever you can find, yep. cook it up. It's delicious. Then we're going to season it with a little bit of my pepper. It's a little bit of salt, pepper, and a little accent. That accent helps give like a nice umami oh. flavor to that burger. Basically like an MSG. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which gets a bad rap. It gets a bad rap. I mean, it's a little bit is delicious yeah. and goes a long way. And won't and do you any harm to you. Salt your burgers. You right? do season everything. You okay. always got to season them first because that's going to get all that flavor out of the meat. Mm -hmm. We're going to go out of our grill, nice and hot heat. Mm -hmm. Get it cooking. Um, I like to cook my burgers, still, you know, about a medium, but whatever you want to cook them to, they're going to take probably around five to eight minutes, depending upon the thickness of the patty that you're using. Okay. Okay. When they get finally cooked, you're going to last couple of minutes. You're going to put a piece of cheese on it and melt them down. What kind Most of cheese people, do you like? I love. I'm an American cheese guy on my burger. It melts yeah. perfectly. It's the best cheese out there for a burger, in my humble opinion. A big okay. mistake people make pressing down the burger. Don't ever press. Don't ever press down the burger because you're going to squeeze out all those natural it's juices. So tempting because you want to feel like you're doing something. I know, but don't because it also flares up the grill and you're going to get really bad smoke flavor on okay. the meat. We love smoke, just not that kind of smoke okay. flavor. Okay. And then final? Next, let it rest on the tray. Let those juices just kind of naturally come out so they don't soak out your bun. Oh. And then we're going to put our burger together, a little bit of that secret sauce on the bottom bun. Mm. And or these pickles are... Yo. Are you eating yeah. them already? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to put some of our cured, quick pickles on top of the burger. Like the potato bun, right? I love the potato bun. For I me, do. that's the perfect soft, sweet, squishy Everything you've burger bun out there. Everything is my favorite burger. That's all we want it to be. Top it off and dive on in and enjoy it. Your corn. Mexican corn. Mexican street corn. Well, while we're getting the Mexican street corn, a huge 
shout out to my co-author and friend, Super Chef Shane McBride. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, you know, he's the best. So it's, he co-wrote this book with me, and I couldn't okay. have done it without him. And also the famous Katie Stilo. Katie! Hey! Somewhere in the back over there. Katie. Her and Anthony Contrino had great. Uh, they helped us style the food for the pictures of the book. So a huge shout out to them. Ken Goodman, Judy Choth, all the people that helped us write this book. So Mexican street corn. Mm. In this bowl over here, while well, you guys are manjin, I'm going to put some sour cream to some mayonnaise. Mm. This is so good. This Thank burger you. is it's everything simple, I love everything about a burger. A little bit of chopped cilantro, oh some God. chopped garlic, and then we're going to add some lime juice. This is the simplest thing in the world, but this sauce on corn, I promise you, is like the most delicious thing in the world. And it's my favorite way of eating corn in the summertime. Grill it off, get a nice char, good okay, flavor. And then after it comes off the grill, we're just going to take right. it. That's okay. We're going to take it, brush it with some of this delicious uh, sauce we made with that mayonnaise and that sour cream. <laughs> Finish it off. So Why are you making noise? You're cooking, cooking, cooking right on the grill. You don't right cook it. So is it that good? Wait, Frank is making grill. noises. I'm like, okay, let me try it. What's, what's, what is like, in that? Like, what noise just so came out of your body? sauce oh, we just wow. made with the sour cream, the mayonnaise, Wait, the garlic, and then there's the cilantro, cheese on, right? and some lime juice. Mm -hmm. And then there's some cotija cheese that we'll top it off with. Oh my God. And then finish it again with a little bit of all purpose barbecue seasoning on top. And there you have some great, it's my favorite way of eating corn. Cook it the whole way on the grill. Take those husks, pull them back like that. It makes a beautiful display for a friend's family and loved one. Abdu, ladies and this gentlemen, you are the I man. You guys. That's Thank proprietary. You. Oh, Happy that's you. proprietary, isn't it? You know the recipes in the cookbook. Go get really? your cookbook anywhere. Can you hear that? Can you hear that, gentlemen? Can you guys hear that? That's, that's the sound of a game of brewing right here on NBC tonight's season opener. Buffalo Bills taking on the reigning Super Bowl champs, the LA Rams. So we've got Chef Matt Abdu here. He hails from upstate New York, so he's going to rep Buffalo. Also, of course, Matt's the executive chef and owner of Pig Beach, locations here in New York City and West Palm Beach. And we've got Darrell Smith. Darrell resides in Los Angeles, home of the Rams, also a former NFL player himself. He is the host of the mad, the mad Good Food on Taste Made. Mad Good Food on Taste Made. Gentlemen, great to have both of you with us. Thank, Thank you so much. Great to be here. I was just in Buffalo a few weeks ago, so I know Bills fans are stoked. They think this is their year. It's game time. It's game time, indeed. What are we yeah, making here, Chicken Matt? Riggies, Greg. Chicken Riggies, one of the most quintessential, iconic dishes from upstate New York. Riggies being short for rigatoni. Ah. And it's this delicious, spicy chicken pasta dish that we're going to get right to it. So, is this beer also from Buffalo? I, I don't know where that beer is from, but it looks delicious, <laughs> cold, and refreshing. Oh. So in our little calendar here, a nice little fun trick. We have some chicken thighs. We're switching up from the traditional chicken breasts. Some chicken thighs. We're dredging it with some flour, hitting it with a little bit of salt and pepper. And this cool little trick, you can shake it out with a colander uh -huh. to get all that extra flour off of it without it being oh, nice and clean. Okay. And then we're going to brown off our chicken thighs. 
That oil's nice and hot. Once they're all brown, we're gonna take the chicken out. Okay. In that same pot, we have some onions and garlic that have been sweated down with a little bit of olive oil. The next step, we're gonna deglaze with a little bit of white wine. All right. Any white wine will do, but I love a good Chardonnay for this dish. Then we're gonna add some tomato sauce, some mushrooms, some shrooms, diced tomatoes, okay. roasted red peppers, and we're gonna let all this stuff cook down for about 15, 20 minutes or so until you get to this delicious concoction right so here. That's, that turns into this. That turns into this. Then we're gonna finish it. We're gonna put our chicken back in. Okay. We're gonna hit it with some heavy cream to make that beautiful sort of pink sauce out of this dish. Some chopped cherry peppers. This is where that vinegar uh, heat comes into play and really just kind of wakes this entire dish up. Makes it super delicious. Can't have up this possible without a little bit of butter. And that's just all gonna simmer oh, down. Good, we're gonna finish it with this cooked oh. rigatoni pasta. Just cook it as normal as the box would say and you're ready to go. Chicken Riggies, my upstate New York family. There it is! Chicken Riggies! Chicken Riggies! Got a prediction for the I think they're gonna do great. I'm very excited to see what they do. All right, all right, so there's a the Chicken Riggie from Buffalo. What do we have from L.A.? Good luck to you. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> I, I'm representing L.A., but I am from Philly. I just had to say that yes. beforehand. So I was, was going to ask you about that. This okay. is a nice ensemble, right? Yeah. So we are, we're going to represent both sides. So we have a Filipino Mexicali lumpia. Because L.A. doesn't really have a food, okay. and so I'm taking Philly with me and mixing it with lumpia, which is all over L.A. I like what you if did. If you don't know what lumpia is, it is basically a Filipino egg roll, right? And okay. so we got some steak here that we've basically sliced. And so to do what this... What kind of steak are you using? Does so it this, matter? we got a ribeye, right? Okay. And you want to you want to freeze this a little bit so it's easier to slice. So watch this. Watch how easy this is. When you freeze it, you can get it super thin. So that's it, a pro tip you just dropped there. Freeze the steak first, oh, easier to slice. Easy, right? Okay. And then if you want, you can go to the store and sometimes you can get these from like an Asian market and it's already sliced for you. So we're gonna move over here and we've got our steak that we've thinly sliced. We're gonna add a little bit of my seasoning mix with some some seasoning. We got some chili powder, we got some What kind of seasoning? Is that a proprietary or? Mm, in Philly, we, we like to use a little bit of seasoning. That's why our cheese steaks taste so good. Okay. And so this is the proprietary mix. We got some chili powder, we got some paprika, we got some brown sugar, cinnamon, all of that You're not, telling me, that you're not stuff. telling me everything that's not in there. Not all the right. stuff, because of then I would have to, uh, have yeah, to yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So we got this, we got a little bit of onion, we got some green pepper. And for this step, you really want to activate those glutes in that lower back. Okay. So you want to get both sides. Oh, in the cast iron stop. skillet. Right? Okay, Easy. I didn't see that coming. There we go. And we just mix these together, right? Boom. Add our cheese to this. In the, all in the pan. All in the pan. Okay. Why not? And all we want to do is make sure this is just mixed all together. Okay. Next, we move on to this step, and this turns into this. It's, it's already frozen a little okay, bit or peeled it. off. All right. Because we want to put these into our rolls. All right. And I'll have you help me. So all right. we're just what do we have to just leg wash? Of, uh, don't do that yet. Don't we're do going to put okay. this right at the bottom, layered across. Right. right? And you ain't got to put too much. Like, Mm. Let me see you. There we go. That's good enough, okay. right? And now we Thanks just take help, this. I got you. I appreciate it. No this. I and T, Matt. <laughs> and now once you do this, we're gonna roll this piece over. Okay. And fold it into itself. So just like this, you're gonna roll it like a rug. Roll it like a rug. Bring it back, man. and then we come all the way up. Oh. And now we take that egg wash. This is elaborate. Right across the top. Right across the top. So roll it. And make it more. nice and sticky icky. It's sticky icky. Sticky icky. Sticky icky. Just like that. And so once we got this, we'll take these. You could cut these in half if you like. And we just drop these bad boys right into our oil. So you cut we them in half it. first. Yeah. Okay. And if you want, you could freeze them. You can take them out. You can cook them right out of the freezer. Okay. These we frozen a little bit just because we want them to be nice and stiff and to keep that shape. And in the end, once they're nice and crispy. Yeah. Voila. Voila. What, what kind so of oil? S. Jones, come over here. What? Take that. What's the verdict here? Because you're a Philly girl. I'm like watching with both of these things. They're like cheesesteak spring rolls. Yeah, exactly. They are so good. Exactly. And you can yeah. make, it's easy to make it home. Really Isn't that yeah. delightful? You gotta and you know, Matt, certainly plan I'm literally to. walking around with both bowls. So Matt, I'm thank you.
barbecue master and owner of Pig Beach Restaurants, both in Brooklyn and Queens, Matt Abadou. And if you want today's recipe, if you want to do this, we made it very easy. You can scan the QR code to order the ingredients in just one click. Then you select add ingredients to the cart, then schedule a pickup or delivery. It's very easy. So play along at home if you want to eat. Matt, it's good to see you, bud. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Let's talk about the cookbook. Because finally, yes, the book is, the uh, book is here. Yes, the book is here. barbecue cookbook. That's right. Exciting. Uh, I, when I think of barbecue, I really do think of Uncle Al. Uh, because we, well, we no exchange better, right? barbecue That's right. ideas and tips all the time. Didn't you write a blurb in Matt's book? I did. He sure did. I did. What do you love I about the cookbook? Uh, it's, it's simple. You know, everything is is really accessible. Mm -hmm. You can imagine making this stuff. Exactly, and that's what we really wanted to do. We wanted to make a book that everybody could enjoy, that everybody could cook from the barbecue, like hobbyist to the professional barbecue guy learning to make some extra right. flavors, some, something fun and different. What advice do you have for people who, who want it, like newbies in the barbecue world? What's, uh, what's your I think advice? the best advice I can give any, any newbie in the barbecue world is to get yourself a digital instant read thermometer. It's probably one of the best ways you can tell when anything is cooked, ready to be wrapped, or ready to be finished. So with that tool, you can really have a lot of success in the barbecue game. Perfect. I teased this segment by saying you were going to find some meats that are a little less expensive to use. Yep. What do we got today? So today we got a little tri-tip action for you. It's a cut of sirloin from the bottom part of the sirloin. And what I love about tri-tip is it's got so much incredible flavor to it. And it's got a mm. texture of that something similar to like a flank steak or so once you slice it nice and thin. All right. And grill up. It also takes on great flavor. So what do you start our, with here? Our tri-tip recipe is super simple. We're starting off with a piece of tri-tip that you can see here called tri-tip because it looks like a triangle. It's got mm -hmm. like a triangular sort of shape to it. But for our, our rub, we're gonna do something super simple. Some ground black pepper, some paprika, granulated garlic, and a little bit of dried rosemary. Now we're gonna mix this all together, and this can go in your pantry into a like, food safe container. Save it up there for probably up to six months in your pantry and use it when needed. This can you use that same season. rub on other cuts of Absolutely. meat? Absolutely, you can use it on any kind of steak, chicken, poultry, uh, pork, it's delicious. It's just a really simple all-purpose all rub. So then we're gonna take our tri-tip, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of olive oil, whatever you have in your pantry, and then we're gonna generously season it with this tri-tip rub, or really all-purpose kind of rub seasoning. On both sides, right? Yeah. On both sides. That's right. Oh, both sides. See, look, I love Savannah it. Knows Savannah knows now. She's, She's, got, a She's got a cooking oh, chef. That's yeah. right. All right. You so gonna eat both sides? So from season here, if you have a smoker, this is the point where we're gonna fire up our smoker to 250 degrees. I like to use cherry wood, but whatever kind of wood and whatever that sort of smoke flavor you like, by all means, have some fun with it. And do you have to smoke it? Can you you don't. That's the great thing about this steak, is you don't have to smoke it at all if you don't want mm -hmm. to. It just adds that element of like that barbecue smoky flair and flavor to it, which really kind of makes that steak different and shine a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But you could also just take it and cook it completely on the grill if you want. And you would do that at 252? There's a slow... Uh, no, on the grill. So whenever we set up a grill, I love to do what's called uh, zone cooking, where I'll have one side set to really hot, mm -hmm. hot heat for charring and marking, and then another side set to sort of medium. To cook so that, that center. To, exactly, to get that nice and low center cook so you get a perfect eye. What do you want so, to do it inside, Matt? If you wanted to do it inside, you could absolutely take it and just roast it off in your oven. No problem. Like, that's the great thing about cooking is that everyone has a version of a recipe of what they can do, but the great thing is is that as long as you're cooking it in that digital instant read thermometer you have, well, you're thing. cooking it yeah. to the right temperature, you're going to have a delicious cut of meat mm -hmm. per, cooked what's perfectly this, every What's time. this medium rare? What do you pull this at? So for medium, rare, uh, no, for medium rare, I'll pull it around 135 and no let way, it sort it's of rest. Exactly, to 140. it's going to carry you over. That's cut. why that, no, all right, we got about a minute so, and a half. All right, so we're going to go quick. So in here we have our steak. It's been smoked to about 100 degrees. We're going to let it rest. Then we're going to mark it off on that grill, get those beautiful char marks that are happening. And then for me, the perfect condiment to the oh summertime meat is, is a chimichurri sauce. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. Yeah. Love it's 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 a hodgepodge. Oh, and skirt a lot. Oh, yeah, it's the best. So we're just going to take some parsley and chop it up. We're going to add it to our mixing bowl. We have yeah. some mint, some more parsley. I add cilantro with that, too, sometimes. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Cilantro is great to it as well. We can add some uh, shallots, garlic, chili flake, oregano. Put that all in the bowl. Red wine vinegar, lemon juice, olive oil. We'll mix that all together. Zest it with a little bit of lemon, and, and you have so a perfect, good, fresh perfect. Oh my God, it's the best thing ever. And, and then, then we're the just slicing. gonna take the steak. And what I love about tri-tip is that mm -hmm. the back side, right for those of people that would like the steak a little bit more cooked, just, go just go by the nature of the steak. That's my boy right there. That's a happy plate. Love it. That is a happy plate. What's going on here at home? That's fantastic. You're not eating? So the great thing, the great thing about tri-tip is that since it's tapered off at the end, for the guests that are joining us and want their steak cooked a little bit more, they can have those sort of medium well pieces and the people that want something a little bit more oh, on the medium rare side you go right to the middle and you get those beautiful pieces cut right there mm. top mm -hmm. it off with that bright fresh vibrant chicken sauce it's amazing it's you can put chicken too it tastes fatty yep it's got a great but it, but it's, clean yeah, it's, meaty flavor to it that chimichurri just get it Craig. i love I'm it i love so it much. welcome to today all day all day today all day all day
This is a long oh, way of man. asking yeah, who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played. The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yes. will, and okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. It is one of the longest-running food shows on the Food Network. Folks love watching. The up-and-coming chefs beat Bobby Flay, or at least they tried to. He's invited some fellow celebrity chefs to give it a go on his new show, Beat Bobby Flay Holiday Throwdown. And today, Bobby's going to throw down in our kitchen with some chicken parm. Everybody loves yeah. chicken parm. Yeah. Bobby, good to see you, man. Thank How you are so you? much. It's so good to be here. Um, it's holiday season. It is. Yeah. Do you, do you cook a big turkey for Thanksgiving? I do. Way? I do. Uh, I, Thanksgiving is my... Um, it's my favorite day of the yeah. year. Actually, I'm going to be here next week. Um, oh, good. Oh, in the yeah, next, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's going to be a lot of food in this place. Okay, good. Man, I'll, I'll be back crazy. then. I'll okay. be back. So we're going to make chicken parm. This is okay. a dish, obviously, I, I call this chicken parmigiano as opposed to chicken parmesan. It's a little bit cleaner version of, of the classic. And I just put this on my menu uh, in, in Amalfi in okay. Las Vegas. Uh -huh. Okay, so a couple of things. You look like you're not going to cook. You got your hands oh, in your cooking, pocket. Dude. You want to do this? Oh, okay. It's okay. chicken parm. So chicken cutlets. Okay. This is yep. this is classic. So, um, flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, so, and so you set up a dredging station. You season every single. Um, oh, each part of, of it. Okay, yes, exactly. Because otherwise it's bland. So you go. So the so the flour <laughs> to the. <egg. laughs> is that bad? No, no. You're doing no, great. You, get in there, right? you can tell that Willie cooks. You he's get he's in there. He's look, in there. Okay. And then and then and then the eggs hold on to the panko breadcrumbs. Exactly. Ah, well, and then you let that sit there for a, a second, beauty. and we just Come put on. it in the oil. I'm actually using avocado oil more these okay. days than canola oil. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, they say it's better for you, so I say, okay, why not? Okay, so. Are people laughing at my cooking? I, don't I think know. I'm doing great. I don't know. What are they laughing yeah, about? Get your hands dirty. Okay, so you want to make yeah, sure. Just it's, your hands. Really. So, so every every culture <laughs> has their own version of chicken cutlet, right? So we have. Um, <laughs> I've lost them. Thanks for coming. No, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay. So then we. So every every culture has their version of chicken cutlet. Obviously, this is sort of an American Italian version. We're gonna make tomato sauce. Okay. I have three ingredients in my tomato sauce: onions, garlic, and then some and some crushed them crushed tomatoes. And I let this cook for about 45 minutes. How do you, you just? Oh, you crush them with the potato I, and masher? I, and first, you let it cook for about 25 minutes so they soften. Okay. And then I crush them with a potato okay. masher so it actually has texture. Yeah. Got and then I put like a little sugar. This is very controversial. Some people say don't ever put sugar in your tomatoes, but you know what? If they're acidic, you want a little sugar to yeah, bounce, bounce, bounce it why out. Not? Okay. Okay. So then we have the chicken cutlet, and then I take some buffalo mozzarella. Mm, look at that. And I just put it right on look top. Look now, at that. now here's the thing that I do. You see, I leave some of the crispy bits uncovered because oh, yeah. we want that good contrast of texture. Crunchy, yeah. Exactly. We put it in the oven. I love this. I love this kitchen. You put it, you put it in this oven, and then it comes out of this oven Magic. right here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here it is. So then we take some of the tomato sauce, and, uh, and instead of dousing it uh, all over the chicken and then ruining that crispiness, I put the tomato sauce on the bottom. And the then, cheese is melted uh, on top. And then see, it's, it's, a, it's a much That's cleaner so version. Yeah. A little bit That's of nice. fresh basil yep. and a whole bunch of Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Look at that. May yeah. I start, Chef? Yes, yes you can. Must. And then some fresh arugula because this is a very healthy dish. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit of Just olive, olive oil, oil on top. And there we go. Mm. Sneak in here, Bob. Get in there.
Let me try. Oh, Bobby. Thank you. Is it yummy? Mm, it's so good. Yeah, huh? I mean, the, see, here's the thing. The really nice thing about it is you get, wow. obviously, the acidity, mm. the sweetness, the tomatoes. Mm. You get that crispy contrast, the mm -hmm. texture on the chicken. Mm. And, of course, that fresh mozzarella is, is It feels beautiful. a little light, which you can't always say for a chicken parm. Well, the thing about chicken parm, and you and I sort of share that, that love of chicken parmesan, you know, where it's kind of doused in all that cheese and yeah. tomatoes. Mm -hmm. But this is, a, to me, this is, like a, this is like a Tuesday night version of the Sunday night yeah. meal. There you go. Yeah, exactly. I, um, did I hear you're in a movie? Wait, oh, what? Bobby Flay is in One let, Delicious Christmas? Let me tell you wait, something. Come on. I, yes, the come Oscar on. buzz has been so <laughs> overwhelming. Wait, wait. I mean, <laughs> what are you talking? Who do you play yourself? This is, I play I play Tom Kingsley, who is, is a uh, a food critic. Uh, it's called One Delicious Christmas. Um, yes, they wanted me to act. I said, don't do it, but they said, please do it. So here it is. So when do you see that? And where? Uh, it's coming on uh, November 11th, Discovery Plus. Oh, um, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah exactly. Plus. Oh, That's yes. So cool. so, uh, viewing everywhere. There'll be viewing parties Everyone's all over the place talking about for it. One Delicious Christmas. Exactly. Bobby, How do you congratulate. really feel about a food critic, though? I love food life. critics. Okay. Great. Yes, we love food critics. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Make this recipe at home. Go to today.com slash food. Thanks, Bobby. Great to see you. We're back with Today Food, and one of our very favorite guests, our pal, Bobby Flay. Oh, I'm so excited. He's an award-winning chef, the author of 216 best-selling 216? Books. 216? And we At can't least. forget about his hit show, <laughs> Beat Bobby Flay. By the way, new episode tonight, where two chefs go head-to-head -head in the kitchen for a chance to face off against the master himself. This morning, Bobby is sharing a fantastic pasta dish with us. Uh, good to see you, Mr. Flay. Good to see you guys. Bobby. Bobby. Thanks for waking up uh, yeah. early. What are yeah, we what are we cooking, honey? So we're making uh, we're making a baked pasta. It's one of those dishes that I think is fantastic for like a Sunday night meal. It's very very comforting, and it's something that uh, can feed the whole family. So let's get started. It's going to be rigatoni. It's going to be some hot Italian sausage, some broccoli rabe, and some tomato sauce. A little vodka sauce there as well. So I'm going to start off by cooking some rigatoni uh, in some salt and water. You know, you see this a million. On the Today Show, lots of salt in your water. Make sure it's boiling, abundance of water. We're gonna cook the rigatoni for about eight or nine minutes. Well, while that's cooking, we're gonna get our, get our sauce going. So we have some hot Italian sauces that I've cooked off a little bit. Some tomato sauce. I've made my own, um, but if you have a good, uh, a good quality tomato sauce that you like, you can definitely use that as well. And we're gonna add a little bit of vodka. This is that, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the most classic Italian-American pasta dishes is pasta alla, alla vodka. It's basically a tomato sauce with a little bit of vodka in it and um, a touch of cream. So it, it, it almost becomes like a little bit of a pink sauce. Really delicious. What does the vodka yeah, do we'll to it? What's that? What does the vodka do to it, Bobby? The vodka actually helps emulsify the cream in the tomato sauce so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't separate. It's, uh, it, it's sort of a binder in, in, in a sense. And also, it's like, I mean, who doesn't want to cook with vodka? I mean, there you go. <laughs> Oh. So, so, so basically, you're making like a creamy tomato sauce with the with the hot Italian sausage, and then um, just because we want to make sure that it's nice and healthy, I'm going to put some broccoli rabe in there as well. Okay. And, um, and then we're going to take this sauce. I'm going to pour it right over the cooked pasta. This is some rigatoni that I had, you know, cooked ahead of time. Okay. So we're just going to we're going to cover the uh, the pasta in the sauce, and I'm going to add some fontina cheese to it. Yum. And this is all going to go into a casserole dish. And I mm. love cooking things, you know, I call it oven to table, where you, where you, you, know, you create something in the kitchen, you put it in an earthenware or some sort of uh, oven-proof dish like mm. this one. So, Bobby, did, put, did you cook that pasta al dente because it's going to be cooking longer in the oven? Yes. That's actually, I thought that's a great point. You want to cook it a little bit undercooked, so maybe like three quarters of the way because it's going to sit in the sauce, it's going to bake in the oven at about 350 degrees, and on top, we're going to put some fresh, some, some grated mozzarella and some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, and then we're going to go to the oven. To hey, Bobby, honest, how do you keep it from sticking on the bottom? Oh, it's not going to stick because, we, you know, there's lots of tomato sauce in there. It's going to be totally fine. Oh, and actually, if it, um, if it gets a little crusty on top, that's actually a good thing. It's like, you know, like when you have the lasagna, and the and and the edges and the crispiness mm -hmm. around the side. What do you always want that part of it? You get you definitely get a little bit of this as well. You want to let this bake in the oven about 350 degrees for I don't know about 15 to 20 minutes. Because don't forget the pasta is already cooked, the sauce is already hot. We're just heating it up, and then at the last second, for the last three or four minutes, turn your oven up to Whoa. broil. Mm -hmm. yourself and cook the top. This is part of the recipe, by the way. And then take out your. Uh, Take out your, your pasta, and you can see 
This is what it's going to look like. I see. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yes. Oh, I hope That's what I'm talking about. Oh. If you're watching this at home, make this. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, it's delicious. Man, make make about it about this weekend. Yeah. And then basically, you know, you can just take like, take a little bit and just try to kind of put it in a ball. Look at that. Nice and chewy, uh, cheesy. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, after looking at that, Bobby, it's amazing that anybody beats you on Beat Bobby Flay. Yeah. How's it going over there? Beat Bobby Flay is great. We've done uh, we've done close to 400 episodes, which is insane. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm having more fun than ever. Um, it's so great to be able to welcome, you know, you know, chefs from all over the country to come in and, and take me down. It's actually way more fun when I lose because the chefs are so excited. It's great for their community when they win. You, you know, they usually have like all these, they have like viewing parties in their, in their local community. It's great. Be Bobby Flay has been so much fun for me for the last, That's I don't know. Does your, does your girlfriend like watching it? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, Carson asked me if my girlfriend was awake. Oh. The only person awake right now in L.A. is me cooking baked pasta for you. It's 5.50 in the morning. How yeah, well, if you would just yeah. pull that sausage out of that dish, then she'd have a dish that she could eat if you were a little more thoughtful. Um, oh. Actually, Carson, you know what? You, you've actually done your research because Christine, Christina does not eat meat. I know that. Yes. So, Sausage out of here. She's all good. There you go. We just put a, well, we just put up a picture of her there as well. <laughs> well, I think the last time Bobby was on, he was very secretive about this whole relationship. Yeah. And then he spilled his guts to People Magazine. Now it's fair game. Oh, so she's a yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely, yeah. lovely you lady. Hey, Bobby, real quick. We, we loved your restaurants in New York yeah. City. So amazing over the years. Anything new on the horizon? Anything we can look forward to? In New York City, um, well, we're, we're sort of in the wait and see kind of thing right now for New York because, you know, I've, I've always had restaurants in New York my entire adult life. And, uh, you know, we're just going to see what happens. You know, I just opened a Malfi in Las Vegas about five or six months ago. That's going really well. And uh, listen, you know, New York has my heart. So at mm -hmm. some point, we'll be back there. All right. We'll All right. To Thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. <laughs> Morning on Today Food, the one and only Bobby Flay. For decades, we've watched him create some of our favorite dishes on countless TV shows and more than a dozen cookbooks. His latest is called Sundays with Sophie, and it takes us inside the Flay family kitchen, a collection of dishes inspired by meals with his daughter, Bobby. Good morning. Good morning. Well, this has got to be near and dear to you. You're, like, does Sophie cook too? You've been teaching her your skills? Yes, yeah, she, she does. So Sundays with Sophie, Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. The, oh. the idea is that it's, you know, it's Sunday meals or just meals for the family around the table. And actually, I, I devised a lot of these recipes during the quarantine because, like everybody else, I was cooking three meals a day at home. And so the recipes are incredibly simple, and they're really built for the home cook. Oh, good. I love that. Okay, yeah. simple. You had me at hello. Okay. Talk about this poached egg. This okay. is cacio pepe poached eggs. Coche, uh, cacio pepe <laughs> poached eggs. So cacio pepe simply means cheese and pepper. Yes. We usually see it classically on pasta. Yeah. But everybody's cacio pepe everything now, at this Now, is this point. a breakfast, or is this, I know, is this breakfast, or is this dinner? Oh, um, no. Like, this, this, is like, this is like breakfast or brunch, or okay. like, it could definitely be like a late night. Listen, I, I, there's plenty of times I I love, I love uh, you know eggs for dinner. Me too. And so basically, what I do is I make a vinaigrette. This is very okay. very simple. So it's some white vinegar, some honey, some shallots. Mm -hmm. Okay. This reminds me of what we did our cooking thing together. I know. Remember? I know. 
I know. Do you want me to stir that? I can do that. Yeah, now. sure. Go right <laughs> ahead. <laughs> exactly. Look at me whisking. And then some olive oil. And then we're going to add some Parmigiano Reggiano cheese, of course. And then some mm. cracked black pepper. So okay. there, there's the cheese. There's the cacio and the pepe, so to speak. I mean, this is black delicious pepper. right here. And this is our little dressing. Exactly. Okay. There you go. So then we're going to poach some eggs. And a lot of people are. are I'm intimidated. Intimidated. All right, show me. So it's, it's two ingredients. One of them is water, the <laughs> other is some vinegar. Okay. okay. And the vinegar is going to help the egg. This is my big word of the day coagulate the egg. Oh, okay. So, so it kind of breathes it. A little bit. Do you guys know how to poach an egg? Al, no, I know no, you do. No, no, Raise no. your hand if you can poach no, an egg. No. Al can. Oh, oh I, okay, yeah. Al poaches eggs with his eyes closed. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to just, and, and, and here's a little tip. I, I crack the eggs and I first put it into a little ramekin because mm -hmm. if I break it, I don't want to put it in here. Oh, well, true. And a lot of times you do that if you just, you just kind of go right into the water. Okay. So we're going to let those poach. They poach for, you know, just like, a, I don't know, three or four minutes. And, and, and the best thing to do is kind of just do a little whirlpool so it gets a, gets a okay. really beautiful shape. Seems like it'd be hard to get those out. Oh, no, they come them. right out. Really? As okay. You, <laughs> as, as soon as you can get them out, you just take them out. It's very, very simple. Okay. Should be no problem. Okay. okay. We have some toast over here. All right. Okay. So. Um, sourdough bread, some kind of country loaf. Mm -hmm. I like mine like slightly thick, maybe, I don't know, maybe an, sort of like a, an inch and a half or so, or so like that. And then just some, you know, good quality olive oil mm -hmm. on the bread. Yeah. And then some salt and pepper. And this is one of the things that people forget when they're making toast. Don't forget to season it as well. Okay. Salt and okay. pepper your toast. Like bring out the flavor of that delicious oh, yeah, bread I, that you I have. I never do that. Okay. Exactly. Good okay. So we have the toast. I put a little more. I, I, I take, you just roast this in the oven, or you I'm put sorry, this in yeah. like the toaster oven? So you can oven. put it in the oven. You can put it under the broiler, or okay. you can just put it in the toaster. Got it. I think a toaster is probably the <laughs> best case okay. scenario. Yeah. Right? It easy. works. Easy. What's easy. happening over here? Should we get these out? Uh, you can do that if you want, but we're down here. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just concerned but about that. This is this is Savannah <laughs> in the kitchen right here. <laughs> this is the kitchen. Distracted. Coming to Food Network. Um, <laughs> okay, so we have uh, some a garlic clove, and I just rub the garlic clove a little bit on, okay. the, on the bread, just to give it a little bit of flavor. Yep. You know, this is a very savory meal, a little more olive oil, mm. and then we take our poached eggs, and we put the poached eggs right on top, whoops, mm. right on top of our, our bread. Okay. And then we take our dressing. Yes. Okay. Now this is the good stuff. And this dressing is where this is where all the flavor comes in. Okay. Oh yeah. Just How pour that taste, you guys? right over there. It's wonderful. Same. Finish it. Really good. Some Parmigiano. Oh man. Oh. Yeah. Some fresh Boom. chives. I mean, come on. Can you make the dressing ahead of time? Though? Absolutely. And of course, you can use it for salads or you I was can put about it on your vegetables. Anything. Absolutely. Very very versatile. Okay. But this is what I was doing at home. It's like you know, so doing, yummy. you're at home. Like you just take the ingredients that you have in your cupboard and you make dishes. And, and this this was one of them. Okay. Well, that looks. Should I have a bite? Yeah, I'm sure. so worried yeah, about those other Dive eggs. in and go grab them. Okay, I'll I just okay. so want to know You got to cut it. Okay, here we go. You, someone else is going to have to read gets this. Gooey. Gets gooey. Uh -huh. Gets gooey. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Oh, yeah, man, Bobby. Wow, okay. That's a GIF right there. <laughs> Someone's working on it. You, you can catch wow. Bobby again on, the third on our hour. third hour. You can also get his recipes today.com slash
This morning and today, food, our friend Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay is here with an easy meal to make the entire family happy. He's also out with a new show. It's called Bobby's Triple Threat. It's where he challenges some really talented chefs to go up against his hand-picked culinary That's taste. That's awesome. Mm. He also has a brand new cookbook out. It's called Sundays with Sophie that he wrote with the help of his little daughter. Aww. Bobby, always good to have you. It's not really fair to call Sophie little anymore. No, she's 26. Yeah. 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 But That's she'll be she'll cool. be calling you after this. Yes. <laughs> yes, Sophie. Yeah. Um, what was the impetus behind the cookbook? Well, you know, I, I did all these recipes because during quarantine, like everybody else, I was cooking three or four meals a day right. at home. And and finally I actually decided to write them down. Hmm. But but the great thing about it is I was basically utilizing all the things at my fingertips. And so the recipes are incredibly simple. It's really a you know, Sophie, it's Sundays with Sophie, but Sophie's basically standing in for everybody. Okay. It's, it's, they're they're okay. family meals. Mm -hmm. So what are we making? So we're today we're this? making a creamy rigatoni. We have some spicy sausage in there as well. Mm -hmm. Some roasted eggplant. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's helpful. It's spicy. It's it's got big flavors and it's easy to make. So people tend to be afraid of eggplant. They do tend to be uh, afraid of eggplant. But it's actually this is a, actually a very quick and easy way to cook it, Al. Just take a little bit of olive oil over some diced eggplant. I put a little salt and pepper, and so you, you don't put even it. Peel it. No, you don't have to peel it. And okay. I put it in the oven. That's for, it. for about 30 minutes and it roasts okay. and it gets really nice and soft Ooh. and you can reserve it, okay? Then we have some spicy sausage that I saute and, uh, you know, get nice and brown, try to get a little color on the outside, mm -hmm. make sure it's cooked all the way through. And then you have these sort of juices in the bottom. And then because, you know, it's the fall, I, I, I want to make it sort of a little bit heady, so I'm going to add a little red wine to start. Oh. What kind of wine do you use? Um, I use uh, like a good table wine. It could okay. be a Pinot Noir or Cabernet. It doesn't really matter. And then, you know, something that you, that you want to eat. Standing back just because yeah, I have stand a white by, dress on. Stand by, give a white dress on. And then, <laughs> and then, and then some tomato sauce. Mm. And then we, you let the tomato sauce and the, um, and the red wine cook together. Mm -hmm. Picks up all that flavor. Any secret to your homemade tomato sauce? Uh, three ingredients. Onions, garlic, tomatoes. That's it. That's and it? If, and you taste them. If they're a little acidic, I, I put a pinch of sugar. I know that's controversial, mm -hmm. but, like, let's make, let, you know. It tastes good. Exactly you, right. Do you break, like, break them up in a blender? Or do you I crush them with, like, a potato masher okay. while they're cooking. Could you oh. use canned? If you're... I definitely use canned. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Canned tomatoes are good. So cool. we have our roasted eggplant. We put it in here with the, with the, um, with the sausages and the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And then we have some rigatoni. It doesn't do have you, to be rigatoni. Why do you like the rigatoni? Uh, for this I like rigatoni because it has a little bite to it, you oh, know? Okay. And, and also, the, the holes running right. through it actually pick up some of the sauce. Then we're going to add a little uh, creme fraiche to this, oh my God. so we can make it creamy. Don't get that on your beautiful I white know, dress. I'm still standing back. Okay. Oh my goodness. And then Thank some you. Parmigiano Reggiano cheese. Mm. Oh, Bobby. Oh man, that's, are you kidding? That's some funny. basil. That's I'm, here, I'm here. I'm here for oh comfort. Oh my God. I'm here for comfort. I'm very some comfortable. Fresh oregano. Oh, very very comfortable. comfortable. You guys, you're oh like, God. oh, let, let them cook. We're going to go eat. That's, that's right. it. Yeah. We're like, that's enough, Bobby. You, you, know, help. you guys have like a four-course meal every single day oh, yeah. on the show. It's the greatest like, place in the world. It's time to eat now, Bobby. But you were one of the first people in the last hour who actually made breakfast for us on, during a breakfast. We breakfast. were so taken aback. We like, very breakfast. breakfast is very important in the morning. But look, it's so, oh, it was pretty delicious. simple to make, and this is amazing. Thank you very much. And again, you know, I had some, I had some ingredients, and that's that's yeah. what I came up with. And so, and so, um, you know, the book is really about simple ingredients, mm -hmm. and it gets the family around the table. And to yeah. me, that's the most important thing. Which is thing. the most important. Yeah. Could you make like a double batch of the sauce and the sausage, and then freeze it? Al, absolutely. You can you can definitely freeze the sauce for sure, and then and then when you you know when you want to use it, you know, a couple weeks later, or whatever, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. thaw it out. But th this is also a great family style. This Big bowl so of this for Sunday oh, dinner. Man. Bobby, Bobby, make it happen. Thank you, Bobby. Whole family will love this.
We're back with Today Food, joined by one of our favorite chefs, hey. our Bobby Flay. That's right. He's got a new book out next week called Beat Bobby Flay. Conquer the kitchen with 100 plus battle tested oh. recipes. Mm. Yeah, this morning, Bobby's teaching us how to win in the kitchen with one of his all-time favorite dishes. Bobby, just when you think you know everything about chili, you're going to do something. Is it a secret ingredient? Is it like, are you going to add some coffee grinds to it? Or are you going to, what are you doing? You're just taking the meat out? You're robbing us? Well, I, I, it is a vegetarian dish, but Carson, you have to understand, first of all, on Beef Bobby Flay, I don't get to decide what the signature dish that we're cooking is. It's the other chef. Oh, that's right. So I got challenged to vegetable chili, and also my girlfriend doesn't eat meat, so, you know, I got to adjust. Smart so man. how do you make it good? Works. Smart man. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. So come on over. So um, I'm going to start by making the base of the chili. Every, I always say everything good starts with onions and garlic. So we're going to start with some onions and garlic and then some tomatoes as well. And, of course, you need to bring some spices into the game. And, Bobby, so well, who's like your girlfriend? <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you buried the lead. I, I, wow. Just kidding. I, I, I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. I knew yeah. you were going to go there. Well, you brought but, it up. Uh, she will re she's going to rename uh, Nameless for now. Okay. But, but okay. thanks for asking. I'm just going to Google it. I'll have it by the end of the oh. segment. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the go chili ahead. went Wendy right out the, the window. Meat in? Sure did. Nothing remains nameless. Where'd you meet? It's 2021. How'd you guys meet? Anyway, so then you add then you add a dark beer to the uh, uh -huh. to the chili, which yeah. is one of those secret ingredients, right? And then this becomes the base of it. Now, Carson was asking, like you know, you rob us of the meat, but you can use things that are veg that are vegetables that actually wow. give us the uh, the texture. Very of the attractive. Meat, meat so like. So we're going to <laughs> very we're going Carson to Carson uh, founder Robert Carson Robert founder on the gonna, internet. I will not say that out loud. But we promise. Very, but very impressive. No, he didn't. He did. No he did. Yeah. Okay. Vegan so or we vegetarian? Have, uh, <laughs> no. Veg you really are dating up, Bobby. You are really wow. dating up. You are a lucky wow. man. All right. So anyway, this guy went off the rails. Mix, what what vegetables are you using there, Bobby, to replace so the meat? Thank you so much, Al. Thank you so much. So we have uh, we wow. have eggplant and portobello mushrooms Ooh. because they they have that sort of meaty texture. Mm -hmm. We're gonna add that to the to the chili as well. And we're going to let this cook for a little while. And then basically what happens is you have the base of the chili, and it mm -hmm. looks and feels like chili. It tastes like chili, but it's completely meatless. And, and then the thing I love about chili is that it becomes like this canvas for all these, like, really cool garnishes that you can put on top, which is really the key, oh, that's right? A nice so Ooh, that's beautiful. We have some yogurt that uh, has a little bit of uh, uh, shishito peppers in it and some lime juice. Mm. We want that nice cooling effect. And I have some avocados in here with some um, with some diced red onions mm -hmm. and some chilies. I'm going to put some avocado mm. on top. It's almost like uh, the chili becomes a vehicle for all these cool things that you want to eat. A, little, a, a few tortilla chips with some crunch. Mm. you got to make sure you have that crunch yeah. going. Hey, Bobby, does, it, does the Mexican chili Southeast. take less time because it's meat-based? I mean, vegetable-based than, yeah. than a meat-based one would? It does, Al, because, you know, if you're cooking something like eggplant or portobello mushrooms, it's going to uh, it's going to cook a lot quicker. You just want to make sure that the mushrooms, then the eggplant mm -hmm. cook all the way through because then it absorbs all the flavor from the base of the chili itself. You want to cook at that dark beer. You want to get some of that earthiness as well. And uh, and then, you know, you, you just you, st you start to garnish it a little bit of lime zest on top. So you have some acidity, you have some spiciness, you have a little sweetness, mm. all the good things. And it's a uh, it's a very warming dish. I have to say, like when I first said when I first heard that I had to make vegetable chili mm -hmm. on beef Bobby Flay, I was kind of bummed out because, mm -hmm. right. you know, I am I am a meat eater. And um, but I have to say like the eggplant and the mushrooms do a great job mm. of substituting yeah. it. And of course, it's a little bit healthier. I mean, people are eating a lot more vegetables. I was going to say, are, are plant is plant based having its moment now, Bobby? Oh, it's unbelievable. You know, as a chef. We constantly have to adjust to uh, to the trends of the way people are eating. And I will say one thing. People are eating healthier and healthier, and I don't think that's ever going to go in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think it's only going to keep going in that direction. Bobby. So we have to really get very comfortable with cooking vegetables in lots of different ways. Yeah, what did your girlfriend say when she tried that oh, first wow. bite? I was just <laughs> curious. She's trying to help you here. Uh, trying no, to what, help a brother out. So what, what did she say? <laughs> Whew, um you know what? I haven't made this for her yet, to be perfectly honest. Oh. But you know, it's it's on the dock. Well, it's been it's been, it's been the summer now. Now you know it's getting a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you're right. Uh, well, is she there right now? You tell her to get her on in. <laughs> no, she's not here. But, but yeah, yeah, thanks so much for having me. You're the best, Bobby. We love you so much. Does she, just fun so fun to tease you. You. Does she have a key to the elevator? <laughs> what else is in your book? We have a couple seconds. What other kind of recipes? Are they all vegetarian? Uh, all, you know, th there's all kinds of things, from like piri piri chicken to shrimp and grits. Oh. Um, there's some great desserts like a spiced chocolate pudding. 
Yeah. Um, eggplant rollatini. I mean, mm. you know, um, Salisbury steak. There's, there's really classic homestyle dishes. Mm. Cool. And then there's a couple of things in that are a little bit fancier. But it's a, you know, if, if you're a fan of the show, I mean, uh, Al's been on the show a couple of times. Um, it's such a fun show, and um, we've, we, we've shot over 500 episodes. Jeez. Wow. Cool. And, and you've only uh, lost so twice. So obviously it's they're amazing. not all in this yeah. book. This is volume one. Our, so oh, hopefully wow. there'll yeah. be more volumes. It's a terrific oh, book. You, it's a great show. Yeah, it's a great book. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. Bobby. Good luck Bye. with the relationship. You guys are the best. <laughs>